PKA 659 with our guest, Golden Boy Taylor. This episode of PKA brought to you by FaroDistro.com, Blue Chew, and of course, Lock and Load. Mm. A bunch of wonderful, some of them dick related uh, <laughs> supplements you'll hear more about later. Golden Boy, thank you for joining us. You look great. Oh, it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. Always good to hear about those, those uh, supplements. They, you know, we'll all need them eventually. Inside 11 seconds. 11 <laughs> seconds to get demonetized. I, I don't know if it's a record, but it's well done. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Damn. Oops. Let me go back over and slide a little whoop over that. <laughs> a little fun hey. thing. Yeah. So I was looking, Golden Boy, that you, last time we spoke to you, you were working at G4. And yeah. you've since yeah. since left that. You decided oh, yeah. this wasn't for you. Oh, yeah, we left. Oh, yeah, I was out of there. Uh, you know, not like the company went to shit. But <laughs> outside of that, though. Uh, no, I mean, choice. yeah, yeah. You know, I was uh, actually funny thing was I actually was not there when the company like inevitably imploded. My contract actually was up and then we were in renegotiation. Uh, and then the day that I was going to resign was the day I found out the company lo no longer existed. Like we actually were getting the contract in Shit. in our email that morning. We were told specifically that morning. Uh, and I mean, everything seemed okay. It was going to be like a lesser load. It was going to be as much work for me, uh, mm -hmm. which was fine considering that I was doing a few other things at the time. But uh, yeah, and then it was like, oh, company went under. Oh, shit, would have been great to know. <laughs> You know, like they before, gave you no lead time at all. They just you were expecting like, all right, I'm 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 set for the next year with this contract. And then they just said, everyone's fired, uh, fired bad. So for me personally, uh, I have operated for a very long time under the, you know, the, the mindset of nothing is guaranteed. Uh, mm -hmm. So as a result of that, I'm always like, yeah, you know, these people, these, these rich douches could pull the plug eventually and then just find some way not to pay me. You know, I mean, what am I going to do? I'm just a just a, a, a regular dude. Yeah. Um, but uh, that being said, yeah, for this particular case, um, I knew that it wasn't going to be anything substantial or long term. So mm -hmm. as so I, I was going into it more like, hey, I really like working with these people. Uh, the crew that we had built up there were like fantastic folks that we have like, that we've were really smart. The whole audience mm -hmm. knows what G4 is and what you did there. Oh, yeah, yeah, I can explain. Yeah, so basically G4 was uh, a video game uh, TV network that died mm -hmm. and then uh, for some reason got brought back. Um, and then they brought it back and then they brought back, uh, you know, a lot of the the core original people that like helped build it both behind the scenes and on camera. Mm -hmm. um, so I got to work with like Adam Sessler and Kevin Pereira again. Uh, Kevin Pereira is incredible. Like that man, one of the greatest hosts I've ever worked with ever. Um, and, uh, and then they had like a lot of the same writing staff and everything like that. So it was recreating those shows that were really iconic and especially for like millennials, you know, like, like X play and attack of the show, um, yeah. arena, like those shows that were really uh, prolific on the G4 TV network. Um, and then the, there was an attempt to bring it back, except this time do it in, you know, the, the modern era, uh, with, you know, streaming and all that stuff being incorporated into the system. Uh, but that just didn't work out uh, because, you know, as as I have learned throughout my career and I've seen it happen so many times, uh, you know, when it comes down to video game content and stuff like just people. Yeah. You know, you have your IGNs and your game spots of the world and, and those folks that have been around for like a super long time. But like, you know, to kind of like spin up out of nowhere, especially being by Comcast owned by Comcast. Mm -hmm. And then saying like, hey, guys, we're authentic video game content, even though like the content was authentic, being made by authentic people. But it mm -hmm. just had that shell of, of corporate, sure. you know, sure. uh, the people uh, in Nickelback, to. real musicians. Yeah. But they yeah. were, <laughs> but somehow they didn't like it. They didn't <laughs> generate the right way. I don't know. The, yeah, the yeah. Actually, speaking of though, we, we we had Nickelback playing on the. Of course you did. <laughs> the, <laughs> we we did not, we did early two thousands playlists just just to uh, see what came up, and then that came up on the on the freaking Amazon thing. What did you do? Anywho. So you were the MLG announcer, right? Uh, well, yeah. So I I used to commentate uh for Major League Gaming for like Call of Duty and stuff like that back in the day. Yeah. Who did, um, who did that job before you? I'm trying to remember that guy's name. Well, uh, so there was one guy who was doing it pretty consistently. His name was Corey Dunn. He was the, uh, you know, the, the more of the Texas sounding, you know, play by play commentator that we had back in the day. And there was, was another guy named Holiday guy. Doc. Holiday um, Doc. I that was that the other dude. So that was the guy that I 
kind of like took the seat of because he couldn't come for work reasons. And then they asked me if I was interested and I was like, yeah, sure. Whatever, man. I don't, I, I so I used to job. game with holiday doc. He's very good at video games, by the way. Oh yeah. No, he was always fantastic. I mean, and, I was like uh, his whole YouTube channel. Yeah. Yeah. He was yeah. mad at you. <laughs> he didn't, oh yeah. He didn't I, I like losing that job to you at all. Not one day. I, I had no freaking. So I till this day, it's because he was a better don't gamer. know. I just don't. I don't know anything. I don't know what happened. <laughs> I I worked as a social worker, and mm. um, I was uh, going to go see because uh, I had a few clients who worked in like Queens and stuff. And my job, I would always be on the train. So uh, in New York, you would you know oftentimes like you know go on the above subway and then it'll go underneath and it'll come back up. So. You know, you'd lose service when you hit the tunnel and then come back up on the on like more of the bridge tracks. Okay. Uh, so my friend called me uh, from MLG and I couldn't pick up because I was literally just going underground. So I was going to lose service. Mm -hmm. And then as I get above ground, get off my stop, uh, I get a voicemail and it's like, hey, man, I uh, just want to ask you, are, are you coming through to Providence at all? And if you are, shoot me a call. I was like, OK, cool. Is uh, my colleague, Andreas, who worked at MLG. And then I shot him a call and I was like, hey, man, what's good? And he's like, yeah. So uh, it turns out like our the the guy who was going to commentate holiday doc, like he couldn't make it. So mm -hmm. uh, for work reasons. So do you want to just take the spot? And I was like, yeah, sure. Am I getting paid? And he was like, mm -hmm. yeah, sure. Why not? And then that was it. I I had no I guess aspirations. They liked you more because afterwards they asked for you again. Or maybe they yeah, were well, sure about his availability. I don't know. Well, I think what helped is I was in New York. And their offices were in New York at the time. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that that probably mm -hmm. assisted because they were doing a lot of stuff in their like New York studio with Puckett. So maybe that's that was one of the reasons why well, I, don't I used know, to but. play with Holiday Doc. And he firmly believed that you should have turned down the job and allowed him to get it back. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 What an absurd thing to say. <laughs> do you, do you, do you, have you ever noticed how like the absolute bet like. Watch the TNT NHL coverage and watch okay. Paul Bissonette commentate an absolute plug who didn't really deserve to be in the NHL. He's incredible at it. Born okay. natural. And then mm. watch Wayne Gretzky do it. Wayne is the most wooden, awkward guy up there because every modicum of his talent is in being the best hockey player of all time. <laughs> that guy probably sucks at driving. He probably can't cook to save his life. Everything's to hockey. So like, Aho is the best yeah, it doesn't time. surprise me at all that the person who's like actually like hyper fixated on the game isn't as good at actually commentating it as someone more like Golden Boy. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I feel bad. I genuinely, I, they said he couldn't make it because of work. I the don't know what time, I was supposed to do. The first time. Like he stole the job. From As a person who has a full-time job, you know what I mean? Like, I'm just yeah. like, yeah, sure, man. This is this was a side gig. At no point in time, like, I, me even getting paid was like a miracle. I was like, wait, I'm getting paid <laughs> to talk about a video game? Fuck out of here. It was the money yeah. or the clout that he valued more. <laughs> Like I, because as you say, you don't get rich commentating MLG tournaments. Uh, no, but you do become, you know, important in the community. Uh, yeah, I guess so. I guess so. You yeah. can feel good. I mean, it, it, you know, especially like at that time when it was still like so, so uh, insulated. You know, or like even though the internet was a thing, it was still mm. so small, right? Because like we all ran in the same circles. And even though we all didn't like necessarily overlap in those old like MLG Call of Duty days, uh, I knew who you guys were, you know, just from the yeah, just from the fact that of I, I knew like the Call of Duty YouTubers at the time that were like popping off and stuff. And that was like mm -hmm. a core yeah. part of our culture. Oh, I used know? to love MLG. I, like I would go to the whenever they came to Raleigh, I would go and I watched and I really like it. Yeah, I stayed yeah, yeah. in touch with like what was going online. But it was awkward because. I guess MLG didn't love me back, mostly. I mean, like, the optic guys were cool and stuff. But it's an awkward position to be like, and I'm, I'm going to sound like an asshole, but it's like, yeah, I'm more famous than Rambo, but I'm 1% of the player that he is, right? And, and yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. fame wasn't fairly, in their minds, handed out. Um, yeah, that's true. That was it makes a lot of sense. Of that. That's how it was back then. You know, like, everyone just valued... You know, like this, like you remember, like back in the day for like Smash players and stuff, it'd be like, I was the best player in Columbus. 
Yeah. Well, I'm, the best player, I'm the best player in Long Island. Dude, dude I know one best... of those guys. <laughs> yeah, right? And, and, and like, don't get me wrong. It, it's still a thing. But like that was what was measuring your fame, which honestly is kind of yeah. cool. It sounds like an anime and probably want to live in that world forever. But yeah. like even then, that was like how it was measured mm-hmm. back in the day, especially like in the competitive circles. Sure. Because those you could have played that better, though. Like, like they oh, 100%. Done, what, like, like with the UFC, for example, whenever a uh, a movie star, like a real like combat movie star wants to snuggle up with with the ufc and and yeah they're like oh yeah steven sensei seagal yeah <laughs> sensei seagal come in here and bring your fans and do a whole thing and a powwow and we'll all bow at each other and we'll snicker behind your back it'll be great like yeah they should have mm-hmm. that's maybe the bad example because everybody hates steven seagal but do it friendly with an actual mar- martial art like with an actual yeah, celebrity, celebrity. <laughs> Keanu Reeves, you know come sure. they, would do the, they would be so nice to keanu they'd roll with keanu like you share yeah. fan fan bases and everything, Vanilla and it would be clear, like, hey, this guy does spins and this guy does wins. Why can't we all just share a fan base and have a good time yeah. here? And mm-hmm. said, I agree. Like, We're the pros. All I'm saying is okay. Under Siege was a great There's movie, 18 though. people watching. <laughs> 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 uh, yeah, no, you're you're not wrong. Like I uh, uh, it I think that uh back in the day like a lot of the things that because i don't know how much you guys are keeping up with like esports and like what's going on in that it's space, very little but yeah. not anymore let's just let's just put it like this uh i think everyone just started to realize the thing that i had realized really early on which was there's no money <laughs> and and people need to start like figuring out like how to actually turn mm-hmm. this into a business rather than like just say it's a business like we can, there's we can still go around. money in esports because it seems like it's always been on the edge of becoming the next major league sport like oh yeah five years from now all these people that are 19 are going to be well, millionaires yeah. yeah yeah but uh yeah, all these people are 19 are gonna be 24 and then there'll be like an important demographic that counts and then they'll be 30 and then they'll be whatever uh, yeah like we had the um a part owner of the sacramento kings on the podcast it's a basketball team yeah. oh yeah 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 and um that's owned by the Cronkies still, right? That's the is that the Cronkies? I'm not sure. I don't think he was the majority owner, but uh, but he was definitely a part yeah. owner of the Sacramento Kings, and he was also getting heavily into owning like video games, maybe the league or the teams. I, I forget what mm, his thing yeah. was, but I remember he telling us, like, you know, who are the big stars in this world? They're athletes or e-athletes that don't wear hats or helmets. That was like a big thing. It's why basketball stars are more recognizable than baseball or especially football. Mm-hmm. Um because they wear a helmet and they just sort of can't get famous hockey as well. Mm-hmm, uh, yeah. And, but he thought e-gamers could be like real big celebrities, especially against a young influ looking for the opposite of influential, like influenceable oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. demographic. And uh, it, it just seemed to make a lot of sense, but here we are later learning. There's impressionable. no money in esports. Impressionable. impressionable. There it is. There it is. Uh, yeah. I mean, so I, I, I think that like there are obviously like a lot of layers, right? To like what has transpired in esports. And I and I have a lot of theories and like things that I've observed, you know, having worked in the space for as long as I have. Uh, because I'm I'm coming up on almost like 14 years now working as a like as an on camera talent yeah. in esports. It's a real pro. Like you know yeah. this business. In that yeah, industry, I, that's a century in as like an oil man. Yeah. Well, I mean, you, I let me feel like I'm in my first century. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't really follow it. Mo- probably because most of the games that I'm into aren't yeah. really played at, at a that sort of competitive level. I would love For to sure. get into Mortal Kombat, but I'll never be able to play fighting games. Yeah, um, yeah. But whenever it comes in front of me, whenever I notice competitive gaming, I'll say because I I'm not great at separating MLG from maybe some other league or something like that. It's a scandal. It's always look at this guy to land with cheats on, or mm. it's mm. look at how these children are being groomed on this pro gaming team, and and it's like a bunch of leaked text. They need more and cheat stuff. stories. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's how Drama Alert started. Like I swear, he was just covering, and I don't even know what was true and what was not. Yeah, but it was like optic girlfriends and like hookups <laughs> and, and on weekends and shit like that. He was always talking about like. Who texted who? Who dated who? Etc. That that was TMZ. It seemed at the time like that was so that was so shallow. But he grew it into whatever he's doing now with fucking celebrities boxing in the round. Yeah, yeah, right. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, like a. uh, uh, It's uh, I I never thought that that was going to work. That and I found the idea of covering optic so and so's like love triangle with Faze Twista 
uh, was, I hope that's not a real person. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I found stuff like that to be so silly. Like, I man, mean. I really don't care what it's, it's like high <laughs> yeah. school again. And it's not even my, it's like, it's like, no, it's like high school drama, but somebody else is high school. You just don't <laughs> right? care at all. <laughs> that's a good that's one. So that's true. a good one. That's well phrased. Yeah. yeah. It's like someone yeah. telling me about their dream. It's like shut the fuck All up. Right, come I, on I don't now. care. <laughs> Catch I like dreams in the top right corner over here. <laughs> I, I like dream stories. If anybody wants to tell a dream story, and I don't hold back because it's bigot down here. I, <laughs> I, I, I dream I hater. I you know? everyone to send your detailed dream stories to Kyle. My dreams are fucking. I have one. Flood all dreams. his inboxes with stupid ass dream stories. Yes. My inbox is Woody's mailbox. Okay. You unless I'm in your dream. Unless, I, unless I'm in the dream in a flattering way. He'll he burn it and away. then the, it'll go up in the sky and it'll Terrible. rain down on me and I'll dream those dreams. Stars. That's how it works. Just another dream hater. Add him to the list. Add him to the list. Uh, when those, when like those professional games, because I have the same exact experience with MLG that I only see a clip. If mm. it is like someone in the, in, the, in the crowd filming a player's movements and I'm so not connected with the game that the comments will be like beyond obvious. And I'm like, what are we all looking at? Like, <laughs> what's he <laughs> doing? Oh, I guess that semi fraction of a second light indicates something is when that happens to a player. Is there a, an apology and redemption tour or is it mm. they are excised like they're done? So it it depends on on the game, right? And and that doesn't happen as much at at the very least anymore because of the way that a lot of these like tournaments operate. Because mm -hmm. with COVID, like a lot of things went online, and then a lot of those things just stayed online. Um, so you know that I think is uh, largely where you know you start to see a lot of those accusations really start to come f to fruition and and whatnot. Mm. Um, but I think like when it boils down to and it's hand, handled differently game to game, right? For example, Counter-Strike. Valve has a very low tolerance for cheating and have famously banned players for life for uh, like cheating or like match fixing or doing mm -hmm. something to that degree. And, and, and those things that are like very serious, which I completely understand, uh, sometimes they, they do go a little far, like, you know, the players at match fix, for example, it was a very famous one with uh, I buy power and uh, which was a team that was a PC uh, company, yeah. uh, but they had a team and uh, a few of the players, I think, or all the players, I don't remember the details on the story, a little hazy. Uh, maybe some of your viewers might or listeners might know about it, but uh, long story short, these guys had match fixed in a game and then valve corroborated it. And then banned them essentially for life. And a few of those players ended up not being able to compete in Counter Strike anymore. And then like moved over to like Valorant or, or something else because you know they they can't play this game anymore. Yeah. Uh, and and in some cases it's like all right, it's a little they're like yeah, I get it. You know, low tolerance for cheating, totally understandable. But mm -hmm. then like you know you start to look at the circumstances of the situation, right? And like what was really starting to develop because the guys who had cheated were North American players. Now cheating is never good, right? Like it's just, especially in, in a sports environment, you never mm -hmm. want to do that. Um, but uh, North American Counter-Strike was really struggling because a lot of Counter-Strike was popping off over in Europe. And, you know, it's always been like that, but it, you started to see it peel away a bit more over the last few years, especially with COVID and all these leagues, right? Like they would open up in Europe first. So then that would kind of like just completely alienate any North American player. And as a result, mm -hmm. those North American players moved over to games like Valorant because it just was open, more open for them to participate in. And it was an even playing field, a lot of online competition and whatnot. But again, you know, you welcome back in <laughs> cheaters and stuff. So you're giving these guys like a second lease on life by moving over to these other games. But then you have, you know, guys who just want to continue to play Counter-Strike and who, try and the most, make that a uh, career. Is there a really well-known prolific cheater in the MLG world? Like a prolific cheater. I mean, yeah. you know, in the in the esports space, I, I mean, not not really. Sort of the infamous boy. one. Like, uh, I mean, really, the most infamous one was the one I just told you. That one was the okay. one that like rattled mm -hmm. a lot of people because no one had ever seen Valve take action like that before. And and Valve is very very hands off with the esport. They kind of let the tournament organizers handle a bulk of those administrative uh, mm -hmm. like responsibilities. But when Valve gets involved, when the dev gets involved, that's when you know it's like particularly awful. So, something there that helped been... me enjoy esports yeah. more, and it's like pedantic and silly. But if all the players were in great shape, 
<laughs> it would it would make Fair. me feel like this is more athletic now because mm. sometimes like you'll see someone who's like the guy and it's like oh like that's i love that's that taylor's cool. brought fat shaming to professional gaming like <laughs> yes. you know what jess is all right. shaming these guys look like couch potatoes hates so dreams <laughs> you know get, they get removed because they, they they get caught for cheating but it's like sarms <laughs> they're just huge. <laughs> i just wanted to be buff for taylor <laughs> I, yeah i don't i mean I, I i guess so but i think part of the reason why esports has and why esports i don't think will ever really go away is is because anyone can play it right Any anyone can, you good. know yeah i guess so but anyone can participate in in it you know and i think mm -hmm. that that is the fun part about it like to me that's always been the fun part because i used to play like football and stuff like that when i was in high school and you know tried to go a little further and like semi-pro and mm -hmm. stuff and you know it's a mm -hmm. it's a difficult world but it's one that's very difficult on your body and i think like at the very least with esports it's not the healthiest thing but you know especially for kids that like you know can't do those physical activities i think it gives them an opportunity I to bet. experience competition which i always i think competition in, in its purest form is always is extremely healthy you know, winning and losing, understanding what's at stake, like, you know, preparing and training. And I, I love all that stuff. And I think, like, if anyone can get an opportunity to get a taste of it, that's a positive to me, you know? Yeah. But like, anyone can do it, but not everyone can do it. Like, like it, that's uh, true. Yeah. I, I, with yeah. every level of sports I've ever participated in, people harbor these. Okay, here's the deal. For me to win the Olympics, first place in the Olympics as a swimmer, I, I calculated that I've forgotten the number, but I just needed like six good times. If I could just pull that off, like I have to qualify for Olympic trials <laughs> and then I need two races. You know, the morning I just have to qualify finals, for Olympic trials. That's, that's, that's all. three races. And then at the Olympics itself, I think it's two. I think five. If I could just have a bit of a breakout and it would happen, right? Like I remember maybe at the time the world long jump record was set by a guy who jumped. I'm going to fuck this up, but like he jumped 20 feet. He was a 20 foot jumper. He was really good. He was world-class, but he was like the 19th best guy. But mm -hmm. then one time, one time somehow he went 27 feet just like completely out of character for him but <laughs> yeah that's somehow <laughs> his body had it and and that world record stood for like ages like 15 years every number i said is probably wrong but it, the idea yeah. is basically right yeah, yeah and i'm yeah. like that's what i need i just need five out of character races <laughs> like <laughs> if i could be somebody else for five races i'd have a gold medal hanging yeah. on my I neck just need one time like, and I think that a lot of shot, man. might be the same thing. Like, like you know giants. what? I played with scum. Uh, I got two kills and 15 deaths. But I think maybe if I could just get a little better, I'd turn that around. It's like, no, yeah. bro. You need to get a lot better to turn that around. <laughs> it, uh, it really is. There, There is a, a, a gap, right? It, it's it's pretty massive. But mm -hmm. when I think that, you know, I it's all about like that barrier to entry, right? And, and esports and gaming... It, has a low ish barrier. I say low ish because, like, let's be honest, you know, like good uh, gaming gear or good, uh, you know, like uh, monitor or, you know, having yeah, a good GPU or whatever, that, that stuff's expensive. Mm -hmm. Right. So, I, in that regard, I, I think like it is difficult, right? It, to be able to like get involved as it? far as like the financial side. Do you need it? It depends on the game you play. Right. I, I think I think that's I'm, that's where I could drop twenty eight thousand dollars on gaming gear tonight and it won't change my performance. Yeah. But unless bit. I kidnap a professional <laughs> gamer first, <laughs> right? nothing's going well, on. There is gonna be like I a could play against scum and he could beat me with a trackpad. Yeah. I think there is like a big difference between someone who has like gear that runs like Valorant at 120 FPS or even 60 FPS to 120, you know what I mean? Like there that gap i think is present uh mm -hmm. which is why like games like league of legends like do so well in china and and, and asia and, and latin america like dota as well because those games are less taxing on a computer mm -hmm. so huh. as a result is it valorant less taxing am i crazy it, it is it is but it's you know it's still got a lot going on you know i mean okay. you, you still have to have some modern gear like i think you at least have to have like a 20 series card to play uh valorant okay. i could be wrong but um yeah i mean you know and, and and also like at the high levels right like these players they have fps's that can go up to like 300 400 depending on like how they 
you know, there's some diminishing like, returns. You, there I is diminishing returns. 140. I, I agree. I think after 240, you're kind of pushing it. You know, <laughs> like 240 okay. is really good. Uh, like you notice the difference between 120 and 240. But even then, like if you are playing at that level and you go higher, I just don't. I I personally can't. But hey, maybe mm-hmm. someone better than me can see the difference between 360 and 240. Like I personally can't. Yeah, maybe you know. I think I can see 60 to 120. I think I can. Uh, Most or can. better Most yet, can. I think I can like four times out of five. After 120, it's all wasted on you. Could you could test it on your Xbox, I believe, because I think like or the Xbox you oh, could yeah. do uh, you could switch it to 120 FPS depending on the game. So oh, you could yeah. see what the difference is because in, well, yeah. I'm playing Final Fantasy 16 right now, and the difference between 30 and the 60 performance mode is quite like you know profound. I, I've got the Series X and I've got a TV that's made to game on so it'll do the the frames and it looks better than my gaming setup i'm always blown away when i go in and see my girlfriend playing like shadow of mordor or um what's the other one that looked really good the new tomb raider crush oh Uh, yeah stuff like the new tomb raider i was like oh my god like this this looks incredible Um, shadow of mordor is she still just killing those goofy names it's the new one i think there's a new one oh there's a new one i think there's like a, a brand new one some fucker was not ding dong in my doorbell driving the fucking dogs crazy with a goofy ass handlebar mustache. Told him to get on his bitch mobile and get moving. He's on a fucking what's that stupid thing you get on that you stand on, you balance on? A unicycle. <laughs> he was what, not a, a unicycle. It's a pogo stick. <laughs> a pogo I, don't wait, like it. On a I wanna know, you stand on it and balance on it. Was is it yeah, a scooter? You, the, the, fuck, yeah. the thing that the owner died. What was he there? It. The segue. On you. The segway. He was, he was on a full scale segway. <laughs> no, he was on the little one, the one that stops at your shins or so. Oh yeah, yeah. I forget oh what that's yeah, I've yeah. seen did those. The, did the wheel face forward or like? I, side he parked side. by him with a mailbox what and did walked he want? up. Did he tell you a riddle? I was, was cursing so much he didn't get a chance to tell me. I really hope he's not an official of some kind. But you I'm wouldn't think sh- he'd be on a segway if he had any power at all. Kyle, those are called <laughs> electric unicycles, and they are super badass. Um, he had both my... wheels side by sides. Oh, mm-hmm. I, that might be a hoverboard. Duo the cycle. electric unicycles, they uh, it's like EUC or something is the acronym they use. Mm-hmm. Outrageous. My friend has one. It, it, he goes 47 miles an hour on the thing. He wears <laughs> motorcycle protective gear, like a dirt bike helmet and elbow pads and shit. And you need it because they just like you wipe out on that shit all the time. Uh <laughs> But it, it it's like, like I, you I'm, remember that clip of in Jackass when Ryan Dunn intentionally crashes that penny farthing bicycle <laughs> where like it's the one with the giant front wheel. Oh, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Floor. And so he's like 11 feet in the air <laughs> and then he crashes it and falls so fucking hard. That's an electric yeah, way, way higher than that. This is what that fucker was was using. No, no, again, I keep saying what it he was. said. Kyle said that guy's wheels were side to side. That's a yeah, if if you Google a hoverboard. Style, Dude, it? they shouldn't have called them hoverboard. They're just trying to get yeah. clout from Back to the Future, and they mm-hmm. they don't hover. They they have wheels. I can see them. Those it's were destroyed deceptive. by mall cops because they went from like a cool futuristic mode of transportation when I was like in high school, and they That's came the out segue, to though, immediately. Yeah, the Segway. Like they, they they threw all the mall cops on it, and that is the only place I've ever seen one, <laughs> ever. And now malls are all closed, but then actual about that. cops maybe yeah. sometimes. But yeah, no, I think you're right. Cop with one. Uh, the hoverboard has I like have in Central Park with the wheels yeah. going forward. Central I've seen, Park I've maybe, seen actually no, they should have horses, right? No, they do. They have they have horses and then they have the bike ones, but I've also seen the guys that are on the hover or like on the uh, segways, uh like patrolling through Central Park is actually you know what? pretty great. I'll fully well, people are like jogging and stuff, yeah. <laughs> they're not cool. They're not cool. I'm not trying to say they're cool. I'm trying to say they're a little cool. They're kind of cool though, right? They're a little cool. Yeah. A lot. Oh, I've never thing? ridden one, but I want to ride one. Yeah. Yeah. Do you remember you that know? thing I had? You want to become Segway was... guys, Woody? Let's get. Let's get yeah, yeah. Segway. I've I've heard it said that they're like fat chicks. Like they're a lot of fun to ride. You just don't want your friends to see you doing it. Oh. Yes. I mean, I'll oh let my, my friends God. watch me Segway around. <laughs> That's not where I was hoping. I used to me and a big fat bitch <laughs> just on a Segway <laughs> <laughs> going going four miles an hour. Those go. Can you just walk next to me? <laughs> I think at that point you might as well just walk. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like a, a way to get where you were going if you're really concerned on like hoarding calories. 
Like I can't burn these calories. I need them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like you <laughs> walk outside your front lawn, you're like, oh, too many calories burned. Yeah, too many calories. Just over some bring the Segway. And then you just hop <laughs> on and just ride off to the sunset. Or uh, uh, like an off-road Segway. I, could, I bet yeah, that's I had, something they I have. had one. I had an two. off-road one? Yeah, like $6,000 a piece. It's a gasoline engine, and you've got rubber treads on each side like a tank. And you've got um, a post that comes up like the old school sea So you've got accelerator and brakes and everything up top. But Damn. if you try to brake at full speed, you just crash because it's a tank moving 35 miles speed? per hour. 35, 45, but they, that's with the governor on it. They can open it up and take it up to past 60, which I never did. Uh, oh, boy. And they... It's loud and fun. And when you turn sharp, you lean because you're, you're standing on a skateboard, by the way. I forgot that part. The skateboard <laughs> really? is on top a, a, of the tank skateboard? tread. Yes. And the skateboard is pointed, you know, like we're going that way. You stand, you're standing with your sort of sideways on this thing. And the skateboard's got spikes sticking up out of it. So you can't slip when you're in your boots. Mm -hmm. And you lean, you turn by shifting your weight, heels to balls of your feet, kind of doing that on the skateboard. And that shift of weight changes the amount of power that goes to the right track or the left track at full speed so it can do some crazy it'll this, do this sounds like an absolute turn. i've never even heard of this and i want to play on one that sounds like so much fun i uh what i've still got time. one of them i sent the other to sig to put some machine guns on and i never sent it back <laughs> some guy at sig is having a great time yeah it's, it's in florida Just right now they land so it's basically like snowboarding on land on flat it has land. Two MP last time i saw it it had an, it had two mpx machine guns uh like mounted to the post that goes up for the accelerator and everything. But that's, you know, it's been a minute. <laughs> but that thing's that pretty man. neat. Um, but that's the only thing I've ever ridden, even in that class. Like, like Woody's always been really good at balance going back from skateboarding and surfing and God knows how many other little hobbies. I remember when I visited him, he had some sort of death ball to, to balance on. I stood on that thing for like three <laughs> seconds and I was like, this is a trick. This is a booby <laughs> trap. This, this is so intruders will, will, will fall and fucking die. It was just a ball. I think part of that was in, to rehab a, a broken bone or something. <laughs> I learned immediately I did not have the same kind of balance skills as Mr. Gamertag. My goodness. <laughs> did, did you ever have those like almost Tom Sawyer moments where like something looked like a lot of fun and you got tricked into it? Like I remember oh, this time. this this hockey camp I went to. They had this really cool escalator or not escalator, like a treadmill, and mm -hmm. it had hard clear plastic on it that you could skate on, like you could skate into it, and it inclined, so you could incline it a huge amount and force people Jesus. to skate inclined. And they had a a harness that would strap around you. It was in this big giant apparatus, and so if you accidentally fell, you wouldn't tumble to the ground behind you; it would catch you. And I remember watching like my friends do that and being like, oh. That looks like so much fun. Like, and I'd watch them like tilt it up more and more. And I'm a goalie. And so I was watching players do it. And obviously they're having more fun. And then like I got on there and it was maybe like 25 seconds before I was like, you got me. Like, this is just unbelievably hard work. And like, it's one of those things where it's like a movie where like as you're skating, like you, it gets like five minutes in, you're skating slower. So now your strides are like kind of clipping the end of the treadmill. Like you're not like you're close to falling and the coach is like, keep going, keep going. Don't fall. You're going to be the first one to fall today. And I'm like, I'm the only goalie here. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so Were you in goalie pad skating like this? Yes. That you have okay, to skate that's in different. goalie pads. That's silly. Yeah. <laughs> What's the point of I, that? Only lower body. I didn't have to wear the upper body stuff, but that still doesn't make sense though. If it's just for exercise. Your, your locomotion is different. Like you, um, you, yeah. you, you can't push the same off the I side. Suppose. God, that sucked. Do you really need that sort of skill? If you're a, goalie what shouldn't you be stretching somewhere <laughs> um, or having tennis honest, balls thrown at you what, yeah what i really should have been doing was like the stuff i already did was like juggling tennis balls off the wall and like having people shoot on me but you yeah. know when you're at like a little hockey camp and it's you and like five of your buddies and you're the only goalie and they're all doing their own thing it's very isolating being the only goalie at the hockey camp Fair. because you're, you're like looking at your friends and then the, your own individual coach comes to you and goes hey taylor we're gonna go somewhere you can't hear your friends laugh i bet it's like that for kickers <laughs> Like if you're a kicker in the in, in football, like yeah. it's like that. There's so many pitchers, and it doesn't matter at early levels, though. Have you seen that NFL? Soon. There's some I don't remember what podcast it was on, but it's just a clip I saw this NFL player being asked, like, so it's like a total myth nonsense that kickers, place kickers, punters, like they're there at practice. They're they're working with you guys. And this guy was like, seriously? No, no, not at all. Those guys 
jog around and then do like seven kicks and then they're in the spa for three hours. Like <laughs> we all hate the kickers. <laughs> like they all, they all make so many, they all make so much money, like also. And they're just kind of yeah. like, Yeah, man, my foot. I'm not feeling it today. My foot's feeling Bermuda. And then they just yeah. go. That's a whole different game though. Do. Like, like any, you'd ask, you'd ask that like receiver or whatever that was that was fucking mad or jealous or whatever. It's like, how many catches did you get yesterday? It's like, you only kicked three balls. You 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 caught eight balls, but how many receptions did you get? It's a whole other thing. They'll go yeah. out there and they'll just they'll have to win the game off the bench. Not cold because they warm up, obviously, but that's such an ask to jump into a game that mm -hmm. really you haven't been doing much in. And yeah. go win it. It's like, all right, Taylor, all of us have been working so hard to get it to this moment. We need you to go out there and kick it in. Send yeah. us home with a, with a W. And do like, the Fuck. one thing you do. <laughs> do yeah. it. And I mean, it is a very it. harsh job, you know? Yeah. Like, because like, if you screw that up, like, uh, how many times have kickers, like, over the years been on these teams and then like screwed up a kick and then just like off the team next season because they're like, you didn't do the one thing we asked you to do and we're paying you a lot of money. Peace. And then that's yeah. it. Guy last year, maybe it might've been the Eagles kicker. He, he, he had made like some ungodly amount in a row. They were like, he's made 97 in a row. Oh yeah. 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 And then he missed like three in a row or something like that. And it was, it was like, I mean, if you miss a fourth, what do we do? You know, like, <laughs> at some point now, we got to stop. Now him. this is awkward. You know, it's crazy how much of sports is mental. Right, like golf. Oh my gosh! Mm -hmm. Like these guys have the same body every weekend they play. Yet they get very different performances, and it's just between their ears. It's how yeah. do you get that straight? How do you make? I find that better interesting. That? Like yeah. in golf too, because I know so little about golf that like until I talk to my brother or a friend who's really into it, I won't even like fully consider. I'll be like, "Why is this guy fucking sucks now?" It's like, well this course has this sort of lie and this sort of fairway structure. And he doesn't do well on that. And it's like, Oh, I, mm. I'm such a golf novice. Like I really, I always thought like, it's all got sand. Like it's all similar. John and I guess, I guess that's not true at all. I guess some golf courses are legitimately like, like regular people couldn't play there and have any fun at all. I saw John like Daly. Oh. I saw John Daly talking about Tiger Woods. And he's like, we well, he was all in the bar drinking and Tiger Woods walked in. I said, Tiger, Come drink with us. We're playing in the morning. Nah, I'm gonna go run. The ways five sheets to the wind. I'd already had me one bottle, and we was working on the second bottle. And it was, I mean, I had finished a bottle. You have to understand. <laughs> and then Tiger come back in about three three hours later. Tiger, sit down with us, have a drink. I'm gonna go hit some balls. He went and hit balls. Two more hours later, it's, it's almost 11 p.m. It's getting toward bedtime. He come back in. Tiger, have a drink with us. I'm gonna go swim in the pool. Well, Tiger went to bed. Hell, I didn't. I didn't. I just stayed up all night. Had me three <laughs> bottles. <laughs> Whooped his ass the next day. <laughs> and it's like, wow. What? How does that happen? Like, how does just, that happen? How does that big fat Tiger sounds exhausted? <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's yeah, what Tiger. I thought too. I was like, Tiger's fucking exhausted. He's got. Yeah. He's, like, he's got blisters on his palm. Yeah. See, we be working out John five Daly. hours before meet. I, I, I bet John Daly was like, my body knows every bit of muscle memory it's needed to to do what it has to do. Like, it doesn't matter. So I'm going to get drunk and like rip darts. Like throwing like cigarettes that. on Augusta. Like, just, I, just like not caring. <laughs> no, I, I wish there were more outliers in, in, in sports like that. The guys that are like that, that may be the traditionalist don't care for are the ones that always pull the sport kicking and screaming into the next era and get more eyes on it and stuff. You need mm -hmm. those colorful, silly guys that at first you're like, ah, you're making a mockery of our sport. We should be bowing to each other. <laughs> eh, but nobody was watching the bowing shit. This ain't Kung Fu. Like, yeah. let's, let's have a little fun here. You know? Yeah. I had yeah, a, that's I actually in the yard true. yesterday and uh, I, I've been to this place a month now and I haven't quite explored all of the backyard. There's a lot of, ground to cover out there and i was walking around exploring and uh suddenly i realized my feet were covered with something i didn't know what it was but i knew it was attacking me i thought i had stood in fire ants which we have here in georgia they're a south american ant that came over in the sugar shipments back in the day and they fucking hurt and uh but it's not so as i'm sprinting toward the house that's when i'm sort of learning what's on me because i'm like hitting my feet and screaming it's wasps it's it's a, it's a whole yellow jacket nest that i've been standing on they have Ooh. these burrows in the ground. There can be hundreds and hundreds of them in there. Ooh. Little stinging wasps. 
and they're all over my feet and my uh, <clears throat> my sweatpants. And I, my, I've shed my shoes. I've shed my sunglasses. I'm screaming very effeminately. And the dog is with me and he's trying to fight him off me, too. And uh, now I'm 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 in my like gym, uh, which is attached to the house. And I'm naked. I've, I've shed all my clothes now and uh, thrown them into the house. And I'm in the Smart. house screaming and all the dogs are with me. And uh, Toby's got wasps on him. So I'm fighting the wasps off Toby. I'm reaching in. I'm just grabbing them off him and squishing them. Just in your house the <laughs> You were in the house fighting them. They're, <laughs> they're still swarming, though. And now I, I'm na still naked and turn my attention toward my clothes. Clothes are full of them. There's like eight wasps in my pants. Kill Oof. all those. They stung me like five fucking times. Stung poor Toby twice. Oh, but we won. That's... We won. You won the war. I, we went back. I, when I first story. learned on this over the, the WhatsApp, <laughs> and our conversation, bro, getting stung hurts so much more than like you remember it is hurting. It is so pain. I, I got stung by a bee once. And this is, you know, not as bad as a wasp, I think. Mm -hmm. And I was like, God damn, like I haven't been stung since I was a kid. And as a kid, I would cry now. Well, that right's been removed from me, but I want to. This hurts a ton. <laughs> yeah. if you want. So uh, I haven't done it since I was a kid because I'm a man. But mm. if you want to really deal with the pain of a uh, a bee sting, if you've got mm -hmm. old school no, aspirin, <laughs> no, say less. I don't want if you've that. got old school aspirin, the kind that's in a little tablet that'll dissolve. It's going to start nicely. <laughs> you, you know, you just put the little old school like baby aspirin on there and just rub it in with a little bit of water until it kind of turns into a paste. I thought you were going to do a bump. It. Because you need it quickly, you know. You go to the bottle you where you rub keep your the aspirin coke. into your skin in an effort to hurt yourself. No, it becomes a paste. It turns into a yes. powder with a little bit of water, and aspirin is a painkiller, obviously. So it it can work as a topical painkiller, and it'll very quickly. Oh, that's where this is headed. I, you were like, hey, oh. you started with if you want to feel the pain of a sting, do this. Yeah, yeah, oh. that's why I was confused. Did I, Oh, yeah, maybe I, yeah. maybe I he wants to not feel the pain. No, I, I want why is because I'm on pins and needles. I want to know how do I feel the pain of a sting without yeah, getting you, you just go grab some bees. <laughs> oh, I, mean, I guess Problem I guess solved. that's yeah. the only They're option. At that point. Aren't, aren't yellow jackets the ones that pursue until you're like a given distance away from the the nest? Like Total they bastards. they keep staying on I you. Don't, I don't know of any study about that, but I'll say they are extremely aggressive. Uh, mm -hmm. They they stayed mm -hmm. stuck to me, and when they when I would find them in my clothes inside, they want they didn't want to get away. They wanted to fight. When they when I would open up my pants leg and one would swarm out, he didn't he didn't zoom across the other end of the room. He came at me and like hit my shirt, and I had to like the fight was on. Like you know it's a wasp, <laughs> so I won. But the fight was over. There was like eight <laughs> of them on the was floor. You. All right, <laughs> it was did, like did you, how many of the stings were inside the house? Oh. At least one, one for sure. Yeah, Ooh. at least Ooh. one. Yeah, I, they stung That's me not... on like the inside of my arm, on my back, on my ass, and that a bunch of my foot. Like, like, like at least once on my heel. Which well, because it was at the, it was at the, it was on, 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 like in the ground, right? Is what yeah. you said. Yeah, on, they're in yeah, the so ground in this burrow, and it's. I didn't it, know it, that. Oh shit! I, I don't know much. Of, I don't know if they're up north or around the country, but I, uh, I remember once we were bow hunting deer, and my. The way you do that, you stalk in with all your gear, you put some of your gear on the ground, and then you take your deer stand and you use it to climb up the tree, and then you hoist your your bow or your gun up with you. And when my dad sat his bow on the ground, he sat it right on top of one of those burrows, one of those nests. And so he's fixing all of his gear, getting his climbing deer stand and everything, and he looks back down, and it's covered with them. It's crawling with them. And he's just Ooh. like, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> he's just got, there's a string tied to it so he just has to drag it like give himself 30 40 feet of slack and start dragging it through a field when he's supposed to be deer hunting and they're swarming and chasing him so now he's running with the bow and they're chasing him and the bow through the field yeah they're real aggressive but when i was they a little hurt. kid my Oof. uh my mom like leaned too hard on the don't be afraid of bees thing when i was like a young kid to the point that like mm. i had not even a vaguely healthy fear of bees like i knew wasps were the the skinny ones and all i understood about them was like they can sting forever steer clear of mm. them but i thought that like bees you had to like actively try to kill them for them to sting you because my mom put it in my head like that's like so half I, right i had like a level of morality imposed on bees where i'm like they will know i'm here to like try and catch them and i did catch bees for a, yeah <laughs> to be their friend 
to be their friend, to be like, like my dad and mom used to tell this story. They'd be like, yeah, you would just walk up to us on the, the patio sometimes when you were like four and be like, you'd be like, what do you got, Taylor? And you'd just open your hands and you'd have bees. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or at least a bee. And I, that stopped when uh, that I remember. I used to think Taylor was yeah. so smart. <laughs> that it your parents when you like showed them bees. I guaranteed that it got a reaction, and that's what made me want to do it, uh, uh, probably. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that stopped when I grabbed like one big fat I, bumblebee that was on my, my hot dog, and it stung me. My, I remember distinctly, I was about shit eight to ten, somewhere in there. Maybe a, couldn't have been much older, and I caught this little lizard, this little maybe four or five inches long, and I had it in my hands like this, and I went to my dad. My mom and dad were on the back porch relaxing. I think they're having some drinks. They're just laid back in their chairs and i think i tossed it on him and he fell backwards out of the chair and he beat the shit out of me <laughs> <laughs> i guarantee my mom remembers that ass whooping i took and i mm. i know my dad does he brought it up about a couple years ago <laughs> like, he whipped my ass i scared the shit out of him with that lizard just like ah <laughs> it, my uh my uncle is terrified of snakes and rats so he always goes straight to the shotgun, even if it's indoors. Like he arms oh. himself right away. Yeah. Yeah. He's blown holes in his house before dealing with like a rat snake. And <laughs> oh. uh, I, he said the funniest That's thing. That's doubly like, scary for him. Actually, it could be a solution. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not anymore. Uh, but he he said, um, I, I was, why would you shoot a snake like that in the house? It was like. If he'd gotten away, I had to I'd have had to burn the whole damn thing down. I couldn't have lived with him. I couldn't have lived with him crawling around in here tonight. And it's true. Like if there was a snake in your house, I would have a real hard time going to sleep in that house and not because they no, can they can you do just kill it with a hockey stick and then you sleep soundly. What if it gets mm. away though? Into the house. He didn't get he didn't get walls. Away. No, but it's a rat <laughs> snake. <laughs> no, it's I'm, not a woody snake. I assume I'm fine. It, like it seems like we could be friends. Yeah, Dad you know how you let you let spiders time. stay alive. You, yes. I always let house snakes <laughs> live. <laughs> it's genius, yeah. And if the snakes Still, are too much, that's it, why I never kill the snake. spider monkeys. Yeah, <laughs> you Dad have an increasingly in more dangerous predatory <laughs> chain of animals. <laughs> right? No, don't kill that. That's the snake hawk. In case, in case don't kill don't snakes. kill the cougars or the spider monkeys get out of control <laughs> exactly dad was in the backyard shooting his pistol one time I, this is forever ago i was five when this happened but apparently my mom screamed because there was a mouse in the cupboard and he comes running in the house of course with his pistol in hand and there the mouse is i've never asked him why but the answer has to be man there he was and I had the gun and all. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> and he'd have been younger. He, wanted, he, he wanted new cabinets. Shot. Of course, he vaporized it. There was, I was like, was there much cleanup? Oh, no. no, no. Just patching <laughs> the hole. Just patching <laughs> the hole. <laughs> it didn't like explode it near all your nice dishware? Oh, I'm sure it did. It would just vaporized it, though. It was a big gun. <laughs> it's a nothing big left. Gun. Nothing left. You shoot I wouldn't want to shoot any animal in my house because you'd be thinking the whole time, about the amount of errands, chores, and work you're making for yourself. You gotta pick that shit and, up. And carpeting, and it's gonna explode. You think the viscera of a snake's gonna come off your drywall and your carpet? Yeah, no you're problem. A little viscera <laughs> here and there. <laughs> a yeah. little bit here and there. A little light there. viscera is good for the I, decor. That adds character you know? to yes. the laundry room when you've slain <laughs> a few critters in there, okay? I got no problem with that at all. What's the biggest thing I, you guys have ever killed in your house? In my house? Or apartment, no. whatever. There was that. There was that drifter. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> uh, um, <laughs> no, but he was bad. He was bad. So he I murdered a homeless. human one time. Uh, no, he was a good drifter. He was a great drifter. Biggest thing I can Annoying think of that euthanized so a pet rat. Euthanized it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I used to uh, flew him to Sweden. Dry ice, which is frozen carbon dioxide, I think. And just smashed and, him uh, with it. Yeah, <laughs> put him in a cooler. <laughs> and he just falls asleep and then asphyxiates. And apparently it's a kind way to kill a rat. I Googled it. The, the oh, nicest wow. way to kill a rat. I'm, it just uh, <laughs> goes sweetly to sleep. Is it going like, do you hear like... In the it was already very sick. It had a large tumor on its side. I've done it more than oh, once, but like uh, it, th this is yeah. basically putting rats down like you would a dog. Okay. My yeah. daughter likes pet rats. She has them now. 
Not in my Still, house. Yeah. Not, gotta, not in my <laughs> fucking house, though, because <laughs> not a chance. I'm going to have to put my dog down soon, the little 16-year-old Pomeranian. Yeah, I feel mm. real bad. Uh, mm. I'm going to try one more thing. Um, I'm going to get it a little oxygen tent. And uh, and uh, like put it on oxygen, see if that helps. Because she's just like Ashley failure. Seals. <laughs> it's I, I need wings to do to come on and make a video where he holds a pen, crosses his <laughs> hands a lot, and says, "So Ashley, while I'm using you for clout, as you die in front of us, <laughs> oh I need him to." I wish he could raise some. Oh, money I remember this now. I assumed everyone knew who Ashley Seals was, which yeah. is not good. He's but that I had totally forgotten. That that time. She is the girl with maybe cis, uh, not Her cerebral don't palsy. Work. Cerebral palsy, perhaps. Mm. I'm not positive on that, though. But uh, Wing said that if you donated money towards this cause and help her get into a bariatric chamber, then it might help her walk. And uh, um, that was his heart was in the right place, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, what was I'm sure. said? I don't. Know what, what, <laughs> I, I, whoever's joke it was that I think you're said you should start going to graveyards and doing videos. Yeah, we <laughs> like, were gonna one up each other. Yeah, he, yeah. he was like, dude, this is working great. Everyone loves this. I'm gonna help out more like sick people. And I was like, that's nothing. I go on to do seances and shit. <laughs> <in a graveyard. laughs> like, dude, you go to hospice scare. I'm going to the graveyard. You can't, you can't one up me on this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It, you can't but, remove me uh, from every children's hospital. I, so I've been doing some research. I've been trying to figure out how to oxygenate this little fucking dog. I think I can get like a little doggy tent that I just turn the O2 on to and she can sit next to me on the couch yeah. on her pillow and just... You could put her in a little her. iron lung. That's exactly what I'm thinking. Yeah. What is That's an iron is a, lung? Is it's it an a... old school bariatric chamber. Okay. Mm -hmm. so it's, it's an airtight little chamber that you just dump oxygen into. Yeah, I don't I, think it really needs to be no, no, because yeah, you just keep yeah, the constant flow oxygen. going with, with what I'm mm. doing. With a barrier, yeah, and the, the, the iron lung, your head's sticking out, and so you're like chatting with your head out. And yeah, I think that's for a long time the only thing they had for polio, so you don't right? breathe in it. Like, what, what, what's it the breathes, purpose? Of it breathes for you, and so it's like, where's the air go in? They cut a hole in your lung. I thought they were all tubed up in there. I don't know. Tubed up in there. That is not how yeah, a bariatric chamber works. Is that not? They're not all tubed up. No, they're this all is hilarious. That this they're is pressurized our, in there. Uh, here's a SpongeBob cartoon. To <laughs> Thank you for the. Yes, this is this is Mrs. Puff in a bariatric <laughs> you see how, chamber. You see the balloon in the back. Now that represents that the device has not been turned on. Obviously, or that balloon will be. <laughs> I mean, look, right. at her, look at her like, eyes. Uh, looks like there's no pickles on his sandwich. I like the people on the side of the iron lung. Yeah. Hot. Man, Zach says it forces your job. diaphragm to to work. Um, I oh, would, I uh, mean, bariatric chamber suggests that you're like pressurized or depressurized. Your body is in there, which might make it yeah. easier for you to inflate or. In yeah, I guess I'm an idiot. You know? What the fuck would the point of the giant tube be if you were all plugged up anyway? They just put yeah. you in bed. But I'm not gonna put my dog in that. I'm just gonna get a little oxygen. Or Although that would be a, it would a little look little adorable. Dirty. How do you, you know, do it? Do you put her in a little? Gonna... I'm picturing a small tent or something. And exactly. Just pipe oxygen into it. It's a square little doggy tent that looks like a uh, dog carrier, and then mm. you can just pump O2 to her. Uh, the, right now, the question is the cheapest way to get O2, whether I get canisters or an oxygen concentrator. Uh, so that's what I'm looking at right now. What is an oxygen I, concentrator? <laughs> yeah, I'm that? curious, man. I'm in the it's research. It's exactly right what now. it sounds like. It concentrates it just pulls it out of the, the air? Yeah, you know, there's the oxygen is has uh, our air has a pretty low oxygen content. I think it's like 13 or 16 percent of our air is oxygen. So it, you know pumps those numbers up and then gives it to the animal. So you'll have an whatever. oxygen generator. You'll have an endless supply of oxygen. Oh, yeah. Oh, just like you do, Woody, uh, in the air. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but oh, mine's oh, not your point, but I can make it. Yeah, yeah you'll true. be able to make O2. That could be useful for something else. I don't know. Yeah, I could Next oh, time you drive is, your car at altitude. This is sad. At, altitude? Nah, at that... what altitude are you driving? <laughs> Oh, I you lose power power at like wait, 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 wait. Did you see the Photoshop on that one? That was yeah. unbelievable. Yeah. No, I did never see it. It was, it was so <laughs> rough at the bottom. It was <laughs> pull that back up. <laughs> I need to see that again. Do you not I think it was a real photo? <laughs> no. Oh, God. Yeah, look at that. That is just great. There's like no yeah. shadowing underneath that <laughs> right leg. You know, like the dog <laughs> just looks miserable do. in there. <laughs> like, yeah, you what can tell is because they picked a not dying dog. Yeah. Nice. Also, they put the tail covering like the you know the nether region area of the dog to like 
protected what? for whatever reason. Look, is this one of those listings. Really Look at the hair. Is this, hair. One, of those, uh, <laughs> is this one of those Amazon listings where the company's name is like X Factor and like yeah. the, like the description is like Air in Tube for yeah. dog, Air Good, air. Oxygen All, Air like, Factor oh. X, yeah. and then <laughs> then they just go. made in China, oh. and all the reviews are like, my dog still died. <laughs> I, 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 no. I'll take Chinese air. There's as good as ours. I'm told. Oxygenforpets.com. That yeah. seems like where you should go shopping. I've been My dog Amazon died, and all I got was this lousy air tent. <laughs> you know, you can get a T-shirt for it. And I was thinking, like maybe, you know, me, I would like to do cardio and test my performance on and off oxygen or something yes, like that. Like I, I would love to do things like that. Mm. We just watched, we just had a UFC event that was at Salt Lake City, which is at roughly 5,000 feet of altitude. And you could see it affect a lot of people. Um, and, and, and so I don't know, I'd like to experience that. The last time I was in Colorado, I remember not being short of breath, but no oh, I was super short of breath last time I was out there because I, I was out there years ago to commentate the, the uh, like these series of tournaments. I would fly in and out every week. So my like body had to adjust to that mm. altitude every time. And after a while, it, it, it got there. But in the beginning, I would start commentating like a whole sentence and then I would need to just <gasps> and then I just go back casting more like like talking more. And then I have mm. to take another big gasp of breath again. And it was a lot to work around. So. Yeah, yeah, that it is a and, and we were like I, I don't know exactly like where we were, but all I know is we were high up and I walked outside and I saw a lot of mountains. So I'm assuming we were very high up, but yeah, pretty much yeah, all yeah, I'm yeah, from New York, so I know nothing about altitude. So yeah, yeah that's yeah. definitely the highest I've been in uh in Colorado, both literally and literally. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um <laughs> and you you notice it for sure. Uh I'm I don't know. I was I don't know how to say this without sounding shitty, but I in really good shape you know when mm -hmm. i was there so mm -hmm. I, I was i was running you know miles and miles a week so uh maybe didn't but i remember i've gone times past and especially when you'd be smoking weed because it usually be a weedcation for me the coughing and everything you'd really be like Whew, man, gotta, oh yeah that shit would have to hit slow man. down <laughs> after a little it's while <laughs> oh i just remembered uh i saw your blue shirt and made me think of it this, is a, this month we have we're having a don't know who he's moon. talking to <laughs> doesn't matter <laughs> we're having a blue moon this month it's yeah, one of it's you two blue moon. so what does that mean moon, so in modern times a blue moon means that you have two full moons in one calendar month in olden times which is when, where the saying comes from it meant that it was the third full moon in a four moon full moon season kind of irrelevant information but now you know uh, but mm -hmm. this month in particular, two full moons. We already had the first one, obviously, at the beginning of the month. On the end of the month, we're having another one, and it's a super moon because we're at our um, apogee peregrine. Which one's the first Ooh, one? That's I cool. think peregrine is the is when we're closest to uh, the moon, uh, and apogee is when we're at its furthest. So we're getting like an 8% more powerful moon than normal because we're closer and full. But mm. on top of that, on the, on the night of the 16th slash 17th, we're getting a meteor shower. It's that once in 33 year meteor shower where we pass through the tail of that comet i can't remember who can called. see it we'll be able to see it it'll not hail out at 100 comet, right no not that one it's um yeah. i could look doesn't matter it's some numbers and and like it's named after two scientists so it, it wouldn't matter but our but, hemisphere uh, is seeing it or whatever yeah it's supposed to peak out at 150 meteors per hour uh at one point of course that's the entire sky so you're not going to see anything like that but these are really fast meteorites, they say. Uh, I don't know. I think I read something like four miles per second. And so wow. we'll be able to see them. It should be a, a did bright Did you night. guys hear about NASA opening up a streaming service? I did yeah. not. Yeah, it yeah, seems yeah. odd. <laughs> no, actually, kind of cool. Uh, they, I have to find the article. But like they're, they're going to open up a streaming service where you could just watch the launches and stuff that they do. And and then like and like track the satellite. So like if you're into that kind of thing, you know, and and there are a lot of people who genuinely love just staring at that stuff. Yeah. Uh, all that content apparently would be available. I'll see if I can find it. But I thought yeah, they already I, did all that. Like, or is it just SpaceX that streams their launches and whatnot? NASA channel has uh, always yeah. shown the like wide angle, right? Yeah. Here's the press release for it. I put it in the chat for you guys, but. Yeah, they uh, they announced it like a few days ago. Basically, uh, it's 
the idea is to just make, you know, like merge everything together through like the NASA app, you know, because everything's got to be an app nowadays. Oh, my God. It's called NASA Plus. No, is it? Oh, that's. Oh, but the plus looks like a star. So I'm kind of okay with it. (laughs) NASA Plus. I wonder if it's I mean, good or if it sucks. it sucks. I, I mean, when I worked in IT, we used, to always, look, <laughs> we used to always look at the way that NASA yeah, my money. Their, I, <laughs> yeah. yeah. We used to always look at the way that NASA does their IT. And mm. it's incredibly conservative. Their chips are like seven years old because mm-hmm. they know all the bugs. Everything's been found. Like if they use a Java virtual machine or something, it's from it's archaic and it doesn't have any of the new shit in it. And it's because like they're after reliability. And even if it's buggy, if they're known bugs, NASA can work with it. It's the unknown bugs they have a problem with. So I wonder if the streaming service is going to be straight out of fucking 2004. <laughs> like everything else NASA does. You know what would be hilarious hope, is if I hope similar it to like 2013. What if like like 2013 Hulu they have an excellent UI? Like they just because that is effectively <laughs> something that is worse now than streaming services used to be. Every single user interface or Hulu is the worst. I don't know yes. whose niece got hired to design Hulu's user interface, but it's like spit in my face why don't you you can't yeah. even like go to the next episode of something you have to mm-hmm. back out and then select i want to play this again and then if you back out a second time it'll say oh i guess you really didn't want to watch that this episode of king yep. of the hill again yeah it's like you it's bitch. So i only use this for three shows get it right it it's so hard to watch 10 minutes of an always sunny philly uh it's always sunny episode close hulu leave the room and come back and get back into that episode and watch it. it it's so fucking hard to do that and it should be it's the only thing i want from you it should be the first thing when i press hulu resume yeah. playing mm-hmm. yes yes resume playing that's all yeah. i want there's no but no you that. have to scroll down through a million ads and it's like hey here's 50 of the gayest movies you've ever heard of and it's like <laughs> what? why like, like just, I, just cool just man i just wanted to watch Oh, it's yeah. sunny that's it you know <laughs> like, like like i'm fine with your gay movies but that's not king of the hill I, i'll I always appreciate netflix that. for that though netflix always has the continue watching front and center that, that is always something that i will appreciate as a person who yeah. every night pulls up his netflix and goes to community and puts it on <laughs> and <laughs> falls asleep while getting absolutely high <laughs> it's it's a great feeling it's a, you know Ooh. i love that you it know is, i love this function. about netflix like you said, the continue watching, they've got that on lockdown. But get this. If I just watched this episode and I continue watching into the next one, Netflix assumes correctly I don't want a recap of the episode I watched seconds ago. True. And the intro, they're like, hey, Wood, you want to skip this intro? One button. You press it and it does it. And it doesn't skip all the intro. It leaves like half a second. So you know you didn't miss anything. That's but, nice. I, <laughs> that is nice. Really with that. Paramount Plus. Uh, <laughs> I Look, guarantee Star that Trek was like has so a great in, intro. Uh, oh god, it's the best one. That. But I skip it after I've binged three episodes in a row. I was like, all right, yeah. I, I get Strange New Worlds, Brave New, whatever, and it skips you six seconds into the first scene. I Too missed the setup. You not mm. only do you miss that quick little bit where you, the, the the ship floats past you in space, while you hear like space noise, mar- I guess. Yeah. There's that little <laughs> jingle at the end, you know what I mean? That's very it's crazy. the beginning of sentences. <laughs> like you don't know what we're talking about. It, it's it's real frustrating that we have that dialed in. Um, yeah. Again, I got to recommend that show. Strange. Um, I'm not kidding. Strange New Worlds. Strange New Worlds. The new Star Trek. Yeah. Real good. Season two. Oh, yeah. Uh, has been great. I love it a lot. The Black Doctor. I fucking love that guy. That guy's so yeah. goddamn hard. N- Nagoya, I think it is. Yeah, like he has a crazy arc. I haven't finished the first oh. season, but his arc oh. in the first season was awesome. And then I'm right, curious well, I don't to see spoil where they go. anything to you, but let me tell you how like they keep hinting at his like because he fought in the Klingon War and they keep hinting about how scary he was and what a badass he was. And we Ooh. finally get to it. And um he's like got the most confirmed close quarters kills in Starfleet. Like, like hmm. he's He's using this super serum full of adrenaline and painkillers that soups him up so he can just go take on multiple Klingons at a time and close quarters <laughs> That's combat. That's how plays Tarkov. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, uh, just that guy's awesome. Um, I, I love that show. I like all the actors in it. Um, I, I don't find it to be 
so woke that it makes me like grossed out or anything. I don't roll my eyes too often. And but they, it's they, I mean, it's Star Trek, though. You know, I mean, Star Trek's been that way for years. Yeah. You know, I always get, I always laugh when people, beginning. yeah, make that thing. It was like, oh, when has Star Trek been woke? It's like, eh, you always. haven't been paying close enough attention. Since the first like, yeah. episode 60 years ago. Yeah. I, I mean, it's the first show too far. Ever. You could still go too far and lose me. Aren't like, they the space first communists, episode? basically? Like, yes. like they're all. Well, yeah, yeah but, but it's I've but it was also the first show to have an it was the first show to do an interracial kiss on TV, which was like massive at the time. Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, like people were telling Nichelle Nichols like like not to do it and stuff because I think they had they, interspecies fucking. You know, yeah, that too. Implied. Kirk loves those now Orion Slade girls. <laughs> That's wrong. Didn't they bring that back in the third yeah. reboot, the third Pine movie? I think it is. Oh, there's lots of green green bitches. Yeah, Chris, yeah, yeah. And, and he's got. He I, always has one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, for sure. He likes Kirk loves green pussy, and, and nothing <laughs> nothing wrong with that. Um, I, I like the new one a lot. I, I find it to have a really good sense of humor. There's a lot of quirky awkwardness between Spock and his fiance. Where, oh yeah. Like, and he's got like a shitty mother-in-law. And so and I know it starts. It's nice that they balance Spock's mother-in-law with like fixing an asteroid problem that's about to hit a planet or something like that. And I yeah. care about each story equally because Scott's because Spock's mother-in-law is just a real cunt. Just awful. Um, yeah, I love that show a lot. I've been digging it so much. I just wanted a Star Trek that was adventure of the day again. You know, that's like exactly that's when Star getting. Trek was at its Every best. Every week, a new adventure. Great. Fun. Like this, uh, apparently, like this week, like I can't wait to catch up because this week's like this big musical thing. And like Anson Mount is like a, a, a he did Broadway. Like, you know, these guys are like, that one. you know, I, I'm, I'm into it because I like the weird ones, too. You know, like mm-hmm. I, I like Star Trek right. again. It's at its best when it's weird. And, and it's at its best when it's doing space exploration shit, you know. I, I love that about it. Do but, you watch yeah. uh, Lower Decks, the animated? Yes. <laughs> that <laughs> show is... So no spoilers, it's... but they just did a crossover where the animated characters go in. I haven't seen world. that yet. I haven't seen that yeah. yet, and I'm really excited. Uh, but it also it doesn't make job. a lot of sense, though, because the uh, Lower Deck characters are mostly taking place in the era of the future. Yeah. Yeah, uh, so they explain if... that. They, Got it. They go okay. through a time portal. Say no more, fam. <laughs> First, first 30 <laughs> seconds, it's like, and they, they explain the whole thing. And the time travel is a big part of the episode. Uh, they do a great yeah. job. And I didn't know yeah. that the, the guy who does the, I didn't know that Huey from The Boys was the voice of Boimler from Lower Decks this whole time. Yeah. So it was cool yeah. to see that actor jump on the, you know, a Star Trek. It's got to be such a cool thing for all, for, for people, for, I don't know, people who uh, are Star Trek nerds to be able to get on an episode. Oh, uh, in yeah, the most dude. recent episode, I saw Clint Howard. And I guarantee Clint Howard was like, did you get me in Star Trek? And they're like, absolutely, Ron Howard's brother. We can yeah. put you in Star Trek, you ugly yeah. son of a bitch. <laughs> was he, I, a, I, was I, he a Klingon? Did they put... Like, no, no. He's <laughs> he's like a triage medic or something like that. Like he's mm. got... Like, he's it's got usually like, like a behind-the-scenes role. Or not behind-the-scenes, but it's usually like a small role. And then they'll give him like a few lines and stuff. And yeah. then they'll... Send them off their merry way on the next episode. It was like I don't know if you guys watch any of the Star Wars stuff, uh, but they did a Mandalorian episode where they're like everyone was so mad because like Jack Black and Lizzo were on it, and and my wife made up a she brought up a really good point. She was like the the cameo was cool because you know that like those two people like Jack Black especially I'm a huge Jack Black fan and he is yeah. a mega Star Wars fanatic right so you know that he and also Lizzo are like really excited to be a part of this thing you know because it's Star Trek and or Star Wars and how could you not want to be a part of it right um but it kind of takes you away from it you know because like mm-hmm. you know who Jack Black is you know yeah. who Lizzo is and they don't really change the way that they looked they just took Jack Black and Lizzo, gave them nice outfits, and then pff, put them in the Star Wars world. Yeah, it which, didn't bother me honestly. And, and yeah. maybe it's because I'm not taking the Mandalorian or Star Wars canon all that seriously. But hmm. I actually look. I See, hate look Lizzo. at that. I, 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 I legit don't expect- know what Lizzo looks like. I wouldn't the, if she, I was in the elevator right. with Lizzo. I'd have no idea. That's yeah, right. and that's fine because it's not like not your music or anything like that. You know, oh, like we're about I, to talk lots of Lizzo. Oh God. Um, <laughs> So I, I don't yeah, I know that she's he, in trouble. Yeah. Yeah. Of oh she, yeah. I heard been, about that. Right. She's been at the heart of like a whole fat acceptance movement. You know, she's got them big bitches on stage with her dancing around. Mm-hmm. And it turns out she was running a real abusive 
uh, uh, show over there. It seems like they're mm. fat shaming her already fat backup dancers. And and she's like having them do all sorts of weird things. I, I'm sure Zach has an article somewhere to, to nitpick through. But the striking one, one was where she was forcing her backup dancers to take bites out of vaginas that were no bites out of bananas that were protruding from prostitutes bana vaginas in Amsterdam. I first I wanted to conflate vagina and banana because Lizzo <laughs> did. She put bananas in vaginas and had her dancers eat them out of their vaginas, and some of them didn't want to. And I guess maybe they got in a little bit of yeah, trouble because that makes a lot of sense. It's, it's like you so can't was this, was this part of one the day. video, or was this just this is what she likes to do? As a Saturday night, Taylor. She, I, I so my friend, going off uh, my friends, my friend who's like a big fan of her music and stuff was telling me about it, and she was basically saying like, yeah, literally that, and that it was just like for those particular like artists, like the dancers and stuff, like they were just uncomfortable, and then they were told that they had to do it, which is like mm -hmm. if someone's uncomfortable and you're telling them you have to do it, I, there's no you're not winning there, you know, mm -hmm. like there's no victory to be had. You're you're mm -hmm. forcing someone to do something that they don't want to do, plain and simple. You know, I'm the only and, one that thinks that's kind of straight. Like like if she made her backup dancers go down on the women, then that's gay, right? Girl on girl. But you put a banana in there, and now it's straight again. I don't think that that's yeah, there we go. <laughs> now, you're just, yeah. now you're just eating. I, I you're, think it is just a bizarre thing that rich people doing? do. Was she like you know? so? What what is what is the stage setting? She's sitting, I imagine, in a very <laughs> no, stage chair. sets on cinder no, block. It I is a assume. very <laughs> it's no, a she can, very sturdy she's dancing and running around and jumping around the whole time. She is jumping very, now. I know you're telling jumping you. and rolling <laughs> and 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 frothing about. She she's, she's really she she froths. She she gets after it. So, yeah, it's real. Okay, so it doesn't. While this is all happening, they're saying she's running around and just kind of watching as her backup dancers are biting the bananas out of the pussies of her other backup dancers. Oh, is that what was happening no, like no, on no. stage? No, no, Wait, no, 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 no. Are you picturing Prostitute. it to be on stage? No, like, I'm picturing hired... like this is you said this is like a Saturday night thing. This was not on stage, correct? No, she hires prostitutes, whores, ladies of the night as our last guest would say. Oh, and God. and and puts bananas in their pussies. And then forces the backup dancers to eat the bananas out of the pussy. I get it now. That's pretty gross. I wouldn't like that. Yeah. Yeah, I, I wouldn't care for it. Wow. I'm actually yeah. reading this article right now. So apparently I, uh, I kind of like it. They What's were like also like? trying to get them to switch to their religion. <laughs> the suit <laughs> also accuses Quigley, the captain of Lizzo's dance team, of trying to convert them, the three dancers who are suing, uh, to their religion, calling her alleged behavior unceasing. I don't even unceasing Damn. while Constant. also chastising them for having premarital sex. What? Wait, they're eating uh, bananas out of pussies, cooters and being chastised for premarital sex. Wait, this is, it sounds like they, yeah. it sounds like these are two different things. I It sounds like <laughs> it sounds like there's uh, a person in win. Quigley, something Quigley, Sherlene uh, Quigley. OK, so the. Uh, so all three plaintiffs, Crystal Williams, Ariana Davis, and Noel Rodriguez, performed with Lizzo at festivals and appearances from September 2021 to April 2022 during the special tour and went on to perform in the 2023 European run. Uh, all right, Lizzo, uh, her production company, and Sherlene Quigley are named as defendants of the suit. But it sounds like a majority of the things that they're doing are going after Quigley, but Lizzo's attached to it as well. So this is I, I got to read it more because I'm just kind of paraphrasing that first Everyone's portion of hating it. hating on Lizzo, but not me, right? What, what I'm hearing is fat shaming and kinky sex, and these are a few of my favorite things. Yes, fat shaming is <laughs> Woody is a fat shaming <laughs> king, an absolute king. It, it, I, I've said it before; it might be my favorite thing about him is that he does not <laughs> abide fatness. Woody is that guy. Like, if it were acceptable in public, you would be like. Like, like taking a photo of a fat person to like laugh at with Jackie later, like you and me. <laughs> it seems he's to like me, a help. He's like a health Nazi, like an actual one. Like, like I, I. It's good. I'd vote for would, Woody over any of these fucking Woody running. We'd be rounding them up in no time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, it's what you do. You put them on trains and you help them lose. And then you're yeah. like, you're, no, they, they see the trains and you're like, oh, no, no, we're walking. <laughs> <laughs> no, put us on the train, please. No, 
<laughs> I've set up a series of obstacle courses and, and tires <laughs> on, on the way to this fat camp. We're going to get this Fitness country camps. fit again. Fitness camp. It's <laughs> a good-ass uh, idea. Yeah, this, law, this lawsuit is uh, interesting, but also not, again, why is none of this shocking to me? I don't know. I've become so disillusioned on everything. Mm-hmm. <laughs> since yeah. since we last I spoke, so weird. Like, like, <laughs> since on we on the other spoke. hand, though, like I, I saw that Taylor Swift gave everybody that worked on her uh, her latest tour like this enormous bonus that came to maybe was it fifty five million dollars that she Damn. Be, I have twenty five in my head, but I'm low it confidence was, on that. It was yeah, Zach said fifty five. I, I think it was fifty five million dollars. Was it okay? Divert, like, give everybody yeah. a little bit of this. Fifty five million goes a long way. I don't yeah. know how much yeah. you had for. You divide that yeah. 250 ways, and it's still a lot for everybody. Well, I mean, you consider how rich she is, right? And then oh, yeah. also, like, her. I'm just and these like people the in this tour, check. So yeah, wait, and these wait, wait, people wait, are the reason wait. why these shows I, even happen. I, I hear so. what you're saying, but I don't see other rich people dividing 55 million dollars. That's like true. That. Like Elon mm-hmm. Risk is, su- no, I'm sorry, Elon Musk is super rich, but I didn't hear about him. Like giving fifty five million to what I assume is a couple hundred people. Well, he gave fifty four billion mm-hmm. to some rich guys oh, and bought uh, thousands Twitter of people. <laughs> thousands of people to every... put on her show. Might be not one, not one <laughs> show, but it, I, I, I believe it was the tour was the the way I heard it described. The people who worked on her mm. latest, you know, her tours have names like the Resurgence Tour or the fucking. Oh yeah, sources tour, confirm that caterers, truck drivers, riggers, dancers, and more all receive bonuses from what Zach was saying. That's 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 thousands. awesome. Because you know, awesome. every it's an international tour, right? So I'm sure she it's like fucking everywhere in the United States plus eight European stops. Can you imagine coordinating that? That has yeah. to be really hard to like right. coordinate with the different uh companies that issue out the paychecks. That's such to... a George Costanza job. All right, it really is five million. Go diversify it to the uh, people who worked on my tour. But I work for you. All of them died from the poison checks that you <laughs> sent them. <laughs> Zach said 250 people max. I'm not sure where that comes from, but... Huh. I don't know. There's gotta 55 be more million that. divided 250 ways is a lot. Yeah, it ain't that. Because we're talking it about... It comes out that like one of the people is her cousin and it was $54.8 million in or something. <laughs> What's yeah. her cut? Like, How much more profit can there be? I I guess she's. Oh, it I bet it's enormous. I, I mean, think she's Taylor Swift. I think she's, <laughs> is she the biggest. She's the biggest artist like alive right now, right? But like just, this tour alone, I don't, I don't know. Actually, I don't know anything about this business, but I, I wouldn't she guess that fun. she's making more than like two hundred and fifty million. So she know, gave I, away fifty five million. I thought I, I, thought I saw like some like chunk. graphic that like she was blowing out like big dates. names like like Jay Z and stuff in. In income, all right. We're talking about fifty-two Taylor Swift concerts, by the way. You know that, so mm. I, I, it's going to be enormous. It's going to be enormous. It's going. I don't know what's the gate on a UFC event when they sell like eight thousand tickets. It's it's, it's millions of dollars. And, and, yeah. and I would. And imagine Taylor Swift that. is much her, bigger than the UFC. Are her tickets like a hundred fucking two hundred dollars for all of them? I hear you. To go. I just. I. It is tough for me to translate gate into profit. Like there's so many people with their palm up along the way. That's yeah, true. she's here for him. <laughs> she's got fifty-five million dollars. Yeah, to but like, like that's pretty cool. How much does the arena get? Like more than half. Oh, I don't even yeah. know. Oh wow. Okay, so I have the list of the top fifteen richest music artists in the world. Ooh. Oh yeah, top three. Yeah. Easy. Okay, top. Let, let's. I'm actually curious to hear what everyone's thoughts would be. Yeah, is it money on. made this year? So or when, is it when was your list? Made? I, I'm, this one was made in. Hold on. Bad it uh july 13th 2023 so oh, okay so i'm not putting kanye and, in the and this three. is this is <laughs> aggregate <laughs> is this this is just this year or this is their career uh below you can check the net worth and other important details about the world's richest musicians in 2023 so this is their net worth in 2023 jay i, I want to i want to so lock in jay-z here. yeah all right or, all right yeah. so w- w- let's do let's do uh i'm gonna every, do jay-z one Jay Z, Beyonce, Taylor Swift, as your uh, in no order. Not. Uh, or... yeah, it's my top three. I don't really have. It. Okay, in no order. Got it. All right. All right. I'm definitely not taking Beyonce on my team. I'm taking Jay Z, taking Taylor Swift, mm-hmm. and uh, Dr. Dre. Fuck. No. He had that business with that he sold for like a billion to Apple. That's oh, true. We had to count all that crazy shit. That We're Charles Barkley. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, but that was years ago, though. 
So, <laughs> um, I'll say uh, I'll say Snoop Dogg. Snoop Dogg. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Uh, Interesting. You guys are a lot of you are going for either pop or hip hop. Yeah. Keith Urban. Mine. Okay. <laughs> Keith Urban. All right. We got Keith Urban. I don't know who's the big country. Oh, guy. Garth Brooks comes to mind. Oh, Garth that? Brooks. That's who I meant to say. Uh, okay. Uh, Jay Z, uh, Taylor Swift, and actually, no, I'm gonna I'm gonna call an audible here and say P Diddy. P Diddy. All right. So here's the deal. Uh, I'm gonna start from the from 15 up, and we're just gonna go really fast. P. Okay. P Diddy is okay. a ton of business event. All right. First up, number 15, Kanye West, 400 million dollars. Number mm. 14. Taylor Swift, $570 million. Ooh. Number 13, Julio Iglesias, uh, $600 million, Spanish singer. Uh, Bruce Springsteen, number 12, $650 million. Number 11, Dolly Parton, $650 million. 10, Bono, $800 million. 9, Dr. Dre, $850. Then we have Madonna at 8 with $850 as well. Uh, and then Herb Herb Alpert or Herb Alpert is at nine hundred million. Just I've never heard of him, but good on him. Uh, P Diddy is number six at nine hundred million. Jimmy Buffett at one billion. Paul McCartney at one point two billion. And then this is the one that's going to really throw you for a loop. Number three is Andrew Lloyd Webber at one point three billion dollars. Who's that? The and musical guy. The musical guy who my, who Maxwell Sheffield famously hated in The Nanny. And then uh, number two is Rihanna at one point four billion, and everyone got number one right. It's Jay Z. Jay Z. In my defense, billion. shout out to Beyonce. I meant Rihanna. I just don't know better. Ah. <laughs> so Rihanna, Rihanna has to be Rihanna. because of the Fenty business. I think. I think that's her business. Uh, Fenty makeup, which. I know is massive mm. because it's pro it's like one of the only makeup brands uh, that is made for people with different color skins. Like it's inherently made for people with like a, a large oh, okay. palette of different skin tones. Uh, so mm. I know that's why that like makeup line popped off. Cause like even my wife buys it and my wife doesn't even buy makeup that much. Yeah, so yeah. I, I, think yeah, I wonder why. how many of them yeah. are super rich off their music. Like I, better yet, how many of True. them are not super rich? Like like Dr. Dre, for yeah. example, eight hundred fifty billion. I think a lot of that might have been mm. producing investments. and investments. I wasn't sure if Fifty Cent would be on there. Didn't he have vitamin water money or something? Went, yeah, but he went bankrupt and hid a lot yeah. of his wealth a few years ago. And he was also just an investor in vitamin water. He didn't actually like. I think he was like an initial investor oh. in vitamin water for like mostly clout and stuff. And mm. to like get it into the hood and like get get you know people like yeah. drinking it because I remember back in the day. When I was growing up in the Bronx, like you, everywhere you went, you would see vitamin water, it, and and it would always be Fifty Cent, just like promoting yeah. it, just like on the front. So like everyone stopped drinking uh, Gatorade, Powerade, like any of those other drinks, and mm -hmm. they, and they were just chugging vitamin waters. I'm like, I don't think this is much better, guys. But yeah, I remember th never had a like, vitamin water. Do you, do you remember thinking it one. was like really good for you because you'd see the commercials and you'd be like, well, Fifty Cent is shredded. And he's yeah. and the name of it called it vitamin water, <laughs> right? <laughs> they could call it protein water or something. I'd be like, well, shit. I guess the primary ingredient is either protein or water. How predatory yeah. is that? Like reading the back of a vitamin water that should be illegal. <laughs> it's got like, yeah. more soda than two cokes. Like I'm like almost certain the first ingredient in, in 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 vitamin water is like not even water. It's it's <laughs> I think it's like sugar, sugar or some some dextrose <laughs> thing or whatever. Yeah, you know, it's, it's probably not, water. But yeah, yeah, it can't be water, bro. It Disgusting. can't be water. <laughs> I'm gonna yeah, it's some just, shit it's not even it's even worse than Gatorade and Gatorade sucks. I like Gatorade. Gatorade. Dude, I if you had body, of, body armor, like that. Wait, new how are you measuring it? By taste or by health? Oh, by taste. taste. Oh, I was so I drink oh, Gatorade okay. zero, so it's no fucking calories anyway. Or if it is, it's like the, the whole bottle's got 30 calories and it's like I yeah. burnt that getting dressed. So Okay, the first drink, is water, but I drink, they win this battle. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like water. I don't like just drinking straight up water. I, I almost never do it. Uh, but I drink huh. um, tons of everything else. Straight water. The, I've never had a vitamin water in my life. I don't know what it tastes like or what the flavors are like. I remember when that came out thinking that was ghetto water and, and that <laughs> the idea of putting vitamins in water was so... It was like you took the... You didn't even take a step forward before you took a step back, bro. Uh, you didn't you even take a step forward. Why don't you make me some... You got any spinach water? I don't want any. No, no thanks. No vitamin water for me. I want some rutabaga water. You got any turnip water? Oh, get man. Get out of here. Give me Our some interpretations some of ghetto water. water is very different as well, yeah. by the way, which I love. You know? Yeah. <laughs> but that, that's it, man. That's America.
You know? Yeah, I mean, when I looked at it, it was never um, like, all right, when I watch an Apple commercial, it has a certain look to it. The people using the products and the, you know, the environment they're in. And then I watch a vitamin water commercial. Oh, yeah, like, wow. it looks, it's, it's, it's the hood. Uh, I, 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 dude, I didn't know that. I've you never were, seen a vitamin water commercial. To me, it was just somebody trying to trick you into healthy water, like a healthy drink. Gatorade, but healthier is what yeah. vitamin water is. I think they're trying to trick a. I don't think they're trying to trick me, but I could tell they're trying to trick somebody into drinking water, and I don't want to be part of their bag. Uh, no, I've never had. <laughs> no, any, it was uh, it was literally trying to trick people into thinking that it was healthy. Vitamin water was healthy, of course. Like, yeah, of course. the same as full why sugar. You call Gatorade. it vitamin water. Yeah, that's why you call you it know? vitamin water because yeah. it's you know it, its uh, second ingredient marketing. is crystalline fructose. Okay, yeah. not even they, 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 they motherfuckers couldn't even say sugar. They just say no. crystalline <laughs> fructose, man. Yeah, as if it's like something you find in a in a in a, in a cave in the middle of like South Africa <laughs> or no, something probably, like that. It, it comes from like the worst pears that are left over at the worst supermarkets. <laughs> like oh, I'm glad you brought that and pulled right, out of that. Like I just uh, watched a documentary on Netflix called Poisoned. It's an hour and twenty fucking minutes about our food industry. And oh, it starts God. off with this montage of politicians saying, we have the safest food supply in the world. Like one after another. But the, the video will be like rat shit and food and like a oh, dead God. cat falling into the, the bin yeah. of rice or something. And it's all of, they begin. They have a few central characters. One of them is a lawyer who was the guy who, who stuck it to Jack in the Box back in the day when they killed those kids. You may not know it. Late 70s, early 80s. There was an incident, um, maybe Ohio and New Jersey. Can't remember exactly. Jack in the Box killed some kids, basically. Whoa. They undercooked their hamburgers, and the yeah. meat had E. coli 0157 in it. And so both of those contributed to a lot of kids dying, hundreds of kids being poisoned. And what you got to understand, this isn't just food poisoning. We've probably all had one kind of E. coli or another. Mm -hmm. there this was 1992, 1993, by the way. It's okay, called the great Jack in, Jack in the Box E. coli outbreak. Sorry. Yeah, it, it um, it's this E. coli 0157 stuff is just deadly uh, apparently it goes into your gut and it produces this stuff called shiga toxin which then gets in your bloodstream kills your red blood cells all those red, red blood cells make your kidneys failure and then there's a cascade reaction where it kills one organ after another and i'm not talking about over weeks and months one day you have diarrhea the next day you are in a coma and dying the third day you Jesus. are dead and it That's happened crazy. to tons of children and and they weren't they didn't know what it was at first so there's this delayed reaction and this lawyer really stuck it to jack in the box got each kid like millions and millions of dollars um some of them to this day are like they, some of these kids have to learn to walk again like it's it's weird neurological um nerve yeah. Yeah. damage that they receive from this stuff uh and and the deal was at that time e coli 0157 was just considered um something that might be on beef you know, it's not if you were to test the beef at the plant, and they're like, yeah, Oki Cola again. Well, you know, it, <laughs> pack it up because it was considered to be the customer's um, problem at that point. It's like cook your oh, meat, cook the E. coli yeah. out of it. And so what had happened was at the Jack and at those Jack in the Boxes in particular in the Northeast or wherever, they had a regulation that had changed recently that said you got to cook your burgers to 155 degrees. That's what we want. And they're like, nah, it makes them tough. They said that in a memo. Maybe an email. That hmm. makes them tough. So they've got them saying, hey, 155 will make our beef healthier and safer. And them, them going, makes the burgers tough. And then a pile of dead children. So Jack in the Box paid through the fucking nose. Oh and then this documentary God. goes on to explain why we have these, e these um, salmonella outbreaks now. And it's because all of the leafy greens on the fucking planet. I'm talking about if you're in Thailand or Japan tonight and you have a romaine salad, it's grown in Arizona. It's grown in Arizona. That's where it came from. They, they grow it in these uh, these huge, massive irrigation really? fields that are right next to the concentrated cattle lots. Oh, and nice. That's convenient. All oh. of that, and the so KFOs? all of that yeah. shit is, and water is flowing out of them down a trough into an irrigation um, ditch, and that's being spritzed on all of the vegetables in the that everyone eats. And so all you need is Extra one seasoning. cow. Yes. One cow in that feedlot <laughs> to get to, to shit, and it's 0157. And then that shit goes into the water and gets sprayed on one head of lettuce. Then that head of lettuce, you ever buy a spring mix? How many heads of lettuce is that spring mix incorporated yeah. into that bag? A lot. Are they even from the same field, from the same part of the same state, from the same grower? Who knows? 
you could be getting, you could be covering an acre worth of land that that's the potential for shit being sprayed on your food, mm-hmm. and you don't wash romaine lettuce. Don't who who likes a hot salad, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. So you're so you're rinsing it off, and that doesn't kill the bacteria. Uh, and the same thing is true with uh, sprouts, um, but romaine lettuce and baby spinach seem to be the number one danger uh, things. There was a 17 year old girl who got crippled in the middle of the documentary, and it was uh, I think it was lettuce from Panera Bread or something or, t- oh or something like that. And it's Damn. always they're always a little queasy. They're always a little weird about saying shit. I love one of the scientists just said shit. He was like, you got these animals shitting and that shit gets sprayed on our food. And then we eat the shit. And I was like, thank you for explaining it. Cause no one, that's how you to have to it. say it. No, because someone, someone's yeah. going to be like, and you can yeah. see the fecal matter actually goes inside of the liquid <laughs> and then it spreads in a blossoming matter. It's like, no, just yeah. tell me, is there shit in there? I need to know right it now <laughs> that's it like the kind of guy me. who would like be brought up in front of like geriatric <laughs> retard uh politicians on one of those things and they'd be like he'd be like there's shit all over the food and they'd be like whoa english english <laughs> like <laughs> leave your technology and your diplomas at the door i'm 102 like, they had fucking they there was a peanut plant here in georgia that was so filthy um, for one thing, there were holes in the roof and the bird shit was just, when it would rain, would just rain down into the food. And so mm-hmm. all Sick. sorts of like viruses from birds potentially that can cross oh. over and all sorts of yeah. illnesses, right? Yeah. Rat shit everywhere, dead rats everywhere. And they have memos there too, where he's like, get the product and get it shipped. And they're like, well, we'll have to clean the dirt and shit off of it first. And he's like, clean it and ship it. And it's like all right there in black and white. And he was this old multimillionaire that re- had been doing Georgia peanuts for decades. The guy only gave him three months. And he poisoned so much. So the thing is, everything has pe- a little bit of peanut in it. So they couldn't, all the Keebler cookies in the country had to be thrown out, right? Really? And then like Jeez. all the peanut butter and all the peanut snacks that it was so many products. Call it 300 different products. If it's one product, it's like, all right, get, get rid of all the fruit yeah. bars. Mm-hmm. But it was hundreds of products that had his poisoned peanuts in them that had to be thrown out. Uh, it, I'm assuming it he's not in business anymore. <laughs> uh, I bet, he, is I bet that, he's dead Is that where now. we get all of our peanuts in the U.S. from Georgia? Georgia or has the to South? be... Georgia has to be numero uno. We do, we do a ton here. Uh, it, there could be mm. a neighboring state that, that does it cheaper. Um, but it has to be Georgia, I would think. That's kind of what we're known for. But it opened my eyes. I, I honestly, I'm never going to have a romaine lettuce salad. I'm never going to, not a salad again. I'll never eat a salad again. It was so scary that I'm not going to risk eating salad over the potential. What about like damages. a real good Caesar salad? Like no, pre steak. You're not going to. I'm never going to have a salad again because it doesn't matter how fancy your salad is unless they are, unless they're literally growing those greens themselves locally, then it, they could have sprayed it with some fucking shit and you can't wash it off well enough to ensure that yeah. you won't die do you have, do you have a and, farmer's market near you because i know it's a meme but mm-hmm. if you have one near you people go there and get all your vegetables legit. there it's ten thousand times better it's not and even like, close a, a tomato uh, from a grocery you store feel a isn't even a tomato. <laughs> you feel you a little feel better, better buying yeah. buying from there too because you at least know that like because you can talk to the farmer too and like kind of get an idea of like what we're, mm-hmm. what they're about because we used to have this uh when i lived in san francisco when i was working at twitch uh like I, we lived like out out in a place called um uh san leandro and uh and they used to have this farmer farmer's market every sunday and we used to love to go there specifically because they made like this watermelon water that was god tier mm-hmm. like just fresh grinded watermelons you're seeing them make it like right then and there it's just yeah, utter perfection uh like and then the, and then like uh fresh uh tamales and and different like salsas and shit like that like oh my god it was so incredible but my favorite part was going to the peanut farmers that were there because they would have those uh like moist boiled? peanuts i guess like, boiled. I don't they're know. boiled boiled that the boiled peanuts and i never had one before and it was so good and we would just go back there all the time i think were I just they kind of do they have different flavors like cajun maybe or, or uh, some maybe? yeah some of them did we we usually stuck with the the regular one because my wife liked to use it in a few dishes oh, and yeah. stuff um but yeah, yeah yeah they were they were very delicious and then obviously you just go and you'd speak to some of the farmers that so like because we used to like getting the whole head of lettuce you know from like from the farmer because again like we said you know, yes, those packages are nice and they are helpful and they are convenient, mm-hmm. but you don't know where the hell all that shit's coming from. 
you know, yeah. like, yeah, it's, just because it's green, you know, doesn't mean it was taken care of properly. And they, um, I, that's that's the thing that sucks, man. The salmonella with chicken thing. I'd always heard that. So they, they get the guy who owns fucking Purdue. He's like the chicken man. Half the country in the in the country. He's in charge of. Yep. He was and, in the documentary. Yeah. I think they mentioned him a few times in that uh, chicken documentary, the yeah. chicken sandwich one. And the and other half is the Tyson guy. Yeah. And they were like, uh, we took five chickens from the grocery store and tested them. And one of them had salmonella and it was a Purdue chicken. And he's like, OK, well, I mean, that's a small sample size, though. You know, five, five, five packages and one of them was ours. I would like to see a larger sample size. And they're like, well, what, what would you suggest? 150 birds in a short period of time. They immediately go buy 150 fucking birds <laughs> and send them to the lab. 35% or something of Purdue chicken has some oh, on it when God. you buy it out of the package. And that's just not that's not just their chicken. Just cons- when you buy chicken, just know there is a one in three chance that there is a poison on that chicken that could kill you. So cook your chicken. 165 degrees and you'll live. Mm-hmm. No, I like it medium rare. Me too. I like yeah. a little pink in the middle. Taylor likes yeah. his, but yeah, it's just a little bit of blood. Yeah, yeah. there's like nothing like chicken nigiri. Little, little, little chicken nigiri, right? Little, 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 little <laughs> rice, little <laughs> I, I like a little mm. little. I made myself chicken tartare the other day. Chicken Absolutely tartar. delicious. Chicken <laughs> tartar. It has to be chilled. It has to be chilled just right. Uh, chilled. Oh, yeah. Only if it's chilled. And and honestly, the sides yeah. may have to be tasteful. Otherwise, yeah, if, if I send four it back. hours later, you're not grievously ill. You didn't make it right. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> you know, it's if you're not shitting loss. your pants. That's not good food. That's all yeah. I'm saying. <laughs> Dude, you want to lose weight? A little chicken tartare. That'll get you, <laughs> that'll get you right where you need to be. That's a fitness plan right there. <laughs> I guarantee it. Like, 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 I'm going to be so much. I'm going to be more careful when I cook because I've gotten food poisoning a lot. Usually you from have restaurants. gotten it a, a, a baffling amount of times. Like, I eat risky foods and I eat risky times of day. Um, mm. I have. Or- this is good for you I've- to watch because you are definitely more susceptible to food poisoning than other people. I bet you've over doubled up me and Woody combined in the past I, few years. I've eaten red lobster raw oysters before. Like why would you do red, that? Re, red lobster raw we oysters. Were, yeah, they yeah. have they have raw oysters at the red lobster. And I remember I was on a date once and I was like, really? Well, give us a dozen. And they got there and she's like, I don't eat those. And I had to eat a dozen oysters as an appetizer. <laughs> and by the eighth oyster it was just for show. <laughs> yeah. like, you were committed. It was just for show at this point. It was. Mm, I, was I like, love oh, oysters. Are you sure you don't want at least one? One oyster. <laughs> just trying to get to take one off that plate. So I have, they're getting warm now. Um, oh. But I, it's usually been like burger joints that got me sick. I'll never eat at a Sonic again because I got poisoned at a Sonic and went back two days later to the same place and got poisoned again. That well, that's that point. That's you. just your fault. That's your fault. Yeah. You know, you, you only have yourself to blame. Only once. You understand Shame on me. Fool me twice. That burger will fool me again. <laughs> was delicious. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I mean, they, wait. How was it delicious if it got you sick? But look, it, that, it was, that completely different things. That he loves the taste delicious. of poop. It was a delicious <laughs> burger full of poison or shit or something. But I remember they had a one of those seasonal jalapeno burgers, which I always am super attracted. I love it when they they're like Wendy's had one back in the day that was jalapenos and nacho cheese, and that was the burger, Ugh. and it was so good. Taylor, nacho oh, cheese on so the burger, good. I'd so eat it trashy. on my lunch break, and I'd be <laughs> fucking in the car eating that motherfucker. It was so good. Is it, it with fried jalapenos? I remember them being pickled and being it being oh, okay. very spicy. I was going to make but fun the, of you if they're mm. fried because that's the worst. The poop is the secret ingredient, Taylor. You're missing out on how good this thing tastes. <laughs> we were well, that's Taylor was talking about that. his chicken tartar <laughs> weight loss tactic. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's my new business for watching. Loss. You eat your you food eat poisoning weight loss strategy is way better than my flu based one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Woody's uh, I, just licking fucking taxi handles. <laughs> 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 No, you mean to tell me I've been source. licking doorknobs this whole time and all I had to do was have chicken tartare? <laughs> Fuck out of here. Just need chicken tartare. And the secret is all that chicken at the store, once you lick it, they don't make you buy it and they can't sell it. Mm. That's you, just have to have, you just have to have a lot of grocery stores around you because <laughs> they're going to kick you out. I have a theory unrelated to this. I think Conor McGregor will never fight again. Uh, I think Conor McGregor is in love with his new steroid body. 
Yeah. And he is on so much HG. Is he on steroids? Oh, very oh. much so. I haven't I haven't looked. I haven't seen Dude, him. I don't even know what he looks face, like. He's almost unrecognizable. He's on I human don't... growth hormone. And uh, he might be on something very exotic that we're not even too keyed into. But the, the, the whole story is he broke his leg in a very serious kind of way. Yeah. Work. Yeah. I remember and, that part. And so he's been on a cocktail of drugs, I'm sure, to heal that right. Because that's a real difficult thing to not just come back from, but come back from and that then be a mixed martial artist. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's not what we're looking. For. Look uh, at this guy's face. Yeah. Like, that's not even Conor McGregor. Like he's added some muscle. You can see it, like in the shoulders and the traps mm-hmm. and stuff. He's just a little. He's a bigger man on the right. Yeah. But the yeah. way that his face puffed out is indicative of like excessive T and HGH and like his hands are, apparently have grown. He's a Seen bigger that? man. Seen them say his hands look bigger. Um, I, I the photos I've seen really seemed you know you can pick one photo and and say any and make anything look like you want it to look. But his tattoo, yeah, everything I small. see, he looks like he's he looks like he's put on bone mass. His, That's what I see. His um, interview with Ariel Hirwani, like you, you get to see his face in a long way, and it's not like a like you said, a still shot can be misleading. You see a guy in a funky you know blow it whatever but no no this is a longer video and one he really wasn't cognitively there anymore he's not the guy on the mic that he used to be i think and uh two he just doesn't look like he used to it's a Mm -hmm. they look like they look like brothers as far as whether he'll fight or not uh they do look like brothers that's a good point they could you could if you told someone those were brothers they believe it those are the Um, three toughest guys in ireland (laughs) (laughs) no one can take all three of those men i tell you that right now yeah that much is true um not even john jones i think that you're absolutely right about him being because he he's always been in love with himself but man he really seems to like how big he looks and how 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 thick he looks and like he's just flexing all the time on the well look at Dwayne Johnson look at Dwayne Johnson's like a really good example of this right where it's like he's made a he's made a an empire around his physique Mm -hmm. you know and but not only that it's it's launched so many different avenues for him where it's like yeah Conor McGregor could go out there could he still fight I don't I don't doubt that for a minute you know he's Conor McGregor he's still tough as nails dude but like, genuinely speaking, what? Why? Why does he have to? Like, he doesn't he's have Connor to. fucking it's, McGregor. You know, like he yeah. could do anything at this point, the and anyone would wrong. watch. The question yeah. is like, why does he have to? He doesn't have to. Oh, he of course, no one has to. Yeah. He has, his, yeah. he has yeah. enough money; he can do anything he wants. Uh, the question is like, what does he want to do? And I think he's more in love with being jacked than he is with being a top fighter. So There's more, I think more, uh, more prolonged, um, longer, shelf longer shelf life. Longer. I think you're life. real right. close. I think what he's he he's in love with being in the public eye, and right now he's just getting so much attention and and like clicks and stuff for just being him and looking that way. I don't know how long that goes on. Mm. It seems like he needs to get in there and beat somebody up to to keep the fires burning, uh, or, or he needs to do something. You know, like get, maybe a movie or something like that. Like he's that Roadhouse. would get him into the public eye. You know, he's eye. in the new Roadhouse. He's, I want to hear him coming sing. Out soon. He's the oh, guy. I didn't in know that. He's the guy in Roadhouse. It's a big that movie. It's going to be a flaw, movie. and it won't it's be a big Jake Gyllenhaal movie. It's a it's a it's it's a real movie. I am very interested in this. I didn't know that. I just learned it now from you. Yeah. And he can't act. He can't speak very well anymore. I well, this movie was filmed probably a year and a half, two years ago. Uh, I, and you mm-hmm. know, he had plenty of takes. And when you say he doesn't speak well anymore, when we've seen him do media. He has spoken kind of poorly. I watched him do some of the Ultimate Fighter. He's fine. He's in a suit okay. there, being articulate, talking about slipping punches and being fucking stupid, like he, he also did. just he's could have been stoned out of his mind too. I don't think he does. I think those, his team is like one those in kind of drugs. In the first ten fights, like, yeah, and no one wants to be on his team. They all like. So what happens in the Ultimate Fighter is if when you lose, you get knocked out, right? Sent off the island, if you will. So. Mm-hmm. The teams get very lopsided and they start taking winners and putting them on the losers team. And everyone just no one wants to be on Conor McGregor's team. There's one guy, actually, Conor's teammate. But everyone else is like fighting. We have teammates fighting people on the same team just so they can avoid being on Conor's team. Damn. So for him to fight, for him to fight, he has to get back into the USADA pool, the drug testing pool. And then it requires six months of testing. So if he were to say today, I'm in, take my blood. 
then it would the earliest he can legally fight is six months from today. But that day moves a day further every day that we and he hasn't done that. He hasn't initiated that process. True. He's doing nothing but talking about fights. It was Michael. The whole point of the Ultimate Fighter reality show was setting him up to fight a man named Michael Chandler, who was the opposite team's coach who showed up. And And they usually do that at the end of every uh, fighter. Connor's bored of that girl. He wants a new one. He's he's onto a new toy. Now he's calling out the winner of the most recent fight, Justin Gaethje, because he's got a lot of pop. He fucking knocked Justin Poirier out with a, a leg a leg kick to the head. There's no other kind of kick. A kick to the head, and then did a fucking backflip off the thing. And he's the new bad motherfucker. And Connor's like calling him out. And and, and so like Michael Chandler's over there crying because he hasn't fought in a year or something, waiting on Connor. Could have had a fight. Out. Could have been working, yeah. dude. It, it's really obvious. Him. Like as someone who doesn't follow UFC, just as a viewer, like it's beyond obvious. This guy's never fighting again. Like he, he's on steroids. He's lifting weights. He's, he's moved on to a different era of life. He makes more money and has made more through his whiskey than he ever made through UFC. He's richer than any any fighter in the UFC yeah. has made like money through fighting. Like he's he's done. He's getting jacked. He's getting juiced up. He's on his fucking liquor money. Like that dude is never getting back in a ring. He'll talk about it when he wants a little attention. And then yeah. people will give it to him for the next couple of years. And then someone else will come along and he won't get it anymore. And then he'll probably the come back in his 40s and then do a fight then, get fucked up. And then uh, that's it. That's always a possibility. <laughs> they, you know, when, when, these, when these guys do fade... They they oh, missed the I know who's like, gonna fight. Here's here's what here's what I think happens, Woody. Ooh. Um, if Nate Diaz wins against Jake Paul this weekend, I think, then Conor That's McGregor a real gonna, sentence. Then six months afterwards, <laughs> Conor McGregor is gonna fight Nate Diaz. Uh he'll fight Nate in like New York or something. I don't know if there even is a card in New York, but you you could you could sell out Madison Square Garden with Conor McGregor, Nate Diaz three anytime mm. you want. Is there and tag like, team like, boxing in real life or is that like a yeah. cartoon? Wait, yeah, no, sure. <laughs> he's really fucking not. with you. I'm though. sure there is. That, like, like I someone had to experiment with the why, concept. Why would it, it just have been made up for TV shows? Like, I, I, I okay. just realized I have that. seen Bing. like five v five MMA fighting in Poland mm-hmm. or something like that. But I guess one, I don't think that's legal in America. I don't think there's any tag team fighting in this country, uh, and it's like barely a thing. Yeah, oh. it's mm, it's small okay. time for sure. Just like they have two v one. I've seen two v one. Uh, where they have two little guys on one big one. The big one was wearing hmm. a suit. Yeah. It's Wait, a, was it's his a, name? Do you remember his name? Like Fairplay? I would if you said it. I uh, no, I don't. That that doesn't sound like it. Johnny Fairplay. I just remember watching it... a video of a, a big guy in a suit fighting two backyard fighting men. like two small men. They like men. set up they a little were in an cave? octagon. They were was indoors in an in, octagon. Oh, indoors. Okay, professional lights different. and shit, cameras. Referees. There's a YouTube channel where they do backyard MMA and. Mm-hmm. Uh, at first, I thought they were going to be total chumps. Most of these guys are trained, maybe all of them. And I, I yeah, I um, visualize myself probably overestimate how I would do in these fights, and they would all beat me, except for maybe the smallest. Oh, is, have, have is you guys that seen the one that, where they have to wear masks? There? Uh, Zach, there. Zach, please find the 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 placard like promo picture for the two nine-year-olds that are fighting in West Virginia. <laughs> I said that to you. I said that to yes, you. Yes, yes. Kyle sent it to me. That is hilarious. I stand by my assumption that Maynard looks like a lean little devil and he's going to fuck that other kid up. It is. <laughs> it's hilarious. It's just two West Virginians, I guess, getting together to, or I guess they're, they're families. Eight. Maybe this they're is like, like a, eight. Yeah, it ain't them. They're, they're literally like nine years old. Yeah, that. <laughs> no, no, oh, dude, boon, team, Cody, team, bro, team come on out to the Boone County Brawl, y'all. Dude, oh, Landon shit. Van Dyke is in for a world of hurt when he shows up in the ring against Mason the Viper Maynard. Look at that kid. I agree. That's I three agree. foot. Wait, eight wait, wait. Is is Mason the Viper Maynard his name, Taylor? Or did you add that? Because if you did, you it are promotional. Right there, the Viper. Right there. He's the Viper. Where? Mason, the, the oh Viper shit! Maynard. It's the Viper versus the Pitbull. Versus oh, the it's Pitbull. Oh two my bad word. Pets. Can, can I just say that <laughs> it's Randy Orton versus right. uh, Mr. Worldwide? Yeah, that kid yeah. on the right has the worst haircut. I can even like, like, like look how bad I concur. It, is. it looks like he did it himself. Like, Dude, did the parents not think the about official, like fucking symmetry? You know, like that's the on. official haircut of West Virginia. I don't see why you're. <laughs> why does Landon have a like widow's peak receding hairline? At that's a fighter's haircut. Old. He's just that's a thirty-seven-year-old midget, Woody. 
All right. <laughs> <laughs> the king I might of go Boone County. Well, the thing we're not taking into account is Landon has a steel jaw. And so mm. it's going to take the, the Viper's more of a speed player. It's going to take him a lot of ratata to, to bring him down. I might be crazy, but Landon looks bigger and heavier. I think they're both so small and weak. The, <laughs> the, the, company, the company is called Chill Boxing. So I don't think that there's going to be yeah, much you by Oshkosh really? Bigosh. Okay, they wear headgear. <laughs> and Michael. Yeah. Get yourself some Let's dinosaur fingerless fucking punching gloves. That's what you do. <laughs> That's what they're I gonna sell to see that fight. I don't know why they didn't take advantage of the other like wonderful economic opportunities in West Virginia. Yeah, well, dude, right after fighting. that, too good right for the that, mines, the, are you? They have their, <laughs> their after that they're gonna have their dogs fight. <laughs> the ring. Then we just find out this family, dog. this family really just hates each other, both families, and they really just want to oh, make yeah. money off of it. It's like one of those cross off of their hatred. Yeah. The Maynards and the fucking Smiths, or whatever. The fuck. <laughs> and yes, the yeah. Hatfields and McCoys. Yeah, it was either that or the mines for those for those young West Virginians. I've I've said it before, but just to recap, anyone who doesn't know, West Virginia is the shittiest place I've ever been. And I, I've never I been, mean, it, and I've been. I thought it prison. was like super pretty there. Um, like, uh, it is like wooded it and stuff. Okay. Yeah, I yeah, mean, no, I could right see more than fifty yards in front of us. It was just trees and poverty. You can't see the trees for the poverty there. <laughs> <laughs> God, God, God damn poor people ruining my trees. <laughs> yeah, you, know, you hear someone say you can't see the forest for the trees. You can't yeah. see the trees for the poverty in West Virginia. Any beauty that that state might have is completely lost mm. upon you because of the 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 staggering hideousness of the populace. The, the, the disgusting, uneducated, swine-like residents of West Virginia, those mountain hillbillies. Okay. How do you really just, feel, Kyle? Go on. I'm, no. the towns of I'm West team, Virginia. I didn't use team any West slurs. They're no, like, I, I didn't say you use any <laughs> slurs. <laughs> yeah, they're they're real trash. Um, <laughs> they're real trash. <laughs> oh, that's They <laughs> oh, don't have the internet. That, oh, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. I've never been there, there, so I can never confirm nor deny. You know, I'm, yeah, I'm clueless on uh, this situation. Been to too busy. I've never yeah, been to too, yeah. Taylor's too busy hating dreams to go, guys. Come on, you know, hating it's, only it's, other people's dreams. If only others. Sorry, yeah. sorry. Yeah. West Virginia sorry, seems nice, known. but if you have a dream about it, don't tell me. Yeah, that's, that's how <laughs> For you. I feel about West Virginia. You, I bet you go nice to hell. There, there, there's some good, good old country folk in. What accent do they have there? They got that crazy Appalachian one, right? Yes, Appalachian yeah. accent. I couldn't help you with it. It's unbelievably uh, difficult. Super to, poor. To like out. in some counties, more than half of the people are on welfare. Mm. It's uh, or disability, we, uh, which is the modern warfare, yeah. welfare. We went to Walmart. I mean, all their, yeah. they're like mining towns, and that's not a thing anymore. Yep. Yep. That's like Detroit. Still a yeah. Thing, yeah. You know, Detroit's yeah, lost something like. Is it fifty five percent of their population of Detroit left since the fifties? Oh, I something believe like it. That. Yeah, St. Yeah. Louis is on that track too. All More the than shitty, dangerous cities are. Yeah. No one lives know. there. St. Louis. There were no nice pretty today. people. Like, like, <laughs> like there were no pretty people in West Virginia, and that's not just me. I joke about Boston and all the ugly bitches there, and I'll be real. But those Boston women are a an ugly group of of women, and and their accent is disgusting. <laughs> oh my god, dude, but, you don't love the accent, the most grating accent. In hot, <laughs> I love, I love, yeah, hot, no, the, hot, the accent hot. kills me. <laughs> I want to suck your cock. <laughs> like harder. and then you make fun of it and they're like i don't sound like that you're like you 100 do sound like that now eat my pussy I, dude and it's like yeah I, I i don't know about <laughs> all that but west virginia what that that's mostly a joke because there were there were pretty women in boston and as i always say they're called tourists and mm. but in west virginia there were some just everyone there like we went to walmart and then we went to a restaurant after and so that's a sampling size of maybe 100 women and it was like guys guys have you seen anyone here that you would fuck or anyone here that's that's like five anyone like not an in average this car. human like everyone you would look at had something wrong with them it was like that guy yeah like, that she's <laughs> that, got a lazy eye look at that gap in that guy's teeth like everyone had something major wrong with them like a mr potato head without all the pieces like a big thing was missing oh, from my everybody. God. yeah but heart of gold <laughs> <laughs> kyle's overlooking all the skinny heroin addicts like there's some chicks with good bodies it's meth. Yeah, it's meth up it, there. Right? I promise the you. Meth. But but, okay. it, but it's all the same. I hooked up with a meth addict one night in this in this motel in, in fucking <laughs> sure, Raven sure. County. Oh my god, she had so many self harm scars. Oh, it was so gross. She was on top of me and she sounded like an animal. And I'm that's not me bragging. Like it was terrifying me. 
I wasn't doing anything. Like were she you, was doing all the get did you get tested afterward like quickly? Um I mean the fact you sure. delayed a response. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Staggering. Yeah, I mean, I, it's what staggering. I, I tested, like, it turned out great, Taylor. He's positive for everything. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, like, the check test or, I don't know. Yeah, Positively really. positive. Positive <laughs> results. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, just just awful. Just awful group of people there too. Raven County, Georgia. A lot of methamphetamine there as well. It's a lot of meth here too. It does keep people's bodies tight. Yeah. But their teeth yeah, I feel totally like you guys fall are apart. overlooking the skinny women on meth. <laughs> I mean yeah, it's 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 oh, really a great speaking of skinny women there. and and mm. fat stupid women that shouldn't go anywhere. Did you see that one um lady maybe from Niger, but basically her uncle or somebody's running the country and he sent her to represent them in the international yes. games. Oh yeah, China. I was going to yes. I was going to mention that because you guys were talking about no, no, athletes it's Somalia. not being Somalia. Like yeah, or like how an athlete would go, and I was like, "Oh yeah, that happened. That was yeah. bad." Somalia. That was yeah. bad, and and that is, I I felt bad for the girl. Where like apparently the head of Somalia. First of all, I didn't know Somalia had a, a government. I thought they were like a total failed state. Warlords but, and mm. such. Yeah, warlords. Yeah. So the, the warlord of Somalia sent his niece to compete in this, like literally his niece, which is unbelievably mean to that niece to be like yeah. Yeah, is go she's there and run next to these athletes she's not no no wait, she wait, wait. Not. i saw her run and she looked slow so let's all agree on that I'm, I'm not contesting it the only thing is like you could grab someone that you know who's good at basketball put them in the world games and they would look bad at basketball right sure was she the fastest in her school no like, she was- would lose a race against the four of us we would win that it, next to her she, name. We, it she, said, she, I, I, don't, I, don't, I, I don't know. I don't yeah. know. I'm not. I'm, I'm slow as shit, too. But I when you watch her take off, like you can see in muscle memory how people she's run. not. She, she's she, not athletic. Yeah, she, she stands, <laughs> like she and that's not even to be rude immediately. Yeah, she's not. An athlete. She's the like, one she wearing yeah. shorts in, in the back movie. and the full long sleeve shirt with the yeah. big oversized Dunder Mifflin 4K race for the cure fucking shirt over that yeah like she's she's from a goddamn country where she's not like i feel bad for all we're we're in a we're in a boston bruins 2019 stanley cup champion can i just say i think this photo has been edited because a the the white line goes over her ankle and b she was never this close to the rest of the field (laughs) (laughs) yeah honestly Honestly, from the start line on the dragon drop her ass up a bit they dragged and dropped that bitch <laughs> and they, they messed up the edited, edited by that NBC. Does That's hilarious. They they brought her up to make it seem they brought her so up dude. because the shot doesn't I'm make looking sense at otherwise. Every other leg in the picture, and none of them have a white line across the ankle like that. It's edited by NBC mm-hmm. Jack because Jack she was so far back that they had to bring they they couldn't fit her in the picture, otherwise, it, the picture wouldn't have made sense because they would have we been all ants. fake news NBC. Yeah. They're in the Just pocket of big fat chick trying to look more competitive than they really are. But the I thing, the, yeah, I mean, look, like you, you again, untrained, Come clearly, on, you know, jorts? trained, clearly, uh, uh un- understated. Such an incompetent government. How look at that they belly. Select an yeah. untrained girl. To I, just, I feel bad for her. Well. I feel bad for the runners. I, I just like I, the whole situation was just like the hell's Gold wrong boy, with you man i'm completely on the other team i'm inspired <laughs> i really want to do a pk a foot right. race the three of us no training allowed that violates the rules <laughs> oh well, i would How love to see would that be? you want to do I would 100 meters? i'll be honest you want to i would do lose 40? i'm very slow honestly i'm really slow too and i don't think taylor's built for speed i'm not and i, <laughs> I can't imagine a better way for all three of us to be ruthlessly bullied then, yeah. then to <laughs> upload a video of the three of us in a foot race? Are you kidding me? If you guys you know don't how, do this, I would you know consider it a disappointment. Flat footed and stop bad. talking I'm about look it. Look, stop, stop, stop talking about it. Don't make it. Don't will it. Who's the got the largest space in the back? I want to do it. I want to do it. Stop I'm talking it. about it. No, it's not a thing. Don't don't. Do I'll throw it. down a hundred dollars for the winner. Fastest. Woody's the speed boy. He wins. He's the fastest by so far. But part of me is like, what if I wear flip flops? Can I beat Taylor in flip flops? I don't even know. I might wear flip flops too. No, <laughs> oh, I think okay. I you think could I put could. me in fucking Usain Bolt's shoes and give and put you in par, and you would beat me. I'm so goddamn slow. I have always been slow. When they lined us up and made us run in elementary school, I I I, I acted like a race car and blocked other people intentionally and let they were all behind <laughs> me stuck because I was like zoning <laughs> them out. And then they were like, "Why did you do that?" And I was like, "You told me to win." 
You told me <laughs> you were never, never going run to like this. this. How was <laughs> I going to beat them here without some physical help? I think Wait, Kyle I might be. Taylor, who's your money on? Who do you think is the fastest? Mm, uh, I, I mean, think Kyle, Kyle said he does cardio, so I'm going to give it a I think Kyle. I think Kyle's I think it's Kyle fastest. too. Yeah, yeah. I think Kyle's sandbagging us. He is. I and I think the only running. way that this gets confirmed is if you guys get together I and will, film this video. I refuse to run. <laughs> <laughs> I what if what if it's to running run. to a big ass gun that you get to shoot? And yes. then like 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 a like a biathlon oh, or some the, shit. The, oh, the video oh. ends with prison? How wonderful. I'm a <laughs> fan. Lots that. of time to run. <laughs> I'll run the cell gun block. question for Kyle. Uh, <laughs> You might not know this is not an everyday question, but here I had this thought today. You know how when you shoot a bullet out of a rifle barrel, you can look at that bullet like ballistically and see if it was shot at the same barrel. It leaves a little fingerprint the way that the twist works. Yeah. Hmm. OK, then I had this idea like, oh, but when you shoot through a barrel, that barrel gets where? So hypothetically, I murder someone. Right. And then I fire, like, make it an AK-47, something durable. I fire 2,000 rounds out that barrel. Can I? Do I now have a rifle that almost proves I didn't kill the guy because it's a different fingerprint? No. No. Did, um, you'd be better okay. off just destroying the rifle. Um, that, that's what you want to do. You want to destroy the rifle. Because not only um, does the bullet leave that telltale thing that I don't think you could eliminate with a couple thousand rounds. And plus... Now we got to go get a case of ammo. Now we're making a lot of noise. People come around. Why are you shooting so much? Don't worry about it. This is the whole thing, right? Plus, when you stamp mm -hmm. that primer, when you fire the bullet, um, that's a unique um, indicator as well. The, the, the way that primer strikes the uh, or the firing pin strikes the primer, those are one and a those all match too. Like the, this one, you can tell that that shell came out of this gun. So. And 1,500 rounds later, 2,500 rounds later, you think that that wouldn't change? I always hear ARs talked about 10,000 rounds of barrel life, and that's before you lose accuracy. That's not even talking about like smoothing the bore out and making it so that it doesn't have rifling in it at all anymore. And I think what you'd see is like maybe less defined marks, but the same marks, the same way if a lighter person wore the same pair of shoes. You know, it's mm. still the same indicator. It's just not imprinted as deeply, maybe. That's, mm. I don't know anything about ballistics at like a real deal level, though. I just know what bullets look like. Or maybe there's a better way to foul the barrel, like than shooting bullets, right? They hit it. I with saw a, a movie once where they had, it was a pistol, and he immediately took a, a rat tail file, which is a cylindrical file, and ran it down the barrel and rasped out the barrel real quick. And that, would probably do the trick if you were, you know, effective enough at it. Of course, you could just melt the son of a bitch if you got an oxyacetylene. That would yeah. be the way to go. Hmm. Okay. Anyway, I had that question. Today I learned. Jot that I down. Kyle I know nothing about guns, so hey, look at that. You know, but you know a bit about murder? Hmm? Uh, you know, not 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 offhand. You know, not a thing. <laughs> Classic murder response. <laughs> classic. <Yep. laughs> oh. oh, classic yeah, yeah. murder response. Me murder never never. Oh my god! Never in a million years. Someone who like takes great offense at a joke about them killing someone like me. Never. How would I even do get away with that? Mm. <laughs> what are you even? <laughs> <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> that was never proven. Yeah. What are you talking about? It would smell so bad after like one week, dude. It wouldn't even. <laughs> well, all right. So those are the weirdest to me, and you can almost understand how it gets that way. Um, but the people who kill someone. And then they're like, hey, what do I do now? Now there's a body in my house. Mm -hmm. Throw some newspaper on it, Big Daddy style. And, and that, like, like people who do that and the people, so many serial killers you hear about the smell. It, it, yeah. it ends up being the smell from the rotting corpses in their house, under their house, around their house. Yep. Oh, my God. They get, they get caught because of like procrastination not even carelessness it's like i'll get yeah. rid of that rotting head tomorrow and then they You'd just don't for three weeks and you get <laughs> nose that. blind to stuff you know oh. you get nose blind to it they yeah, don't they don't notice the nose blind to a rocks, corpse. all the nonsense yeah a lot of fucking corpses and it's not his first rodeo you don't yeah get i mean because after a while you're like one. you're used to that a scent, lot of right? times their mom 100%. has been upstairs in the bed for like a decade and so they are they're used to it so when they start bringing the ladies home and taking them apart 
trying yeah. to fix mom piece by piece. They don't notice the smell. Is is there a scent called cadaverine? <laughs> like that's like what it's called. Cadaverine. That's a, that's a exactly. new perfume that Calvin Klein is releasing. Cadaverine. Cadaverine. Smell like shit. <laughs> smell terrible. Hmm. It's called time. corpse. The the worst selling scented can. (laughs) No, they can sell them on anything. That what what's her face sells the pussy one? Um, Gwyneth Paltrow. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. She sells a vagina candle. Before we jump to another (laughs) unbelievably rational topic, we're gonna hear from a couple of wonderful (laughs) sponsors. This episode of PKA is brought to you by ferrodistro.com. Ferro Distro linked mm-hmm. below. Elevate your experience with Ferro Distro's collection of high potency edibles, a journey meant for the courageous or those with high tolerances. <clears throat> Delight in our exceptionally potent sour belts, available in 3,000 milligrams or 5,000 milligram packages for the truly bold cannabis enthusiast. Each belt is genuinely infused with either 300 milligrams or 500 milligrams of Delta-8, depending on your preference. These edibles are extremely potent and should be consumed responsibly, a.k.a. these are not a joke. Please don't be a dumbass. A small piece is recommended to start. 100% serious, everyone. These irresistible edibles combine sour and sweet flavors, creating an exhilarating and unforgettable sensory experience. Crafted with premium Delta 8 oil, each Sour Belt provides a a consistent dosage, promising to elevate your edible experience to unprecedented heights. We recommend these exclusively for seasoned cannabis customers. Also, don't miss out on our Dab X Go, a cutting-edge electronic dab rib that's stirring up a storm, being touted as the formidable Puffco Killer. It is better than Puffco. I tried my friends. This revolutionary product comes with a magnetic base plate for securing nail placement, an anti-stick design to ensure a a mess-free dabbing experience, and a patented design for the cleanest dabbing experience around. Packaged with a durable, spill-proof travel case, the DabX Go promises a superior dabbing experience only available at ferrodistro.com. We proudly announce that Ferrodistro is an exclusive partner of DabX Go. Seeking the perfect dabs for your new DabX? Immerse yourself in a world of premium cannabis with Ferrodistro's Delta 8 and HHC is better brand dabs. Our dedication to quality shines in our exceptional HHC and Delta 8 dabs, which offer a unique blend of potency and flavor for smooth, satisfying hits. Choose Faro D8 and HHC is better brand dabs to unlock a world of superior cannabis enjoyment. So to the loyal listeners of the PKA podcast, we extend, extend an incredible offer. Hell of a deal. Use the code PKA20 at checkout and receive 20% discount off your entire order. The whole thing, including the DabX. Get, visit FaroDistro.com linked below today and apply the PKA20 code to get 20% off your entire order, including the DabX Go. We encourage responsible consumption. Please note you must be at least 21 years or older to purchase any of our products. So check them out. Uh, if you are a very high tolerance boy looking to get fucked up, those sour belts are retardedly strong. They're absurd. Don't... Uh, Again, we say it every week. If you're used to high doses of stuff and those high doses are coming from a gas station that's very likely incorrectly dosed, please do not start with the same dose for these. It'll be too much for you. So start slow. You'll enjoy it more. Uh, they also have the 25 milligram HHC and Delta 8 gummies for people who are more you know, novice, you know, more, more reasonable with it. And if you're nervous about all those, just get the HHC cart and smoke out of it. Nice and easy. Not, not too strong there. You can meet it out as needed. Check it out, PKA20, 20% off ferrodistro.com. Also, the DabX rules. I've been getting high on that pretty much every day. <laughs> <laughs> pretty much every evening, I've been getting high as shit on this <laughs> goddamn DabX. This thing, oh shit, bump my mic. This thing rules. It's it's so clean and little, and you just hit the little button, it heats up, take a little toot. It's it's wonderful. Love this thing. This episode also brought to you by Blue Chew. It's time to get a hard dick, folks. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about sex. Guys, shouldn't you always be at your best? 2023 is the year to maximize your performance in the bedroom. Listen up, BlueChew.com. Blue Chew is a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra, Cialis, and Levitra, but in chewable tablets and at a fraction of the cost. You can take them anytime, day or night, so you can plan ahead or be ready whenever an opportunity arises. The process is simple. Sign up at BlueChew.com, and once you're approved, you'll receive your prescription within days. The best part, it's all done online. So no visit to the doctor's office, no awkward conversation, and no waiting in line at the pharmacy. Blue Chew's tablets are made in the USA and prepared and shipped direct to your door in a discreet package. Blue Blue Chew wants to help you have better sex. Discover your options at BlueChew.com. Chew it and do it. And we got a special deal for the listeners. Try Blue Chew free when you get our promo code PKA at checkout. Just pay the five bucks in shipping. That's BlueChew.com, promo code PKA to get your first month free. I believe it's three pills. 
Visit BlueChew.com for more details and important safety information, and we thank them for sponsoring the podcast. That's BlueChew.com, link below, code PKA. Just pay the $5 in shipping, you cheap yeah. fuck. You you know, I was thinking, probably a lot of our listeners, their dick's not hard enough. Send me an email at Mercadurka at Hotmail.com, mm-hmm. and I'll let you know if your dick is hard enough and if you need Blue Chew. Yes, follow that up by tweeting it at Woody, just to be sure, <laughs> because that would be a damn shame. If you were sending it to a made-up email <laughs> and, and, and no one saw this, <laughs> so tweet, tweet those hard-ass dick pics at Woody so that I can go to his feed and then scroll down and look at him and see. And I'll, I'll look and I'll be like, and before afters, please, before afters, please, I need to see what your regular hard dick looks like and then the comparatively hard dick with Blue Chew, and then yeah. we're going to show them on the show. Uh, <laughs> Make sure you uh, Look at this guy. Look at that horrible dick on the left, and look at that that beautiful Mm-hmm. suckable thing on the right. having his best day <laughs> having his absolute best day look at there's still some hot girl spit on it that's how good of a day that guy's having also lock and load when your dick's hard as hell from blue chew and you're high as shit from a 300 milligram edible you're gonna want to bust <laughs> aren't you so and when you bust you want to bust hard and that means taking a supplement that you have to take five pills in the morning and four at night in order to ensure that you're feeding your body enough essential vitamins minerals supplements to spurn your prostate into creating more fluid. More fluid coming out of your cock when you're coming means more pleasure. What's the best part of your orgasm? When you're coming. That's kind of the the whole part of it. And so you would I really wish I had a drink. You should probably get a drink. (laughs) And look at this. Look, simple and easy. It may be five pills, but look how easily you can choke them down. No water. If you think for one second those are going to dissolve into a weird powder in Woody's mouth, you're insane. Look at that. Yeah. <laughs> Look at the, that's the eyes of someone taking the easy dose of a pill. <laughs> so check it out. Lock and load. Code PKA, code JIZ. Get yourself 10% off these cum pills. Get yourself 10% off protein powders, energy drinks, weight loss supplements. There's a litany of things there that your dumbass probably needs. If you're fat, he's got shit for that. You're too skinny, he's got shit for that. You're coming like a wimp, we've got shit for that. 10% off PKA coaches. Nice. Check it out. And that man, that's the best timing ever for sponsors with Kyle's leaving. Yeah. Dude, we tremendous. So today yes. Trump was indicted for what might be the trial of the century. People are calling it the oh, biggest God. trial in the history of America. I don't know. Am I the only one with an interest in this? Maybe I am. Oh, I, I am. I, I I follow politics quite a bit. Um, mm. just you know. I have been slowing down recently because honestly, yeah, everybody I just, has. Yeah. I just don't really care much anymore. I've lost interest. You know, I keep up with the mm-hmm. local and 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 you know, like the issues that like matter to like my family and myself. Mm-hmm. You know, like that's about it. Uh, uh, but that being said, regarding this though, I just think it's hilarious. So, th- did you read the Rudy Giuliani transcripts? Those things are comedy gold. They're really? will, like, oh god, it is so funny. It, it, these are actual transcripts from Rudy Giuliani with like some women and like these. I don't know. I guess these things are all coming out at the same time. I don't know if it's connected or not. Honestly, it, it's all a blur, so I have no idea. But that's what I've gotten out of this, which was Rudy Rudy Giuliani and Rudy Giuliani acting like a creep in these in these uh, transcripts, and they are it's just money because you 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 hear it in Rudy's voice, you know, and and it's just it gets even funnier. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's genuinely bizarre. Um, <laughs> I, the only thing I heard of Giuliani was, um, I guess for years he had been accusing these two women of passing a USB key with votes on it to each other casually, like heroin dealers or meth dealers he compared them to. They're both black women. And uh, it turns out it was a breath mint. It was like instantly debunked. Someone just passed like a pack of lifesavers. It's on video. And uh, but even though it was like instantly debunked, he just kept saying it again and again for years. And uh, that's just part. Well, of I mean, view. it's easier to keep lying than it is to admit that you're, you know, maybe wrong in the public eye. You got to right? keep in mind someone's handing him a list of, of speaking points. For if sure. If it gets debunked, why would they care? These are effective speaking points. Mm-hmm. No one in the crowd. You don't they don't care if it's true or not. It's about your speaking points. It's about evidence that you're right and your side is right. And look at the awful things they're doing. Can you believe they did this to a kid? Well, did they? And you look into it and they're like, well, kind of, but not really. And it was, we'll see yeah, how it goes. Chose, I though. think they're suing him <laughs> for defamation. Oh, I don't even know about Giuliani. I was thinking more of the Trump thing. Hmm. Yeah. I, to call it the trial of the century is interesting. Yeah, I right. What's bigger, though? Well, the, w- the, OJ? 
using that, we'll see, that's last century. I'm glad you said that because okay, that's where I would okay. go. Uh, I would go to OJ probably, but we're in a new century and I can't think of any real humdingers this century off the top of my head. For some oh, reason, no, the, the, thing, the, I was going to say the Johnny Depp Amber Heard one. That's all anyone could talk about for like there was two there weeks. Was the American, <laughs> um, there was the American tourist in Paris. There was a murder trial for her there that maybe you guys don't remember. It was a very big deal in the early 2000s because they were holding her and trying her for this murder. Oh, yes. And I remember that. These Americans are always way little, smaller than Trump trying to overthrow the results of an election and take control of the country after he allegedly lost. uh yeah it, they'll have to prove that and if they do and if they th lock him away and throw away the key that'll be a wild precedent to set uh i personally think that he did a lot of illegal things and if we were going by the letter of the law we'd probably hang him but we, we don't all want to be held to that that same rule of the letter of the law no one does a hundred percent because we all might get hung at the end of the day so and, and i all of our politicians will and the whole fucking system will fall down i think the idea of mm -hmm. we got him and like throwing him in prison is makes us all look bad not just him i don't think it'll be a moment of see the law applies to everyone well no it doesn't let's go get this guy then well i don't talk about that guy that's what it'll be you know it, one side yeah. should not tear the other side down it's never good with our are two chambers but it doesn't seem like pop, that's what's uh, happening here system. oh it is i mean his side it, i mean it, it is i mean the grand like he had to be indicted by a grand jury which it had to look at evidence and had to make that oh, yeah. you know yeah but how did we get uh, there, like right? that was not we, i don't think kyle's claiming he's not guilty i think we all can see he's really fucking guilty uh, yeah yeah for a couple of these the the one that's sketchy is the were the business payments to stormy daniels campaign contributions like that's the that's so room. funny that like that's but, where we're at with it like isn't that enough of like kyle's point of like that's absurd like to that's the sketchy one that's what i'm saying but the other two yeah. the documents case and the um uh the january, january 6th, 6th like overthrow the, the january 6th thing. january yeah. 6th and then there's the georgia one right that's the fourth one that he's waiting on i think yeah, yeah i think that the, one's not georgia may yet, press but, charges as well that's pending i think yeah uh yeah mm. I don't like but, it. I, I don't like. Yeah, I don't think they should any. indict someone who's running for president. Usually, it kind of mm. kind of makes you look banana. That's my thing, and that's that's why I never thought that this would happen. Is because it just seems so wrong to do it in the middle of this election. And I, I'm sure the other side would say there's no better time to do it than before he, of you know, course, becomes president it's, it's again. He's leading in the polls. You know, like, he's still leading in the polls. Yeah, I mean, they'd rather go up against DeSantis. That guy has less charisma than a rock. That guy is so every picture I see of him is him looking like a goober and boots way too big for him. Every a few months ago, DeSantis was considered the more dangerous opponent. No, uh, I, I never bought then, that. I mean, I do think he's a dangerous dude. I just think that he's an idiot. I just think know? he juxtaposes <laughs> against Biden in a favorable way. Because like Biden's mm -hmm. biggest uh drawback is the age thing and the he and he yeah. has a speech impediment, but that speech impediment has been compounded by age. So it's hard to say what's speech impediment and what's just senility or whatever. And uh, DeSantis, on the other hand, isn't a septuagenarian like Trump is. So that makes him look strong in, in certain ways. That mm -hmm. makes him a tougher competitor than Trump, who can't I, I, very I well run on the age card. I mean, it wouldn't be an age card for Trump. It would be a senility thing where he'd be like, this guy has no idea what's going on. He's, oh, he's, he's a complete excellent idiot. Impression. He's a moron. Look excellent. at me. I'm, I'm I'm ridiculous, but I'm still talking. Look at me. I can riff for like 10 fucking minutes. You think this mm -hmm. is easy, folks? You want to get up here and riff with me? You want to do bits? You want to do jokes? You think I'm doing a tight five taken down to the comedy cellar? You're going to listen to this fucking retard over me. <laughs> really? Hey, Joe, say the first 11 words that come to your head. Oh, I'm sorry. You couldn't couldn't spin that one. Sorry, I'm a little tough. Like that's that's, that's literally what would actually Bravo. happen. Like, Bravo. <laughs> like because he's so much more competent than him on a debate stage, on a talking. Like Biden screams out as a senile guy because he's a senile guy. Like Trump is a goof, but he's with it. And so that comparison, I don't think, would look unfavorably towards him on a on a stage. And the thing with DeSantis is like. Maybe I'm wrong, but I don't think anybody really likes that guy very much. Even months ago when they were saying like, oh, Trump isn't as threatening as DeSantis. I never bought that. Like mm -hmm. even in Florida, DeSantis isn't that much more popular. Yeah, than they Trump. only if, really if vote for him because he has an R on his name. Exactly. Honestly, he didn't have an R on his name. Guy would be nothing. 
Yeah, like, but he, he doesn't he, inspire I, people in Idaho. Right, that's not true. Way, so that's not true. Trump he won an overwhelming him. election down there, like something crazy, like 65. Yeah, because Florida, that's Florida. Yeah. That's just if how he, it is if he, ran, if he ran versus Trump, he would have got butt fucked. What are the issues? That's actually what I genuinely want to know. Like, okay, so, you know, no surprise. I am, I am, like, I'm a Democrat, liberal guy, social liberal. Mm -hmm. That's just how I am. You know, I believe that you can always have constructive debate. I, I'm not one of sure. those like my way is the right way. I don't give a shit personally. <laughs> um, that being said, I just don't know what the platform is. And I've tried to like look it up and see what the platform is, the Republican platform for 2024 oh, is. You. And I just don't really like I'll tell you, nothing. We're going to start with. Okay, go we're for start it. With, we're going we're to protect your kids from those lefties. Uh, they're, they're, yeah, me. they're queer and they're coming for your kids. That's what they chant in the streets when they talk about your children. They're coming for them. And yeah, somehow or platform. another, somehow or another, the far right white man has found a way to identify with the far right Muslim. And they're they're marching in the streets together now saying, leave our children alone, please. Please leave our children alone. We, we applied for a permit today. We're trying to be nice about this. Leave our children alone. And they won't. They keep mm. going and going. And no, mm -hmm. we want to do this and that and the other. And it's, mm. oh, well, this age isn't old enough to have sex. And this age isn't old enough to send pictures this age is fine, though, to, to remove genitals and to, uh, and to apply life-changing hormone treatments. That is where we're going to start. And I say we can't kind of – I don't consider myself a Republican, but on that mm. issue and on, on leaving people's children alone, I'm, I guess I'm pretty uh, right-facing on that one. Yeah, yes, I mean, I don't, I don't disagree with that perspective at all. Like, for me, it's just – uh yeah if you want to leave the children alone it's perfectly fine but i think it's important to just teach tolerance and just hey you know some kids are going to be different from you some kids are going to be the same as you some uh, kids are going to have different issues from you so it's just really i that's all i care about it's just you know like teaching people to just treat each other with respect no matter what and if, if we the can republicans get republicans make imaginary so their utopian for your children <laughs> bullshit the center of their campaign they'll get as butt fucked as they did the last three election cycles if it is not an it, imaginary they're trying to make your kids boys into girls and girls into boys they're trying to indoctrinate them into some gay lifestyle that's not even true and it is have you, i mean you the have kind of the thing that voters that being... see through you have seen like the books being like I it's one of the things that I'm not close to at all because I don't have children, but I have friends yeah. who have kids and a buddy of mine on the school board of his local like school board. He showed me images of the books they had in their library to show to like seven mm -hmm. and eight year olds. It's fucking absurd, dude. It's yeah. fucking absurd. It's full on nudity. It's showing penetration. It is. There is no world in which this is a normal yeah. thing to show a child. When he showed it to Sounds me, I was hot. like. Are you serious? Like, this is what it is. And he was like, yes, like me and all the other parents are fighting against basically the administrator right now saying we don't want our kids being taught this stuff. And so that's mm. what it seems to be is a bunch of a, a bunch of parents organically making their voices heard and then administ administrators maligning them as bad people for wanting yeah, 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 their yeah. kids to not be exposed to stuff that those pictures my buddy showed me for fucking ghoulish. Like you do not. It, it, was, it was inappropriate. Yeah. Yeah, but I, yeah, Teaching, I there was there were like it little illustrations horrific, yeah. about how to like usually the ass. stuff I hear about is like, oh, they're putting fucking kitty litter in the break room so that kids who identify as cats can poop and pee there, yes. which is bullshit. It never happened. Of course. But that is yeah. by design a story made yeah. to make you believe that none of because it's a very right. real thing. No, right. I like I, I like what Taylor a, said, like is Joe very Rogan real. spread that repeatedly. And I don't think that he's part of some sort of big kitty litter by design to mock yeah. you. I mean, whatever. somebody told him that he shouldn't have believed it. Someone he knew he in real life. He shouldn't that have he trusted that. who was a teacher yeah. told him yeah. that. And but also because yeah. he's a meathead. That's and Joe Rogan. <laughs> Yeah, he thought yeah, she was a direct that. source, but she wasn't. She had heard it from somewhere else, and then it was bullshit. Yeah. It was sure. just, yeah, the yeah. reason they have that is so in a school shooting, when they're locked down and don't have access to a bathroom, they can put it on pee and poop, where the children have to pee and poop on the floor in the fucking classroom, and they have to throw some sawdust on it. That's what that's for. No, it's for vomit. If it's even real in the first place. Nope. I don't know. Nope, it's exactly what I said. Is it real? I thought you were making that up. Nope, it's exactly what I said. It's, it's another case mm -hmm. of people being afraid to talk about shit. And getting, and then we end up in a political discussion instead. This is I've for, only seen is, kitty litter used for throw up kids. It's so the kitty litter we're talking about is the kitty litter that, that's in the kits that comes in this kit, and it's in that it's in the school shooter kit, like the emergency oh, supply stuff Lord. in the classroom. It's not the janitor closet Damn. stuff. It's we've got some kitty litter litter in this room, so that if we are locked down in this room for eight hours, ten hours, and somebody's got to go, 
we can cover it up. We can throw something on it. That's what it's about. Ooh, it's still yeah, a well, symptom of the right chasing ghosts right now. And it's part of the reason they're losing elections. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. I mean, I, mean, I think people just want normal. You know, I, I genuinely believe that people like a, a majority of the normal ass people in this country don't identify with any of that fringe left, fringe right stuff. They're just like, can we just get back to like some kind of decorum, some kind of just normalcy where we can at least okay. like have a? I, I know, I know it's impossible at this point. I think it is. I think we are too far gone, a, a, like with the the divide, that something big is going to happen that mm -hmm. will create the splinter. And then, it'll, you know, and I'm not saying like civil war or whatever, but like just something will sure. happen that will create a bigger divide. And then it will it might be just Trump splinter sentence. from there. It, it could be. I mean, we could be on the on the precipice precipice of this right now, you know. But yeah. yeah so I I'm just... on the left, and I kind of enjoy the idea of Trump getting his come up in or come up in, right? You know, like he's been lying and just getting away with everything for so long. I'm like, at last, fucking pay the price for what you do. On the other hand, I worry a little bit that maybe it's a bad idea to throw him in jail. But that well, that just it increases is. popularity, yeah. increase the split in mm -hmm. the country, etc. One hundred percent. Yeah, it's yeah. just a matter of what the worst idea is. Is the worst idea just to let him get away with everything? I mean, we let all these politicians get away with horrific things constantly, and so I guess that Nixon. was Kyle's. Nixon key point, went home. Is, yeah, these people do <laughs> absurd, horrific, illegal things. Nixon Every single so person in Congress went in made $178,000 a year and now they're worth half a bill each. Like they're all corrupt, despicable people. They're, they all break the law. All these presidents do this shit. And so it seems selective to hit him with it harder than everyone else, especially when it's like he's the lead runner of the opposing party in the middle. But I, of the I, I think it's ignoring though but that I don't like remember. it was well, very, wait, wait. no one Go else did this. No one else like led a riot into the Capitol building where the people smeared shit on the walls and prevented, at least for a few hours, the rightful winner of the election from getting that job. Right. Like no one else refused to return the documents that they found that they had around their house. Like, yeah. it, you're like, everyone does this and they're only punishing Trump for it. No, Trump is unique in the fact that. He does it worse and greater and more than anyone. It's really just, just the say, spotlight. Can I just say the reason him. we know that is because Trump is like constantly being investigated. I, I, I mean, it's rare that we send the FBI into people's homes and start looking for anything they might have done wrong. I mean, it, well, mm -hmm. correct me if I'm usually wrong. Usually they that find instance, something. That's yeah, that instance was the, uh, the crime. They he knew had he paperwork. Had yeah, he had paperwork. They asked him. He refused. And then they mm -hmm. asked him again, knowing that he had it and he still and then he refused. And then they tried to delete the tapes. Yeah. So it's like you're kind of setting yourself up there, buddy. You know, that, you're 100 like, percent right. <laughs> what he did was retarded and that's against the law. You're yeah. right. Like, that is, you can't, like if you can't I can't had do done that, that, my ass, yeah. my brown ass would be yeah. in jail. All, you know of what I'm saying? In, all of us would be in jail for that. <laughs> We'd all be 100%. in jail right now. You know, uh, but then for me, I think the bigger one was mostly just was just january 6th that like uh, you know the docs like yeah like oh i'm what is it obama did it right hillary did all those uh re mm -hmm. like proceedings for i, I forget was told what that it was. was no big deal yeah. yeah and then you know like all that stuff they it happens all the time so i i'm like yeah you know it, it's terrible Wait, shouldn't obama happen period have docs that's he did he have docs or, or did, no. he, he had docs and then returned them or something like that no, uh he did no he never he did had he had something like 30 million documents. It was outrageous. But what actually happened was there was an Obama library where these docs were going to. And it was actually the, Nar the National Archives office that had them, not Obama. And Trump tries to mistell the story as if oh. Obama also had docs. But he didn't. Biden had docs. They were in his garage. And I think he found them, notified people, and returned them without them being asked for. Uh, mm -hmm. that's what Biden did pants. I think they discovered he had docs and he was like, Oh, shucks, my bad. And he returned them right away. Yeah. Cause in uh, most cases, was, that's what happened. Right. It's yeah, like, yeah. you have docs. And Trump it's like, wasn't hey, charged you with having these. docs. It's, yeah. it's important that people know that Trump wasn't charged with having docs. He was basically charged with refusing to give them back. And then yeah, deleting the videotapes of them, hiding the documents, he, he's, uh, obstructing yeah. justice and, um, he wiped his shit. whole email server. 
You yeah. know those al- yeah, those those, those documents <laughs> were about the aliens. He was just trying to get the truth out to. He's trying to get the truth. I wish out. that was again, true. If I were the, Trump, that's the angle I take. That's the angle I take. Those I wanted to just documents. reveal aliens are real. The real documents you took, you <laughs> son of a bitch. Like, like, yeah. that's the <laughs> so is that real? Actually, and I had to let you know. Zach said, uh, would you feel, you know, similarly if like Obama or Bush, you know, like if they charge Obama and Bush before crimes or things like that? And I'm like, like to me, again, it just boils down to accountability. Don't care where you fall. Don't care what what's your political affiliation. If you do something wrong, you should be held accountable for it. And that's it. That's like I, I think like every sane person thinks that. Pre- I disagree so strongly. Um, hmm. we, we would not have much of a country if our presidents knew that they were going to be tried for anything that might have verged yeah. outside the line right after their presidency because they have to make decisions hmm. like dropping a nuclear bomb on Japan. They have to make oh, decisions for sure. like yeah, yeah, invading yeah, yeah, yeah. countries, bombing people on a daily. I, like, like uh, I, I just read about Biden killing a whole bunch of people in Syria. You know, like, like yeah, yeah, yeah. presidents yeah. murder hundreds of people throughout their careers, mm-hmm. like not just like ordering a war to happen or sending guys into a specific battle. They'll be like, sir, mm-hmm. do we push the button or no? Yeah, go ahead and push that motherfucker. Oh, well, and, and just so that we're, we're 100% <laughs> clear watching. here. I'm, I'm not that part. That's a thing that I will never understand. None mm-hmm. of us can ever understand truly, you know, like what like goes God. on in those situations. <laughs> I play Call of Duty. I, I know the no yeah. Russian mission. Yeah. Uh, Harrier strikes. <laughs> yeah. Why don't you just hit up on the D-pad? Isn't that what you're yeah. supposed to do? And then they come out. <laughs> okay. um, but up or down, depending on how it was. But uh, I'm I'm saying like the the actual like like January 6th, like that it, to me is is very clearly like it was it's clear as fucking day to anyone with eyes that all that that happened was not appropriate. Right. And yeah. it was incited from mm-hmm. somewhere and it was incited, it. you know, and but yeah. Like and again, three hours, you might not- Trump did nothing while he allowed, he yeah. didn't even tweet like, Hey guys, it's bad. Nope. He just yeah. hoped not. it played no. out, hoped it helped I- him retain power. I liked it. I liked it. I didn't want him to retain power. I wanted them to do the right thing and make Biden the president. But I hate that fucking building, all those cocksuckers that that, that work in it. So why How about I, a new I, I hope, building? I hope it was a nutty shit they put How on the wall. How about a glass building? I hope somebody <laughs> had to scrape the corn building. off I the like fucking that. fine... That fine marble that, that that I'll never fucking see in, in her if I could, goddamn office. I don't give a shit that they put their... Oh, that was Nancy. Yeah, who gives that's, a fuck that's about That's America's that office they put their feet up in. <laughs> yeah, like Billy, do you believe? Do you that's believe that, that evil these people witch are, who cackles like, behind Biden and and like sells us out day in and day out? That's her fucking office that they sent the yeah. guy to prison for seven years for. Dude, they drummed up like, so much and anger over that, fucking, like put on the desk picture. It was retarded. And he's a, and yeah, he's it was a dumb ridiculous. Fucking redneck yeah, that invaded like, a government building. So fuck him. But she's just as bad in my book. Like I oh, yeah. all with the same goddamn brush. She so might I, be worse. I hope him. they did put yeah. shit on the walls. Though. I worse. didn't see that. Was there shit on the walls? I, I didn't see poo believe, on the though. walls, but I believe there could be. I, I, think that there, I think that there was a lot of people who were there to go in, the, to go do some shit. They didn't know what it was going to be. I think there were people with, with like organized plans to do shit. I think Trump essentially um, gave them the go ahead to get as rowdy as they needed to be. Although I think it's a step too far to say he like led them in or sent them into that place or that room or to do yeah. a specific thing. But I also think that there's FBI agents in that crowd who are instigating it and making it worse so that they can get extra charges on people because oh that's God, what the no. FBI does. Like anytime you see, I, I don't like to defend pedophiles, but every one of those Chris Hansen things or those to catch a predator things, what's on the beginning of that before you get some kook in your, in your uh, living room to humiliate him and ruin his life deservedly is an adult talking dirty to him on the internet for days. He's over there fucking jerking off talk. For the first time in his lonely life, there's a sexy 15 year old who's so interested in him, Send calling him pictures. daddy or whatever you want. And yeah, send him fake pictures and stuff. And really, it's someone's, yeah, I just really want to see mom and dad are out of town this week. And he's just, like, I don't know what to do. And now he's, now Chris Hansen has you, you know? Mm-hmm. So, Ooh, yeah. yeah. You're yeah. right. Put, in the car business, we call that putting somebody together. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. I, what happened? Oh, I put them together. <laughs> put them together. <laughs> yeah, Fucking I idiot. think it's he true. Drinking and Shasta it's, in the kitchen. Dude, in the it. trials, time and time again, all these guys who r- r- ransacked the Capitol were like, I thought that's what Trump wanted. I thought he would pardon me. I thought I was operating under his orders. And Trump cleverly never 
says what he wants to happen directly. Like I remember with um, Michael Flynn, I think uh, he was in trouble for being a criminal in one way or another. And he talked to Comey and he's like, man, it sure would be nice if uh, people would just stop investigating him. Right. So I didn't tell you to do it. I didn't give you instructions. I'm just telling you what would be cool if it happened. So he speaks in that kind of code. And then you look back and it's like, he, Trump never told you to do that, but you knew he wanted that. Do you really want him out of your politics, though? Oh, in terms of entertainment value? I think so. I'm too much of a politics nerd. Gotcha. To, you I think, know, I think like, that I, he, he brings out the best and the worst in his opponents and his and, and the others, though. I think without him, we don't know that Giuliani's a shitbird. I, I think that he slides under the radar and maybe gets a position nah. of power that, that he shouldn't have. I think because we've got Trump there just walking around with this fly open because he doesn't give a shit, we get to see all the fucking let me, let me that are tell stuck you, to him for what they we are. We knew Rudy Giuliani sucked as a New Yorker. No, we didn't. That was the mayor of America. <laughs> no, nah, no, no, no. Hero. I was there. I was there was a, there was a, a colossal fall after yeah. 9-11 that just continued to get worse and worse and worse <laughs> over time. That's where he's I am. With you. Yeah. In that he's Seinfeld so... cameo episode? Like Seinfeld, yeah. you remember that, the cameo in Seinfeld? Yeah. Was I remember at like his absolute peak of popularity. No, I think 9-11 was when he had oh, the highest approval yeah. rating, but he was popular uh, in that episode for sure. Like okay, yeah. he, he was, he was a, a not uh, again, popular mayor or not two things that go hand in hand together because it doesn't matter whether you are a Democrat or a Republican. If you are you, if you're a mayor in New York, you, you suck. Like plain and simple. There's just the no mob. other way around it. No, yeah. yeah. He had a lot of props because he, he took down the mob. That was his main thing. Mm -hmm. I think he used to be a prosecutor, a DA or something like yes. that. Yes. Yeah. And he was a DA. Yeah. He, he made the New so. York mob his his core issue, his tent pole thing. Yeah. And he accomplished it. And he took down a lot of like maybe Gotti was part of that. And so he was America's yeah. fucking mayor in two thousand uh one. I'm telling you. Zach, that was, I'm seeing uh, no polls done during favorable like ratings in two thousand seven. Like, 77 percent favorable yeah, and well dude yeah. mr consistent oh eight 2001 <laughs> right right that's just it the guy wasn't no one yeah. old, no one did a survey on him it yeah. wasn't 9 11 in 2001 so this this doesn't yeah. help us that so this yeah this isn't yeah. this isn't but his actual run as mayor for people who were young during 9 11 what happened was this uh, a bunch of saudi arabians hijacked planes and took down twin towers and some other buildings too and then there was a leadership void W was not on TV for like three days, four days or something while they were yeah. gathering information. Giuliani yeah. stepped up and filled that void. Giuliani was a guy on the rubble with the bullhorn telling America it was going to be OK. And that's how he became America's mayor. Remember the fire? I just, I just want to say how on. much how much I love that to backfill people on info. You didn't just tell them about Rudy Giuliani. You made sure they were aware of 9-11 as an event <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. like someone you know, out there's listening and they're like whoa whoa <laughs> i was wondering happened? what you were smiling <laughs> about crazy to think that uh saudi arabians doing it but i was like that, i don't want that to go forgotten i think people uh, think that a bunch of guys yeah. from iraq or afghanistan took out the twin towers but it yeah, wasn't they were because saudi that was a common misconception that we were fed in the news for a very long time <laughs> it's like they didn't say no, it they it just implied it Right, what are you crazy, GB? You think that was a mistake? You think they <laughs> knowingly lied us into wars for decades? Never. You're a crazy yeah, person. Years. You think we're gonna do it again right now? You're crazy. Where's my tinfoil hat? <laughs> Hold on a second. <laughs> yeah. all, all the wars are good. Just yeah. More. But but that's oh, what happened. Yeah. Everyone was looking like, "Where's Bush?" And then there was Giuliani. You know, telling yeah. America it was gonna be okay, and we really needed it. So yeah, it, yeah, it was yeah. a big deal. All that uh, shit where people are like, oh, Bush did 9-11. I, honest to God, don't think that retard had anything to do. That There's no way that guy knew anything was up. I'm with you. Yeah, he wasn't yeah. even in charge of his own. Like, if one of them knew, it was Cheney, not Bush. Like, yeah. Cheney was the... And there was just the, no the shot that Cheney was going to... Even though they did want a... Didn't they want a war in the Middle East? They wanted a reason yes. to get out there. They, you know? they, they were Their plan was to invade Iraq before while they was running for president. Yeah. yeah. 11 was just the reason that, that the way they were able to sell it. Iraq needed it. I, I, I was, I was happy with the Iraq war, like the, like, like the idea of an Iraq war, just we didn't need mm. any circumstance at all. Just go get them. You know, they're assholes. Mm -hmm. uh, that would have been fine with me. I don't know why we stayed for so living long. over there doing in. their own goddamn thing for thousands of years. Pricks. Yeah. 
fucking cradle of civilization my ass. Was it because they try to get off the dollar for Petro? I, I, yes, that's, that's I've heard that, that that's the real reason. But a big impetus you know. of it is that like that's what happened with Gaddafi in Libya, too. Venezuela. There could be like, more than one reason, yeah. right? Sure, I've heard sure. that it's oh, because yeah. they tried to assassinate W's father. Who, uh, yeah. So yeah, he took that maybe personally. both reasons. <laughs> That's yeah. funny. Yeah. Like that Michael Michael yeah, Jordan yeah, yeah. doc. He's like, and I took that personally. <laughs> like, yeah. like, that's what happened. I, I can tell My you, we didn't invade because of a vengeance for HW. No way. I think we did. Yeah. I absolutely. Oh. Did. I think. I think no, he was I, like. I think he'd been wanting to get him for a while, and uh, and they were evil people. You know, they were very evil. Uday and Kusei Hussein. You, you don't know about the stories? Do I need to tell awful stories so you won't laugh at Uday and Kusei being, being funny? No, I know. And, and those evil. are all probably like 100% real stories. You know, like they say, wartime brings out truth. You know, what do you mean wartime? I'm talking about the decades that they ruled over the country as warlords. I'm talking about how <laughs> they would find... I'm talking about when Uday Hussein saw that married woman in her, in her, um, in her dress at the hotel and raped her in front of his husband and in front of her husband because she was beautiful. I'm oh, is that about, so? Well, I yeah. didn't know that. Of course you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> they were evil people. You know what the biggest bank robber of all time is? I do. Yeah, you saw it on Reddit just it's, like it's me. A, it's a fucking trick. But question. I won't ruin hold it. Hold on. Hold on. What is it? The biggest yeah, bank Saddam robber. Saddam Hussein had a sent a sent his son to the uh, the first national bank of Iraq with a handwritten note that said, "Give him all the money," and he left there with three tractor trailers full of money. And it was like, how much was it, Woody? Like almost a three quarters of a billion, three hundred million in each truck. I think Damn, I, that sounds rightish. It was a huge like, number, like 900 yeah. mil and 300 of it was never found. Cat. That's wild. Jesus. That's yeah. wild. I do. I, that kind of, that's I wanted power. to antagonize you, you about the Uday. And, note. I wanted to antagonize you about the Uday and Kuse thing. Do you know how <laughs> bad of a guy you have to be for some dude in Missouri like me to like know who you are for like, cause I'd never heard that rape thing. I heard the, uh, like feeding live people to animals shit like yeah. uh yeah not pigs i don't think probably a i can't tell word. what's true what's propaganda but if it's exactly. even 20 percent true those people were they needed to die yeah if cosby did 10 percent of what he was accused of he needs to be i'm talking up. about i'm talking about i'm talking about victim interviews that i watched and saw people oh, talking okay. about their baby skull being dashed upon a wall and, and the, the the crazy <laughs> tortured uh, programs how Saddam would bring his children to the torture rooms and watch his political rivals be tortured to death or raped to death or whatever when they were very small children. Um, well, the when baby Saddam skull took- thing just sounds Spartan. You know, only the best babies made it through that. Yeah, and that's I, why I to have, this day I the Spartans heard that. are so fit. <laughs> <laughs> that's, why, that's why the Spartans are yeah. <laughs> twice as thick as a normal human. Uh, at birth, every Spartan is dashed against a rock, and only those survive. <laughs> Yeah, not a very smart race. They're all very concussed. Yeah. Dude, can you imagine how <laughs> very jealous messy you would system? Be? You know, <laughs> like if you were if you were like a young boy in Sparta, and then you Taylor saw would make like it. a young boy in Athens, and like what they got to do, you'd probably be so jealous because you'd know that you hate them because you're supposed to. But mm-hmm. you'd also be like these fucking guys. They don't have to go get fucked by some warrior every night. They do. Like they do. They they all do. <laughs> I don't think it was so. a Greek thing, not necessarily a, a Spartan thing. And Athens, I was reading. I was, was reading the illusion that's, of that's voluntary. Exaggerated. That's not nearly. I, I've read the opposite. It, it was. It was very common thing. There's a word for that relationship. Like they have a word for the man boy relationship in Greek. I'm and, sure Greek is a word for everything. Well, probably. What a stupid statement. <laughs> <laughs> the language. I, was like, I was like, where do I go from here? Nope, just fuck you. That's where we go. <laughs> you're watching your wheels turn at that where you're like, that's not even a reputation of what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, they do. coming out of his head and he's just like, this man boy love. Now, I, I was propped up to believe the Spartans were so fucking cool by my, my high they school teacher cool. and everything I learn about now says that that was all propaganda and lies and nonsense that they weren't this... I don't know what to believe anymore uh, about the Spartans in particular and about the, the Agogi and the way that they were. That's that's when this fucking young boys at seven would go and be taken away to become warlords. The I, mm. What I always learned was that they were at, at the barracks, the, the army barracks, 95 percent of their life. And they would go home to have sex with their wives to, pro, to like make new Spartans. But that was kind of a rare thing. Like you just kind of go home and visit. And, and get some relations, but mostly you live there on the barracks with the men 
And it was just such a, I was always taught that it was a that super war, warrior sucks. culture. What yeah, a terrible that was life. Like, and the age of service went on to, I want to say, and it's, if it was 45 or 55, 45 seems more likely for ancient times because what a grizzled veteran you would be at 45. You yeah, know, probably you're in, in a ancient, leadership position or something at 45. Yeah. Like, if you take a 45 year old and ask him to fight a 25 year old with a spear, you're going to have a 25 year old left over. Maybe, More or likely, maybe he's better yeah. at like running that phalanx thing they did because they were like a turtle shell with spears sticking out of it when you yeah. see the way it worked. Not of that 25 year old has been training for 18 years since he was seven with it. You mm, know? I guess like, it depends where he's from, right? Like, like if he's one of those poor barbarian guys who was just like, look at the turtle men with their yeah. shiny shell and he just ran into your spears. Yeah. Well, if he's Again, a goth, it, he's fucked. You can hit your Classic 40s moment. or even 50 and not be totally worthless. But yeah. I'm telling you, if I played ice hockey now, I'd get smoked. Like, yeah. I'm just sure of it. I well, like how this like all went back to the initial thing that Woody said. This guy just wants I, to become I, an athlete, guys. That's all he wants to do. <laughs> he just wants to be an athlete. He already is. Combat, is, an combat athletes are interesting, though. Like You're seeing more and more guys in their early 40s be at the top of their game somehow. Um, Who are you thinking but, of? Um... Is it? It's not Erie Prohaska, is it? Is he? The, he's not. It, he, it's uh, it's his division, but it's the other guy. It's the guy who just um, they said he won against. Um, is this UFC or boxing? UFC, UFC, UFC. What was the last fight? I'm I'm spacing out. Um, Me too. I didn't watch that event. There's several 185ers who are who are advanced in years who are just right there. Um, Interesting. At the top. And uh, and even in uh, heavyweight, always has some older guys. It seems like because they're just bringing that power. Yeah, eighty-five. You say, "Damn, is that's it? oh, that's canceled." Not, also, you're sure saying like, a, I thought it was. It's not Jan Blachowicz or whatever. I don't know how. Yeah, I was thinking of Jan. Yeah, Jan's oh, old. Okay, he's two hundred five. Okay. You're saying like a forty-five-year-old would? Yeah, I don't like even recognize like heavyweight with a without John Jones there to like hold the table down. It's I don't <laughs> even know who's. Who, I get the I get that one eighty-five mix. Part oh. of it's because they all want to fight at the other weight class back and forth all the time. Yeah. You know, I guess He's this would 45. be a fun merge of worlds. Do you ever think, cause I, I'm a big wrestling guy. Do you ever think mm. Brock comes back for one more or is he, he just, said he wouldn't. I'd love to see it kind of. I don't know the trouble with Brock is, you know, there'll be one guy on steroids, like, like just overwhelmingly juiced to the gills. And yeah. I don't know. What fair, do you do with a guy like that? The yeah. other guy gets bashed in the head. You get a Mark Hunt situation where this guy's a clean competitor and you're going to give him brain damage for, for views knowingly. Mark Hunt should have gotten fucking paid because that's what they did. They yes. let Brock fight Mark knowing he was on juice. Although Mark, I don't know why anyone never says, hey, Mark, um, did he pass your eye test before you stepped into the cage with well, him? They told Mark Hunt that he would have to pass USADA and that he'd have a six month period and shit. And, you know, like, but then they made an exception that this guy didn't have to be clean for six months beforehand. And then he failed the drug test afterwards. He was just totally juiced up. But yeah. um, Bigfoot Silva is another guy who failed the drug test after kicking Mark Hunt's ass. And it's just like, damn, Mark Hunt. And I think there's more examples too where he just got right. guy. By people on steroids repeatedly. And Did Oberim fuck him up too? I would have to Google. I, 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 I mean Oberim, of course. Yeah, right. looking at Brock, I, every time I see him, it's like, man, that is that is a that is an incredible looking human being. He he's you, you joke about a who specimen you send of, to go. specimen of a man, dude. You know when the aliens land and you got to send your champion to go fight them. Who do you send, Woody? The aliens land. They're bipedal like us, and they say, "Send your champion to fight for." For, for eternity or whatever, uh, who do we send? Do we send John Jones or do these we are actually in my head? Are we Depends wasting some more time? Or are we gonna send John Jones to go fuck up an alien? <laughs> right? He's gonna Bro, poke that, him in those big eyes. Make, right make that the, the 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 script for Independence Day three, and we are Welcome making money. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, if the aliens landed and and they showed up and they were like, send your champion to fight for your for all of your fates. And uh, and they had their three champions, and we had to send ours. John Jones is captain of the fucking team. I, I feel like he's got to be. I feel like he's got to be. I'd send like John Jones, Brock Lesnar, hundred percent. You can send Brock. I don't think you think Brock's the best heavyweight that I, I mean, know. If one punch from that man can do, like, you know who I would actually send? Real talk, mm. man. Still got it. Send Iron Mike in there. Let him go. Just let him get a few <laughs> jabs in. Actually, I did a panel with him recently. 
And uh, yeah, and he, very interesting guy. Um, But that dude's arms are still just solid as a fucking rock, man. You could tell the man can just punch the crap out of you you know he doesn't no weight. problem he doesn't work out he's just genetically like that oh that that's a funny story so the movie predator my favorite action movie um you had a lot of competition between the macho guys that were on there you had arnold schwarzenegger jesse the body ventura and you had carl weathers of course who played apollo creed in the rocky movies and what what jesse would do he knows we're supposed to work out at 7 p.m arnold already's arnold works out at seven let's say yeah. So he gets there at 645, douses himself with water. So he's dripping with sweat when Arnold gets there. And he says, oh, you just getting here? Been here for three hours. And then he does his workout, just begins it. Mess with <laughs> Arnold's head. Carl Weathers says, y'all work out? Huh. I just look like this. <laughs> <laughs> That's then, right, Carl. But then Carl Weathers has to sneak away <laughs> yeah. to work out. But he doesn't just look like yeah. that. That's Carl right. Weathers. That's right. Uh, so, I know where it's just, it's just three meatheads, just shit. three meatheads yeah. trying to one up one another is just so silly. Who has the biggest biceps? I'm sure Kyle knows that story. Great story. Arnold, of course, gets the information from the wardrobe uh, person that he knows everyone's arm measurements. And so he challenges Jesse. He's like, Jesse, you know, we should, we should measure our arms and the window gets a bottle of champagne. And, and Jesse's like, yeah, Arnold, that's a good idea. Let's do that. Let's do that. Arnold knows the measurements. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What happened? I I think oh, you, I have the story right. He put out some misinformation, like, "Hey, everyone, I've got 18 inch biceps. I've got 18 inch biceps. Man, I got the biggest biceps out here. 18 inches. They're really like 25." So Jesse hears this, knowing that he has like 21 inch biceps, and is like, "Fuck." I've got bigger biceps than Arnold. So Arnold is like, "We should measure biceps. Winner gets champagne." Sure enough. He's been lying about his bicep size. They're what bigger. a what a snake. I've been had. <laughs> <laughs> I've been had. <laughs> I was misled and I'm now a fool. <laughs> That's such a good accent. <laughs> Taylor's got a good impression, bro. Oh shit. That's a good impression. I wish I knew thing they would do. Jesse would show up, like Arnold works out at 7 p.m. Jesse shows up 15 minutes before Arnold and covers himself in water. To look like he's dripping with sweat and he's oh, been yeah. there for hours he's and then he begins his arnold his workout so arnold can watch him just do it so it looks like he's doing six hours of workouts J- um the other guy what's the other guy i just said is carl weathers who plays the black guy goes oh shit y'all lift weights and shit i just look like this yeah. <laughs> he doesn't <laughs> just play a black guy i'll surprise you he is a black guy yeah. <laughs> by the way kyle i looked it up you were right uber mean uber Reem did beat mark hunt Kyoto Mark Hunt had it. Yeah, he had a. I would. I, I can't think of anyone else who got punished by more cheaters in the UFC and hurt by more cheaters uh, that sucks. using steroids than Mark Hunt. Uh, he paid the price time and time again, being in a heavyweight division and getting hit hard by the strongest men on the planet uh, using all sorts of drugs. And to be fair, though, he is a New Zealander man. <laughs> He was a New Zealander, and those those guys are tough as nails, bro. Like, oh, really? Nails. You wouldn't guess by the way they sound, but they are. Yeah, <laughs> it's like those well, accents yeah, are just kind of like a like a dirty or Eng- like a tough England is how they sound. Who's have you ever blue? seen the uh, their football? The like their right. AFL? Their no, they have their own football league. Australia, like it's, oh, it's a, yeah, it's Australian football league, and it's it's just. Yeah. It's nuts. Like is they it the are. Same as our football? No, or I mean Canada kind of, but it's, it's yeah, it's closer to rugby. A little bit more brutal. It'll never make its okay. way over here. That's what Volkanovski uh, did, right? Wasn't um, Alexander Volkanovski, who is the champion at 145 pounds, used to be 220 pound fucking um, damn um, football player. <laughs> and really, so now he's this little. Sh- Brick shit house. <laughs> it was like five foot five, and he is a problem. He went. He fought the 155 pound guy and oh, came so close to beating him mm-hmm. that everyone like kind of a lot of people think he beat him. And he like dude, you showed me a picture of that guy. He, you showed What's me a his name of this guy. I still recall Volkanovsky. Alexander Volkanovsky. Like, like that guy on the right. Like if he stands totally still. Like imagine trying to move that guy. <sighs> oh, like he's shit. like he's like what? He's five four five five. So his center of gravity is lower than yours. Like he's you're you're not that gonna guy knock that guy over. Is a tank. guys who are, guys who are all muscle like that really do well with weight cuts. Like if you have mm-hmm. any fat on you, 
I don't know the science behind it, but it's pretty difficult to dehydrate your fat. But people can get the water out of their muscles really effectively and just weigh 145 for 10 minutes. Mm-hmm. Just look how stocky he is in that, man. And in, in, in yeah. his, um, his uh, AFL gear, I this believe guy, that's his AFL or his rugby gear. If you want to be a fan of you, if you're looking for your guy, this is the I'll fight anyone, anywhere, anytime guy. This is the guy who honestly doesn't give a shit and he happens to be the smallest guy. And he always backs it up. They were like, w- would you fight Connor at 145? He's like, 145. You're never making that weight again. Well, I'll fight him <laughs> at 155. Would you fight him at 170? Fuck, I'll fight him at 200. I don't care, mate. <laughs> <laughs> like, he doesn't <laughs> fucking care. It's, it's, uh, he's just he's like, yeah, I'll gain, I'll, I'll gain 60 pounds of muscle. Fuck you. No, he'll, no, he'll <laughs> give him the weight. He's, he's saying, yeah, I'll give him bring Connor as big as you want Connor. I'll show up and whip his ass. Um, this is the type of dude. This is the type would, of dude that was. Connor made for this shit though you know what i mean like like his his mind his life everything has just led to him being a fighter both of these and, guys both of these yeah. guys are two like um adesanya is on the left um he the is i i really dislike him um i as why he's steroids he's, he's the guy who's fucking cringy as yes fuck. but that's not why he's cringy dude as credit he, he, zuckerberg real quick he looks good like bro yeah suck looks uh, Wild, Dude, like, Zuck would fuck up Elon Musk at this. Point. Oh yeah, yeah. I yeah. was talking Zuck about would, fighting. I think Zuck beats me up, no problem. Zuck beats Thank up you. a lot of people. Dude, uh, he's he like a blue belt, do. isn't he? Yeah, he's a blue belt, so. I believe, which is like not. He's a little easy guy. To yeah, get. he's a little guy. Like how I, big I'm is gonna he? Say he's like how. Looking at this, I'm gonna say he's five eight, five nine tops, and like a hundred and fifty to one hundred sixty pounds standing there. I agree. I think, yeah, because I, I know how big the people are next to him, and I, I think I agree with Kyle. Yeah, I guess the yeah. right guy must be real short. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and the guy on the left is quite tall. Um, especially he's, uh, Zuckerberg's guys. five seven is what Zach says. So okay, yeah. damn. Then this other guy, that guy's like five three, five four of just absolute terror, and he's incredibly yeah. skilled. They, um, he was getting uh, choked. I think it was a guillotine, and he was talking about how. He knew that his opponent had a good choke, and so they've been practicing. He's like, "I'd let big guys choke me. Just put, I, I'd let them get it as deep as they could, but it still was never as deep as it was that night." <laughs> he was like, mm-hmm. "He was like, I was looking at the sky, and the lights were getting dimmer and dimmer. I know that, <laughs> and I just knew. I, he's like, I know some techniques to to change the mechanics of the choke to let a little blood get to my brain, but it's not working. They're getting dimmer and dimmer, and I watched this match." His head, his neck is being squeezed as hard as you can imagine a neck being squeezed with both of this guy's arms. His head is in the armpit, and he's, yeah. it is just arcing his back to choke him more. And but the guy's arms were just a little bit too weak, and Volkanovsky would not stop. He wouldn't tap. So he was. He, he's like, if I can outlast his arms, if my brain can outlast his arms, then I win. Then we stand up, and I'm gonna fuck him up. And that's exactly what happened. He, he outlasted the choke. He pulled his head out Holy of that. Holy shit. He pulled his... Look at his eyes bulging. They're blood. There's like blood no. vessels breaking in his fucking eyes. He's going... He nah. pulls his head out of that and whooped this dude's ass. That's actually Who was nuts. that? Who's on top? Dude, what a fucking Brian terrible Ortega. sport to be oh, okay. a member of. This this Jeez, just looks <laughs> awful. This looks so... Right uh, there. The absolute <laughs> best case scenario is you get to rub up against a guy and win. Like yeah, that, it is. that's the best possible thing that can happen is that if you, you rub, rub up, up against, against a guy, you've already won. You that's already right. Won. Look at that guy; he's having that's, a great that's, time. That's why Woody's you into jujitsu me... because he's like, it's the best way to find not fat people. Like, just... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just go in there and I'm seeing definition everywhere. I turn my head. I love it, dude. Yeah, it? there there's so many perfect specimens at the gym in in this sport. It's ridiculous. Yeah, um, Sean, your, our, our boy Sean Strickland, my favorite UFC fighter of all time, I think now. My favorite um, too, and you can trust and, me because I have no favorites. That guy is the funniest fucking dude to have ever come across my feed in the context well, good of news. UFC. He's hysterical. He is in negotiations to fight the black guy we saw a minute ago with Zuck oh. uh, in in uh, in Australia on the the coming up card. Um, oh, good for him. They are. He's trying. It's kind of gone back and forth. That Sean's so good on social media. At one point, he was like. Ah, they changed their mind. They say they don't want me. And everybody's like, no. And now they're back to the negotiation table again. Like it came back. Yeah, smart man. Smart man. I was going to tell you like, oh, I heard they called it off. But I just kept listening. I was like, there's a good chance Kyle knows more than me. Yeah, yes. Dude, I would love to get Sean Strickland over there. 
Sean is uh, real outspoken to the point of like verbal diarrhea, just run off the mat. He, he doesn't have a filter. His social Let's media Let's get Sean on the show. Wild. Everybody tweet at Sean Strickland. Yeah. See if we can get Sean, him. Yeah, yeah. Sean, see that. this clip. Yeah, this, yeah, this is why Sean Strickland. Strickland's a badass. There's a lot of these dudes who are martial artists. Sean Strickland's still a fucking tough guy, if you ask me. That's how I define Sean Strickland. I see him in traffic on his social media recording while he's calling people out in traffic. You want to handle this like a man? You want to pull over? No guns, no knives? You want to go? And the guy's like, guns? He's like, no, no, no guns. Don't shoot. Do you want to throw down? No guns, no knives. And then a woman, he's having an argument with her. You got a husband or a son that can come out here and, and stand <laughs> for you? Someone whose ass I could whoop, lady? Like, he's so wild. Just beating uh, the shit out of a seven-year-old at Whole Foods. <laughs> yeah. Get that good uh, basket. You, like, lift him out of Your here. son's a pussy. And it's like, he's eight. <laughs> I threw him oh. against the wall and his skull cracked. What a fucking yeah. pussy. I fought this pussy's son, and it's like, <laughs> she was 24. Yeah. Like, <laughs> of course. Her the UFC is really good right now, uh, in my opinion. I think it's mm. it's not always good. I'll be honest. The women's fight, that, that that's mm. about to go away. Dana's about to start deleting fucking divisions over there with the ladies. But the men, there's, there's this big pile up at the top in multiple divisions. It's fun to see. And then the divisions that were kind of piled up, starting to get a little slack, and things are starting to move forward. You're about to see Yair Rodriguez fight Alexander Volkanovsky. Um, there's a lot of good fights coming up, and a lot of divisions are going to change. And there's, they got to figure out what they're going to do with Makachev and Volkanovsky. It's, uh, I don't know. I've been loving it lately. And seeing Derek Lewis, the fucking black beast, who was on a three-fight skid, about to get cut from the UFC, on his last contracted fight. Like he can walk out the door, free agent. There's more to it than that, but essentially comes across the ring with a fly. First of all, he shows up with a virtual six pack. He kept talk, calling it a six pack. It's not what I call a six pack, but he's a 270 pound man. So it was close enough, but he came across the ring with a flying switch knee and hits the guy so cleanly in the middle of his chin. It was beautiful. And then finished the guy and call it 30 more seconds. So what I think could happen there Woody, is fantastic. He's a free agent. He could go PFL. You know who's beaten Francis Ngannou? The Black Beast, Derek Lewis. So you could just roll it back and do it again. Like the, I, just, you know, I love how nerdy you guys are for this. Because it's something yeah, I'm not into at all, but I respect it. As a as a <laughs> as a nerd of many things. I respect how how like how you it's guys are just thing. like, can you imagine this fight? Because that's how I am with wrestling. You know, yeah. I, I think of pro wrestling, I'm just like, oh my God, like we're gonna get, mm -hmm. you know, like I like, like that I we think, find out who's the tougher guy. Yeah, I, yeah, 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 yeah. I can get down with wrestling to some extent. I'm more like the clips of wrestling and the highlights. And I like the 30 for 30 from the famous guys. Flair's a legend, all that shit. But I like that. Like, we could sit here all day and talk about Tom Cruise or Brad Pitt, or we could talk about this race car, car driver from this era versus that one. But with the UFC, if we're talking about the best fighters in the world right now, hand-to-hand -hand combat, they're there right now and they're competing. And every now and then they throw two of the absolute best as far as anyone's eyes can tell. And they make them fight in a cage for 25 fucking minutes. And it's crazy that that happens. Yeah. And we get, we find out yeah. who's the better that's, guy. That's the best part about the UFC. Dana makes the fights that you want to see as much as he possibly can. He tries to make that happen in boxing. Like you want to see Pacquiao Mayweather. And I know we got the ghost of Pacquiao versus the ghost of Mayweather, but those two fighters in their prime never met. Incredible. dodged each yeah. other forever. Right now, Tyson Fury has a legitimate contender. I forget the guy's name. But um, uh, Tyson Fury's hardest fight ever was against a small guy who was just a better boxer. Knocked Tyson on his ass. And there's another guy who looks like him but more skilled. I wish I was better with names. And who's he fighting? A safe fight in, in Ganu. It's a money fight. It's an easy day for Tyson Fury. And... Uh, you boxers don't often fight the other best boxer. That fight doesn't happen in yeah. the UFC. Yeah. You've got Dana telling who's allowed to fight who, and they just match them together. And you get Gaethje versus Poirier for the bad motherfucker belt. You get, uh, you know, these champions fighting the toughest guy, the second toughest guy on earth. It'll happen. And if it's yeah. close, they make them fight twice in a row. I, I just feel three, like other sports. They'll make them fight many. three fucking times. They, and and I saw Strickland talking about this. Uh, about the money situation and why you don't have as many mm. UFC champions and he, as many U.S. Uh, fighters in the UFC. And he, he's like, they go find these guys in Brazil and and Russia. Like these guys where a nice house costs $200,000 and they they give these guys 10 and 10. 10 to show, 10 more thousand to win. 
and they'll sign them on a four fight deal and they'll cut them after three. They walk away with their thirty to sixty thousand dollars and their life is set. That's what you're competing against, Americans. So you're gonna see a lot of tough fucking Dagestanis. You're gonna see the most ruthless Brazilians because that's all they need. They'll fight. They'll spend their entire childhood to win three fucking fights when they're twenty because it'll make their fucking life almost if they're from those poor ass places of the country. And, and they the don't logic. mind shedding but blood. If you know, they, they're speak from English, that. I'm less interested. Oh, for sure, man. If you want a superstar, he's got to be slick with it. He's got to be a Colby Covington. Mm -hmm. Look, there's a reason Ric Flair is my favorite fucking UFC fighter. And, and, and The Rock is probably my second. They were slick on the microphone and funny. And they had catchphrases and, and, and cool moves. The people's elbow. We all know what the people's elbow is. I mean, it's... Is that Stone know, Cold? I don't know the people's that's, elbow. That's well. The Rock. That's The Rock. Or we oh, all yeah. don't know what the... Most of us know what the yes, <laughs> those of us who are educated in wrestling. Are, so yeah, actually, Zach brings up a great stunner. point. I, I think like right now, there's a wrestling's in a really good spot, uh, and I'll, I'll I'll say this. Unfortunately, I got to dip out. Um, but uh, wrestling's in a in a really good spot right now. Where, firstly, you have uh, a lot of promotions doing really really good work. Like it's not just WWE anymore. There's mm -hmm. WWE. There's AEW. Then AEW owns Ring of Honor, which is kind of its own split off thing, but it's still very much AEW. So uh, Ring of Honor is the promotion where like a lot of the current stars right now came from. So CM Punk, uh, um, uh, Daniel Bryan or Brian Danielson. Right now, the current world heavyweight champion in WWE, which is Seth Rollins. He came from there as well. Uh, so they had a lot of like really good wrestlers coming from that. So it's really cool that that promotion continues to live on. It had a lot of problems, so it was pretty cool. Then there's Impact Wrestling, and then there's also like wrestling happening in Japan, New Japan Pro Wrestling, because like the the the, the borders have just merged so much now. Where Wait. back then it used to be so separate. You know what happened in Japan happened in Japan. Like Brock Lesnar was the IWGP World Heavyweight Champion. It was actually one of its more famous ones. Not a lot of people know about it in WWE because when he left, he went to Japan and wrestled over there and got better and became a better, a bigger star. Um, mm. Then he I came over and started Japanese doing UFC. Commercials. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, like, it, it was really cool. Yeah. Let me you ask know? you this. What, He's like, hold on, she knows it. Energy. Hmm. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> what just like about, something like that. What do you like about professional wrestling? But before you answer, let me tell you what I don't like and why I can't get into it and I couldn't be a real fan. Sure. If I were to turn it on, what I what I usually see is e there's the backstage thing where they act poorly and sort of hype up why we're mad at each other, maybe, or what the new drama is, sort of the behind the scenes in the back rooms, the, the hallways yeah, yeah, of the yeah. arena. I don't like that. But but I like the, the highlights of that because they're funny. When Booker T dropped the N-bomb, hilarious. So then I go to, uh, I, I really like when they're out there and they're on the microphone and they're being very yeah. slick with it. Only the Creme de la creme of that is interesting, though, because otherwise it's two guys in bikini briefs shouting at each other. And I don't like that because it's silly. Yeah. And then the wrestling itself. I don't like I don't like the wrestling itself. I don't like seeing them bounce around or the ropes and throw each other. I'm not impressed by it. Mm -hmm. I'm impressed mm -hmm. by their toughness. I understand it's toughness. I'm not one of those guys who's like, ah, oh, it's fake. Who cares? Yeah, yeah, I yeah. get that they're doing physical feats. Well, you've seen the blend enough as well, you know, from like UFC fighters coming over to WWE and experiencing like, oh, it's a different kind of pain, <laughs> you know? Like, that's how yeah. it's always described to me. Uh, like, you know. Uh, yeah, around. Yeah, but yeah. What, what do you like? Why do you? So when you, it's, when you a, it's an a event, What gets you going? Okay, so uh, a few things, right? Because... Um, all right. Firstly, uh, I, I love the live environment of professional wrestling. Uh, it's super fun. It, there's really not a lot of things like it um, because everyone that's there is a fan of something that's going to happen on the show. So they always have something to look forward to, uh, which is really cool. Uh, and, and, and it's just a really, really cool environment to be a part of, right? Uh, depends on the show and where it is, but for the most part, like I have mostly gone to New York and LA and, and it's been amazing every single time I've gone. Uh, so that's, that's the experience part of like going to a live show, but like turning on the TV each and every week and watching it. And I'll be honest, I don't do it as much as I used to like back in the day, like when you were talking about stone cold and the rock and everything, like I was watching Monday night raw all the time because it was so mm -hmm. It was it was awesome. But also we have to remember, like our attention wasn't as pulled as it is now. There's like a freaking 
metric fuck ton of things that want your attention, whether it's streaming services or sports or video games or whatever. It wasn't necessarily like that back then. So that's why we were so dialed in in the Attitude Era, right? And I really enjoyed it. Um, but if you go back and watch the actual wrestling, which I that is going to the second thing that I really love, which is the actual technicality of professional wrestling. It is an art form. It is it is different. It's unique. It, it's got it has its own rules and its own like methodology. And, and it may not make a lot of sense to a lot of people. But, you know, fuck it, man. It's entertainment. It's meant to be cool. It's meant to be yeah. fun or just enjoy yourself. Like, I know that, like, when I throw a person against a rope, the natural thing is not that he's going to turn around and just immediately come back and run at me. You know, like I just stop in my tracks, turn around and kick the guy in the balls. You know, that's the most logical thing to do. But yeah. it's a performance. So, you know, you kind of go with everything. And I, I think that's like really where it is. Like yeah, yeah, it's horse. a performance. It, it, I don't look at it as a fight because like it's not. Yeah. You know, it, it's, it's a performance. Like medieval times without dinner. <laughs> yes, but uh, more entertaining. Uh, and I like medieval yeah. times. More, don't more, get me wrong. Arguably, yeah, than medieval times. That's true. <laughs> uh, oh, I've, dude. You know, I've never been. I tried to. Like, I tried You've to go never twice. Been? And I remember I tried to go one time. You know what they fucking do? They pull up the drawbridge when the show starts. Oh. I Damn. wanted to go, and they had pulled up an actual drawbridge. Oh well, that sucks. <laughs> like when you when you go to medieval times, you may like get there and be like, "This is gonna be fucking stupid." It's it's pretty fun. Like it's, I, yeah. it's pretty, I was eat excited. I, finish game hen with your hands. Yeah. And like pop like, a couple I edibles and just I go was, nuts, man. I was it's a great. child, but I was I gonna say, would you still that, like, like it uh, as an adult? Yes. I don't know if I, I mean, I do like the Cornish bean. Game Head, but uh, yeah, they had uh, the adults had like these old timey looking mugs of like mead Steins. or pr probably some kind of yeah. you know, old timey alcohol. And I remember looking at those and being like, that looks so fun. Like that's because we just got like little soda cups. We didn't get to drink out of the big uh, like horn looking things. The Steins. Like, we we went to a, a pirate's plastic one horn here. Stein. And, and that's one. like and then a thing that holds the horn. No, no, this was, no, this was you, medieval you, times in fucking Branson, dude. There was not yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, inside of the inside of the horn was a K cup, actually, or not a K cup, yeah. a solo cup. And then you take the solo cup out, and then you got to give them the horn back. That's usually yeah. how it works. You want the horn ceremony. Yeah. They only got they just give many. you a horn that's curved, and you're like, I just have to hold this. I still want to go. Like, uh, like I'm gonna. You should though. It is fun. It's it's. Look, my advice because I went I to this pirates one uh, that's close by here, and you know, you just go get drunk, pirates. pop a few edibles, and have fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's the same concept. It was pirates instead of knights. Same exact concept. They were all trying to do a thing. They all had colors, and yeah. you know, one was purple, one was yellow, one was red, and then there were people cheering, and it was a pirate ship with water, and it was actually kind of cool. Uh, but the food was just utter trash. Yeah, but again, yeah, right, right that's after what you're we're going done, for. Right, right after we've concluded our our foot race, we should reward ourselves with medieval. There times. it is. I'm telling you guys, the content writes really, itself. This is a brilliant. I, I think we I know it is. Our, Me and Woody are going to work up quite an appetite for Cornish Game Hen as no, we're I blowing think we have our foot out. race during a performance at medieval times. Oh, and we should it, just jump and in the there race, and see who no, can no, last no. We longer can set this against up. the security guards. This is going to be just like when I did that thing with Tilted Kilt. We'll all get paid, too. So we're going to be in <laughs> costume when we do our foot I'm race. In. And, and we're not just racing <laughs> to the finish line. We're running for the swords. Yes. The weapon rack is over there, and there's three different weapons. There's a sword, a, maybe a pole arm, and a whip. No, a net. A net. I like the net. I'm, Dude, I'm not I going for that net. Fuck your ass up with a pole arm. If those are the other two options, you're done. And because you're slow as shit, and and Woody's old, <laughs> I forget I'll, about that. I might, I might make it there first. See, what you don't know is that Woody and I have conspired against you. Mm. It's it doesn't even matter. I'm too powerful. And after I net you, <laughs> I'm too I'm too virile. You guys put bo two both your hands on one of my arm. I'm tearing that shit right. We're out. gonna do that thing where where Woody gets on all fours behind you and I push you. <laughs> you push me. You can't, there's no counter to that. You're done. Yeah, You're maybe. Really I mean, if I get if I get a hand on you though, I've got Simeon grip strength. I'll separate your hand right from the wrist. You'll be wearing greaves. <laughs> wearing greaves. Well, Dude, I'll I would be actually... wearing greaves. Yeah. Instead of medieval times, hear me you out. Bring your own greaves. <laughs> we All go right. to like a, I don't know, major greaves. league Bad soccer luck. game. Uh -huh. We storm the field. Whoever stays on the field longest wins. Dude, it's that genius. would be so hard. What do they get? What do they get? And each of them wearing a different. You get a night in jail. Like, 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 I, like, like I've got get the, arrested. <laughs> we're wearing our shirts say lock and load, um, and they've got like a, a QR code. 
<laughs> and we're just <laughs> scrambling trying to <laughs> trying to make enough advertising dollars to pay for bail. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Genius. Uh, subscribe to the Patreon. The twenty dollar tier is getting me out of prison. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Do you uh, want more I, of the show? I'll be you okay with that. No, I saw I saw one recently. Like, I don't know what I'm looking at half the time on the internet. There's so many fucking fads and they come so quick sometimes. <laughs> but hmm. apparently there's a guy who does YouTube shorts and clearly his ass isn't that big. They've just loaded his khaki shorts with so much booty <laughs> that it's comical. But the they fuck send, are you watching, but he, dude? But he just does silly stuff. And they did one where he storms the field at a professional game. But he has six bodyguards wearing black Secret Service suits who are trying to fend off the secure, <laughs> the actual security who are trying to, and for some reason, just guys' brains. They ignore the secu- for the they ignore the men in suits and they actually go for the diaper ass fellow who <laughs> happens to be shockingly athletic. His knees are so high when he runs that to me that's a sign of a good athlete. Like he's pumping those <laughs> legs, are, and he's got so much ass that it. <laughs> He's got so much ass that there has to be a big ass under the pads. I saw this. It was on Mother List, right? <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Zach. <laughs> he is athletic. Dude, that, athletic. Guy, that guy is face down right now because he's laughing too hard. And he, he, he's like, I can't ruin the bit. Please stop laughing. <laughs> I've seen him skateboarding and dude, stuff, the mustache and he's like is down fucking in a great. low position with that ass sticking out. Yeah. <laughs> See, I, I don't know what the joke is. I don't know who this guy is. Clearly, that's not all him. That, you don't know what the joke is? That That's a joke. Yeah, like, <laughs> the, the joke is that ass. This. Not a complicated He's like, joke. He's like, it's a right? Dude, you're on a desert He's island, and that's the only ass there. you've seen in three days. Do you go for it? Yeah, man, that's a lot of cheeks. That's a, His that, name that is dude. Jim Kardashian? That's great. That dude is caked <laughs> up. <laughs> yeah. He's got a Sidney Crosby ass. Yeah, uh, I, that, I've never seen an ass that big. That That's one of the larger asses I've ever seen in my life. But no, to see him get down on a skateboard like real low is fucking comical. Um, I don't know what that is or, or who that is. J- you said Jim Kardashian? Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Probably a Gold Probably boy, I think a- you said you had to go. Yeah, I do. I do. I just want to be rude because Jim Kardashian sounds incredible. Uh, yeah. I'm looking it up right now. No, that's so. probably his real name, Jim Kardashian. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I like how I type Jim. I type. Yeah, can oh, you there it is. It? Yeah, you know, Lincoln's secretary's name was Kennedy, and Kennedy's secretary was named Lincoln. Oh, okay, yeah. it was a uh, TikTok content creator, Frankie <laughs> La, La Pena, uh, in mid 2021. It uh, calls himself Jim Kardashian. <laughs> Jim, <laughs> this is great. Is he the same well, guy that did the green screen behind him? They look similar. Uh, He's yeah, a talented maybe. guy. The one who's like in a job interview having an MMA fight. <laughs> yes. No, it's yes. Oh, wait, like jump out of a him. plane with a with a uh, green screen, so you can't tell he's jumping out of a plane. But it's, he's got goggles on, and his hair's getting blown backwards because he's going 150 miles an hour. That's crazy. <laughs> well, guys, I want to. You got anything you want to pin? Oh yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm going to come back. I think I'm going to start streaming again. I don't know. Cool. I kind of just decided to stop focus on my life play more games Crazy and games. chill out with my wife and that turned out to be great but now she's like okay i'm chilling a lot with you go stream so i think it's <laughs> probably right, what's then. gonna end up happening uh and then i'll be working uh valorant champions all month um as the host of the show so if you're into nice. valorant esports uh I'll, i'm the host i'll be doing that for a while uh and uh yeah and other than that just kind of chilling but thank you guys for the invite i really appreciate yeah, it yeah of course seeing you, man it's good to see you're doing yeah. well yeah, yeah, check yeah, out all of Golden Boys links below. You'll see those free reach and, out. and check him out. Yeah, hit check me up again. Out. I love to. I love to join up again. It was, it was super fun. Appreciate you Sounds guys. Good, all right, man. have a good one. Take it easy, yeah. guys. See ya, Kyle. Mm. Have you seen Finster's new romantic interest? I know all about it. Yes. What? My finger is, fin? is firmly on Finster's. Post. What's What's my boy Finn up to? He's got himself th- a, a a lady, a real one. A lady. A, but, woman, yeah, a female I, woman. Yeah, a real lady. She's been in on his streams with him, and they've been like uh, getting all flirty with each other and doing little cookie streams. And I was actually talking. a little confused. She's just a traditional girl. Yeah, that's, that's well, that not, is not. That's a woman. not it. That's not, uh, it. not sure who that fellow is. 
But uh, <laughs> yeah. um, yeah, there's a there's a there was a girl with a vagina. I'll say um, who's friends with Finster. I think it's some sort of yeah, romantic yeah. interest. That's such and an they've important been streaming part of a lot together. You know, in person in the same room and getting all flirty and 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 you know just making jokes and stuff to titillate his it's fans, which fun. is what he does. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that I, I saw a clip where. I don't know what the truth is, so I know nothing. Don't judge Finster by this, but the chat said he had a mommy kink. And then the girlfriend is like, hey, do you have a mommy kink? And he's like, what? No, no, that's crazy. And he's looking at the chat and he goes, like, like <laughs> cut it, cut it. Stop saying it. The chat does not stop saying it. They're like, yeah, he's got a mommy kink or whatever. And she's like, backfired on him. You want to call me mommy? And, and you know, he, he's he started like, like, I forget what he calls her, whatever. But let's say her name is Kim. He's like, no, ma- Kim, and, and like, like he rolled, he rolled with it. It was really funny. Yeah. And I don't know if he yeah. has a mommy kink. I mean, he's funny. I, he's a guy. Like, he's true, <laughs> true. His, the funniest his romantic girls users. usually are. Yeah, the funniest girls <laughs> are usually someone like Finn, a cool yeah. guy who just likes to look shaved legged and svelte. Sometimes. Have you? Uh, has anyone invited you to go to the Barbie movie, Taylor? And if so, would you uh, attend? No, I have not been invited to go to the bar. Uh, no, I wouldn't go to a G.I. Joe movie either. I would assume it's for That's kids. what I said. That's what really? I fucking said. Yeah. I, Damn, I was we're, like, we're lined up, brother. Like, because you don't take their fight. You don't fight on their front. You know what they want. You know what they want. You oh, say, no. you think I'm stupid? You think I'm going to start the argument they're lock begging it down me immediately. No. You say, absolutely not. Will I go to a Barbie movie? And they're like, huh. Patriarchy at its best. Like, what are you talking about? I don't go to movies about fucking toys. Yeah. Fuck G.I. Joe. Fuck Barbie. Fuck the Uno movie. Fuck Battleship. None of it's happening. Shut up, not whore. Today. I'm about to go grab my stick not wider than the width of my thumb from the closet. That's a myth, unfortunately. <laughs> Boondock Saints. A myth. <laughs> God damn you, Boondock Saints. I hate when movies give me little tidbits of information that I hang on to like kernels of knowledge for the rest of my life. And then yeah. I, I mm-hmm. then, then it turns out they're lies. Apparently, the rule of thumb, quote unquote, as as explained in yeah. Boondock Saints, is not that at one point it was legal to beat your wife with a stick as long as it was not as wi- it was more narrow than your thumb. That was just some nonsense that fat bitch made up at the beginning of Boondock Saints. Yeah, obviously, like when you think mm. about that critically, it's not like, obvious to me. I could see that in feudal that times, work. especially like maybe in old England or something. Like maybe the the ceremonial ass whipping stick. Oh, speaking of ceremonial ass whipping stick, like you get a metal video, rod. There's a loophole. Fucking seek and destroy. Did you see that? <laughs> Look video? at how small this bullet is. Like <laughs> <laughs> seek and destroy. Video. Where are we? Yeah. So I spelled seek uh, S I H K or whatever though. Like 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 a like a like like one of those seeks or is S I K H K E? Oh S I K H. That's psych. But you know this is a Taylor question. Why? Taylor's. I think I bet Taylor's just laughing and is trying to spell seek. Is it? I wasn't laughing until you said psych. Like that's. I think it's P S Y C H. It's S I K H. Yeah, so uh, seek and destroy is when that black guy tried to rob that seek fellow, uh, and he's he's behind the the counter at the gas station, and he is taking all of the tobacco. Every and you got to keep in mind if you don't smoke or you don't know, I don't even know what they cost now. They used to cost like seven bucks. They probably are ten in in a lot of areas. Ten bucks a pack, let's call it. And he's getting hundreds of packs. He's back there with a trash can with wheels on it. And he's mm-hmm. raking it all in, and the Just and it's being pouring it in. And I think there's I saw a, him take condoms too, which are equally kind sweets, of sweets, fucking dollar like versus size valuable. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So and and it's being recorded by this customer, and then the guy tries to leave, and suddenly we see a white fellow that I haven't seen yet, and he's a stocky, strong man. He's the gentleman holding the robber down on the ground right now. The man with the broomstick, no, that's a fucking mop handle, is. The Sikh fellow. You can see his little turban there or whatever. Oh, he yes. beat he this guy's yeah. legs. He beat this guy's legs and ass so severely <laughs> with this. He's given him the most powerful overhand yeah. blows he can muster. If this was an <laughs> RPG, you'd have propped all of your buffs. And that's what he's done. <laughs> it's just whack, whack, whack. He and hits him like he's trying to split a thick log. Like, like he's, he's giving it. He's, <laughs> he he's trying to kill the- him. I, oh, and then so I didn't know that, that guy was white. Maybe I misidentified him. But uh, yeah, the guy holding him down is getting putting up a bit of a struggle, right? You know, they, they, they're, it's not going smoothly. The guy on the ground is trying to escape, and uh, just as the video ends, the guy on the ground—I hate to call him a victim—the thief will say, "Yeah, uh, 
his head gets exposed. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, now it begins. And the video ends. And hey, I, I don't I know what happened. I wasn't with you there. I, I'll tell you what I was doing, though. It, anyone who hasn't seen the video, search it out. It's easy to find. Uh, he's beating about his shins, his calves, and they're these really hard blows. And then and the guy's screaming in pain. And Dude, this, to... is, this video is fucking hysterical. The guy is swinging so vehemently that at like around swing, like 17 to 25, he's like taking the time, <laughs> almost balking at it and realizing it's a poor swing, readjusting yep. <laughs> to better hit the knees and shins of this guy. Yep. And the guy getting hit is, ah, no, it's okay. It's okay. And it's like, no, it's not okay. You just tried to steal a fucking a garbage bag full of cigarettes. And I think you're getting a little, little comeuppance here. Little yeah, because the guy was telling him not to steal his stuff. And he's like, I will fuck you up. And I think he might have been, if he wasn't reaching for a gun, he was implying that he had one. He like Is grabbed, that how you saw? he looked like a fake knife. He had like a, it looked like a Jimmy bar mm. or something. Like, like a, some sort of flat bladed tool. Probably not a knife, but something that he, he's like grabbing it and sort of threatening with it and sticking it back in his back pocket and going back to work. I love the end of the video. The last three or four whacks are right on his ass because the guy's rolled over to hide his shins. And the guy recording, who's also black, mind you, goes, that's what you call an ass whooping. Uh-huh. <laughs> Whoop his ass. <laughs> and I'm cheering along every time he swings the first time I watched. I'm like, whoop him. Whoop him. Whoop him. Because he's hitting him right across his ass with this big axe handle like pole as hard as he and you can hear it. It's whack, whack, whack. I loved it. I loved Do you it. I wanted that, more. That old, I didn't get uh, enough. I thought thigh and shin shots did weren't appropriate punishment. Do you remember yeah, that exactly. old clip of the guy he's at 70, McDonald's? That guy's 70. The whacker. Good for the whacker. He's he's what? in shape. He's a king. Oh, yeah, he looked good. Love that guy. Do you remember that clip from many years ago? of the two women jumping over the McDonald's counter and the McDonald's guy picking up a large <laughs> like piece of metal, like a thin piece of metal and smacking them and like two smacks into it. It's clear. The battle's won. Like it's over. And he just keeps being like, you're half you right. The battle's like, won, but it's not over. Yeah, the battle is right, <laughs> but it's not over. And here, and he's smacking them so goddamn hard and talk. I think at one point he's like, "I'm not going back to prison," or like some <laughs> sort of like, like just screaming. My something favorite to part like, of that. My favorite part is he kind of stops for a minute because she's saying stuff from the floor up at him, and I thought yeah. she was begging, but she's not. She's talking shit, and he goes, "Oh yeah, oh yeah." And then he like goes back to work <laughs> again. And it's like, why would you ever insult the man? He's a, yeah. not he's skinny, but he's tall. Like the big man standing over you with the metal rod. Why would you do anything? He's other already than shown. Say? He's so eager. I'm to so hit you sorry, with. sir. I'm so mm. sorry. That's what you should be saying yeah. when he's when the big man is beating you with the metal rod. I should rod have salted your fries. I'm McDonald's. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he whipped their asses, and I think he got away with it too. I'm pretty sure he did. I hope he did. Mm. He did a service. He I mean, he went overboard, rude. to be fair. Like, not in my personal view, because I'm more sort of a street justice, fair is fair kind of thing. Like, oh, you thought it was mm -hmm. funny before. It's it's nice to see people get to get, get their comeuppance. I love when you see a, a video. If I were a director, the, the, the thing that works the best on me is when someone's being bullied or beaten, and you, you know that someone's going to come and rescue them, but they don't. Like, they give you another 10 seconds of the beating. Like, oh, yeah. It's gone too far. You're like, oh, oh, keep bullying little Timmy. And they're like, damn, you cut Timmy a little. Don't cut him. Fuck. Are, you, are they going to kill Timmy? Oh, shit. And then the comeuppance comes. Like, you really got to push it a little bit further. And I love it. I love it. And you see so much of that in street justice. There's the classic video where the guy is just driving through. And I think they, like, Ooh, hit his car I already with know something. It. They instigate. He gets out with a fucking baseball bat. A metal and one. A metal one. Five and if you've never fought a man with a metal baseball bat, then good for you. You're probably smarter than these mm -hmm. fucking goofballs. I used to be smart stuff. before the damage. <laughs> yeah, before I fought someone with a baseball bat. Dude, it, and I, now I can't wipe myself. A baseball bat has this beautiful sound it makes. Obviously, I never use wooden bats because you only use wooden but pros. Pros. Right? You didn't play in the majors? Yeah, you no. <laughs> never had the making. I'm just saying, saying like, like you don't fuck with wooden bats until you're like a career player. Yeah, like, I don't know anybody ever. I've never seen a wooden bat that's other than like the jokey ones you buy at the store. Um, but that's a beautiful sound that ping it makes. There's another great video: two girls fighting with an aluminum baseball. One of them has the bat, the other wants some, and she gives it to her, hits her in the face with an aluminum bat. 
Ping. Mm. It's insane how one... I know the video you're talking about. Dude, dude I bet you'll yeah. know this one. There's a, I think a girl or two is coming to bully somebody. And a she's shovel. at her own house and she grabs a shovel. And then it turns out a shovel to the head is a very effective weapon. And she just gets a 16 year old girl. KO'd. Yeah. 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 I, I was 16 year old girls was, don't have chance for that's shit. That's brutal. I don't, I don't know if there's a UFC <laughs> fighter that could stand up to a shovel being swung to the head. Shovels like, are often made of it's tool metal steel. And it's People heavy. don't know that's like a special kind of strong, hmm. durable steel. It's not the same as. I didn't know that either. To. I would imagine oh, it's a hard steel, like a high carbon steel, mm -hmm. so that it doesn't get worn down. And my yeah, but would it be suck, a but... human jaw? <laughs> I, yes, I think it would I would be. Have a yes, joke. Oh, so I've got, a, I've got a I've got a shovel story. Uh, the hmm. gunsmith that my father and I uh, would often use, a bit of an eccentric man, and behind his gun shop were some chicken houses, poultry houses, and they were empty and clearly run down. And we asked him one day, "Hey, what's what happened to the farm?" You know. He's like, they cut me off. Oh, and what that what that means is that the poultry company cut him off. They fired him and would no longer send him chicks. Essentially, he's done. You know, you're a contractor. You need them to send you birds, or you're not a chicken farmer anymore. I'm like, what happened? Well, they were here catching the chicks one night. There was a Mexican walking through the chicken house, knocking the light bulbs out with a stick, one after another. There's a light bulb every fucking six feet for five hundred mm -hmm. feet, two two or three wide, and knocking him out. He's like, hey, what are you doing? Knock. I'm turning out the lights. Ha <laughs> ha! Like, that ain't how you turn them out. Ho <laughs> ho! Pop! Pop! Walks away from him. He said, I looked down there, my shovel was. So I picked it up and walked up behind him. He popped about two more before I got to him. <laughs> <laughs> that was his last one. Because <laughs> I laid that son bitch out. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and that was uh, you know he he knocked the fucker out apparently he roughed him up some more after he knocked him out and they cut him off but <laughs> don't, I don't care how you turn the man's lights out <laughs> i think um i you won't recognize this one but some guy uh i think a dog someone like a pedophile was involved right so some kid got raped or whatever and then um or maybe it was an attempted rape and then people interrupted him in the course of it and yep. then they detained him until the police got there it took about 20 minutes for the police to get there and the top comment on reddit was like holy shit they detained the fuck out of him because he had two black eyes a broken nose cuts on his face bruises all over his body and that sometimes i take a lot of joy in that like when they detain the fuck out of a bad guy i saw yeah. one where a father is beating up a neighbor who was get. i think he was a sex criminal like mm. out of jail, you know, they knew and he'd been coming over, talking to the kids in the yard or having the kids come to his yard like that. And he'd been warned already. And the dad's on top of this dude. That's bold. Fucking him up with the most meaty, open handed slaps you've ever seen. They they hurt me to watch him. And mm, he's telling good. him, he's like, you, he's like, I kill you right now. I kill you right now. You know, I I, I coax him a little. And the guy, <laughs> I pow. <laughs> Wow, these big fucking slaps. Man, he slaps the shit. I start feeling sorry for the pedophile <laughs> around minute three or something. Because he's, he's on this guy, in this guy's yard. Slap, he's like, I've warned you, you son of a bitch. He's just all these threats. He's, it's just like, I'm going to kill you next time, basically. And you, I might kill you now. It's, it's, it's that. <laughs> he keeps going back and forth between, I'm either going to kill you now or next time, but I can't quite decide, you son of a bitch. So you better convince me. It would have been nice off. if he just kind of you know took care of that problem for everyone. You know, that's why give them the I key like to it. the city. I, I like it when they give pedophiles the option of chemical castration, because that does seem like the right move, um, because no, I don't send think them they to can... Mars, make them fucking storm that beach. Just f send them up into space, we... test stuff like that. How how close can we fly a pedophile to the sun? Let's find Here out. we are with the pedophile team. First to Mars, they say. <laughs> <laughs> no children up there, I'm afraid, are there, boys? <laughs> no, no, not for you. Not anymore. We've compiled a team of the seven well. most competent pedophiles the world over. <laughs> We're like a montage of them stone. being smart and thinking about stuff and writing on chalkboards and then just like raping yeah. a child. Like, in and, then it, and then it like pans out because you're not seeing what they're drawing on the chalkboard and it's all like children. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> it, looks like it's, it looks like astrophysics. It looks like astrophysics, but they're really just playing to kidnap children. Yeah. Just got to zoom it shows them like more. studying intently, fades out. It's Barney. 
a shame. Yeah. I'm glad I'm not a pedophile. Like of all the things you could be, like like I guess we've all got. You know what? I'm also vices. so glad you're not a pedophile. Mm. It right? Aren't you really glad you're tough. not? I'm very glad. It I would make it tough. Comm- you know, I, if you were in jail I, for pedophilia, I don't want to insult any previous guests. But if you got might- caught for pedophilia, I oh. would not send you letters and maintain dude, a friendship. Dude, let me say this: If I get caught, no, they're framing me up because that I, I promise <laughs> you got to help me. <laughs> if nothing else. Help me kill myself because it's probably already over. Like if they get me up on pedophile charges, no, 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 they'll do that for you. They got jail. me already, and I didn't yeah. do that shit. <laughs> I didn't they're just do gonna that. me in, in, in there anyway. Help me, please. <laughs> That'd be so. Just scary. kill me. I don't think you have to ask to be killed in a a prison yeah, if you're a pedophile. Yeah, they literally have to hurt. put you in a different area so you're not killed. It's right? gonna hurt the way they do it though. I want a fucking silk pillowcase to choke me out at night or something. I don't want Mongo to poke my eyeballs out. Dude, why don't you just tie a bunch of tearaway clothes to your uh, bunk bed and then lean slightly away from it? Yeah, I probably. No, you'll that's break how, a bone in your neck. Epstein, that's how Epstein killed himself. <laughs> yeah. Do you no, know how I, fucking hard breakaway intentional tearaway clothing pulls at your esophagus? Enough to shatter your larynx, dude. <laughs> like, yeah. You think I, that was be- that other dude who went in there when the cameras malfunctioned? Doubt it. I think it's Mitch Hedgeberg. Uh, the guy was telling the story about Mitch. It's a completely different change of topic. But he, he said that Mitch went to a ho- He'd been living off the grid, and uh, he went to a hotel, needed a room, and didn't have a card. They said, we need a card. He said, I don't have a card, but I've got, got a whole pile of cash, like $6,000 here. You know? He's like, got to have a card. He's like, you see, but this cash is what that card represents. <laughs> What you're doing right now is it was like you was trying to hire a Frank Sinatra impersonator. And then Frank Sinatra showed up and you had a problem with that. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. That's so funny. Does he wouldn't take the wad of cash to, to hold the room? I hate our modern society. I love in old movies when someone walks up and hands the guy like a golden coin and then just walks into the room. That that's all there, that's all we needed to say. Just just give here's five dollars. That gets me the room for the week. I like that. I like every everywhere I go, they want my fucking phone number. They want my goddamn name. I want to buy a vape cartridge. Let me get your name, your number, your address. I'm like, no, no, you can't have any of that. Give me that fucking vape cartridge. What is this? We're not friends. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> my mom it's doesn't have my address. <laughs> you can't. You can't buy. <laughs> my mom doesn't have my address, dude. You can't. I you can't. <laughs> you can't go into a CVS without them accosting you for something. Oh, sign up for our rewards program. Sign up for this or that. No, I don't want to sign up for your Nordstrom rewards, your Walgreens, your nothing. No. The worst ever for that? GameStop. GameStop. Oh, my God. With the quick, I would be like, I'd like this video game. No upsells, please. I'd say that. They're like, do you want to join our program? No upsells, please. Would you like this? No upsells, please. You want to buy this used? No. No. I just want this and I want to go. Yeah. <laughs> and that's what it is. It sucks. Because like I, oftentimes, like when your it. manager is standing next to you and you're in one of those jobs, I remember like working at the rental car place and like having to get away from my normal, super speedy, best cus I was the best customer service guy you could hope for. The best. You got insurance, <laughs> brother. Yeah. Get out of here. Get out of here. Get out of here, you. Like that that was the tier of selling. But there's no then, like, situation in which I should get the insurance. Unless you were uninsured, no. There's no what reason if to I get intend to fuck with the car? Like, like, all right, this is a Honda Accord, and there's going to be some off-roading. Should yeah, I get, get the it. insurance? Yeah. Uh, if you say off-roading, they will mark it. I'm not going to tell them that. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, obviously, don't mention mar- uh, off-roading <laughs> and get the insurance. And just make sure it's cleaned enough so that there's not a huge amount of mud under the wheel well. Because if they see a bunch of that, they'll go, this was off-roading your... Uh, your insurance is declined since it precludes off-roading. So make sure you clean it before you bring it back. Oh, don't worry. The lake's going to wash all that mud off. <laughs> like, it I, does. Here's good. the thing. I don't <laughs> really know what happens if you throw a car into park or reverse while you're still moving at a good clip. Like, I know you're not supposed to, but I, I've never seen what happens. It makes a lot of noise. Will anymore. Done it. Yeah. My guess would be nothing anymore. That there would be a, a clutch or something that would immediately be smart enough to go, Let's not kill ourselves. And you would just hear a lot of brrrr as it slipped and allowed stuff to turn instead. But what if you did it in a manual? What if you're going fucking 70? Um, we didn't have press any the fucking clutch through that bitch in reverse and drop the clutch again. What happens? 
if you uh if you're in a mm. if you're hypothetically I, I in a, if you're in a hyundai accent flying explodes. through uh an open uh field of gravel drifting the hyundai accent yeah. hypothetically because you can drift anything in, in that if you throw it in park right away, it makes a loud noise and then and then screeches on the, the gravel to a stop. I was going to say, instead of the transmission braking, it might be that the tires skid. Mm-mm. No, you would no. never get that power. Well, I guess I was tires. on gravel. I wouldn't know. You, because the, the drive shaft is carrying so uh, is carrying so much momentum. So is the torque converter. There's a lot of metal spinning in there at a high rate. That's going to have to stop, arrest, and turn the other way, and then deliver that power to the tires, and it's all coming apart before we ever get it there. Like it's coming apart at the at the point the transmission attacks attaches to the engine. That that fucking I don't know what you call it. That main rod, and if you look at it, just a transmission that's in the center, that mm-hmm. it's blowing up. The transmission is going to explode. That's my guess. If you're going fast, press the clutch, put her in reverse. Give it gas, might as well, and then let the cl- just drop the clutch. <laughs> just uh, pow! I think you'd hear a huge explosion, and that transmission would fucking. I think it would. There would be a point of contact where it just exploded. I don't know if the transmission would jump out of the car know. or anything. Uh, and with race cars, all kind of crazy shit happens. There's so much torque. The engine can actually rip itself off the uh, engine mounts and go for a fucking ride. Uh, I like those. Have you ever seen where they take the trucks and they put them on the? Um, the, those fucking uh, stands and like floor them. I don't even know what they're fucking doing, but the trucks explode a lot. Oh, yeah, the dyno testing. That's it. Yeah. That's a yeah, that's sport. It's not a sport. They're just trying to make the engine more powerful. They're measuring the engine's output. I think it's a sport with competitors and, and a whole thing. You know, I wouldn't doubt if people competed to get the highest you results. You know, the way but- they super cool PCs and, and, and to have those mm-hmm, competitions. Mm-hmm. I think they do the same I thing with this. the Cummins diesel. Yeah. It's coming out of there. It's leaving. <laughs> you see, it's that leaving. looks, uh, that looks broken. It's a Goings diesel. <laughs> it's a Goings <laughs> diesel. <laughs> yeah. You can tell that like, I don't know. Nobody around knows it's happened yet. Not really. No, they're about to find out. Yeah. It, I, I don't I see like people get right. hurt in these. It seems fairly safe, but it's spectacular when they pop. And it's also got to be so expensive because the insurance doesn't cover any of this. He just blew, I mean, shit, $100,000? What does it cost? You ruined the truck, probably. A big number, yeah. Ooh. Yeah, that's a weird That's a weird one for me. I've seen a bunch of these on uh, on Reddit. I guess the engine is so heavy, it's not going to fly that far. It looked like it kind of just went like, and kind of fell back down. I don't, I don't know. Or at least in that explosion. I don't know. Yeah, that's cool though. So I, I like to the, explode. The Ukraine war, you've been following it as much Not as you used to. Who's no, winning the match? It, What's the it, deal? It's, it, I, 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 all I've heard is just like random nonsense. Um, Ukrainians making their little gains. Um, no, I, I followed every day, and I feel like you're pretty much on target with that. Uh, <clears throat> the Ukrainians are killed, on the offense. There was an incident where two hundred <clears throat> Russians were gathered on a beach, and you can see them. So when I say beach. They have the, they've got so much American equipment out. It's great. We're in a drone way up high and so high that you can see that it's like, it's like the Florida Keys how you have these little wisps of land. It's yeah. like mm-hmm. that. But when you get down there, it's like a beach that's 70 yards wide and, and it and continues for a half a mile or something. They're on that. The Russians are training and you can in see they've broken up. I- and so, so I just want to add to Kyle's story. They're they're in Crimea on the beach at the farthest point from Ukrainian held territory, Ukraine, and they think that they're safe. They think that they're outside the range of U- Ukrainian arms. There's 200 of them, and they're broken up into divisions of some kind, five where they're in like maybe groups. five groups of 40. Well, they shoot five High Mars missiles. <laughs> Kyle, can you describe a High Mars? I think most people don't know. It's rocket artillery, essentially. It's a uh, <clears throat> they've sort American. Of, they're yeah, and it's uh, it shoots a lot of these things. It's it's it, it goes for a very long way, and the particular shells that it shoots, um, it's the thing that they call God's shotgun, the thing that riddles everything below it with um, molten hmm. hot tungsten flying at incredibly high speeds, and it just destroys everything in a huge swathy area. Very expensive per We've shot. stated before, it punks through is tanks. the coolest metal. Through tanks, it, through armor, through people, yeah, so through anything. It most is. things don't rip through tanks. Tanks are pretty good at stopping things from going through them. It's the point of a tank. But apparently a high Mars, molten tungsten going at Mach something, 
rips through tanks. So they fired these high Mars. It's just soldiers who were being gathered on the speech and like, I don't know, spoken to and motivated, trained something. And uh, they just ripped tons of small holes in all these people at pretty much the same time and got something like 200 kills in a minute. Something crazy. Yeah, like what, that. what you see He's... is a big explosion in the center. And then immediately after this sprinkling all around it in this huge circle of dust pop up and those sprinkles are all those little chunks of uh tungsten rain because obviously tungsten. it's air bursting over them to spray them with all that um american technology is just the fucking best it's that's why terrifying. i'm not worried about those aliens man let them come either they better hope that th that's what they would do they'd come and they'd show <laughs> up and they'd be like what the fuck do the these monkey people do nothing but war apparently like <laughs> look at their planet no, no, look. Let's challenge them to a 1v1. Yep, yep, yep. And then they see John Jones and it's all over. Mm -hmm. We end up being their leader. John Jones becomes their leader. <laughs> oh, He's going to get to a for doping. That's the movie. That's the movie. We think the problem <laughs> is, the, is, the, is the aliens being our overlords. But when John Jones beats their champion, he becomes overlord of Earth and the aliens. And we've got a new problem to contend with. We have John this Jones. This is Mortal Kombat 2. This is how they make the next Mortal Kombat movie. This is exactly the story. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. I mean, I don't think that our best champion... Well, again, it all depends on the kind of aliens they are. If they're little, small aliens... They were sloth obviously... people. They, they evolved from sloths, and they're very smart. They're arboreals, and they're very smart, but they move very slowly, and they, and okay. they cannot well, we contend can win... with our... If oh, they're yeah. sloth people, we can do we can deal with that. How about this, Jack? Uh, they're like crustaceans, <laughs> like like, the like they're the a crab crustacean folk? people. Yeah, like a crab folk, but like, they're about human like, size. Like Oidberg or Noidberg or whatever from Futurama. Zoidberg, yes, like, yeah. Except you more often intimidating call than Jack. That. Is that like? Yeah, that oh, was a calm down, Biden, Slick. That, We're that having a conversation here, Slick. <laughs> like, I thought I know Biden does it, but I wasn't sure. I thought maybe it was a Midwest thing. You're stealing a Bidenism. You know, hey, Jack, you being a real dog faced right? pony soldier interrupting Taylor right now. That's all I'm saying, Jack. <laughs> I bet. A real dog faced pony soldier. <laughs> I, I had to know about the Jack. Which, by the way, I'm really fixated on it. By the way, when you, know, when, you understand, <laughs> when you understand context, everything seems better. That's a movie quote that Biden is accurately delivering in that moment. So it's hmm. like that, that I had never heard of because it's from a Biden. It's a movie that Biden probably watched as a boy. 46 came out. It's it, it's a fucking um, cavalry movie or something like that because he's talking about a fucking dog face. It's it's yeah, it's my I favorite movie. It's that. called The Birth of a Nation. It's now, the best movie of all time. <laughs> I looked into it, Kyle, and I heard it was a movie quote and that no one could find the source of the movie when I looked into it. Maybe since I heard, then him, that's installed. I heard him use it again recently. Really? And yeah, that's how I know because either I looked it up or someone explained it on whatever program I was watching. It's hard. I, I watch so much shit. I uh, I always keep the TV on, like when I'm doing chores or fucking working on the house or whatever. Uh, I really like these educational programs. I'm getting my got my information diet, like X Jaws. Can't mm. can't stay up as many hours as he can, but I'm 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 doing the best <laughs> I can. You can with so, a little assistance. So Biden's spokesman says the line comes from a John Wayne's film, but it's not clear it does. That's kind of yeah. what I found, too, when I looked okay. into it. Yeah, it's like Biden's spokesman says that. Well, Biden's spokesman is probably 42, so I doubt he knows too much about the old <laughs> John Wayne films. No way. Yeah, I I was really shocked when she rolled out with the dick pics the other day. I mean, it's Marjorie cool Taylor Greene. Yeah, and con at Congress. You saw that. We talked oh, about you, you guys mentioned this to me. Yeah, yeah. That the yeah. blown up photos of Hunter Biden getting blown. I mean, it's Hunter Biden get his dick sucked. It was blacked out, frame. right? Or was it real? They black out like they blacked just out bits. the penis. They black yeah. out just enough of it to make it G rated and to cover his face. But I'm clearly looking at Hunter Biden getting his dick sucked, and she's on his knees, and he's fully naked in a room. I, I can I can make all these things out. There's another one. Hunter Biden has his hands like this with his dick presenting it to her. <laughs> it's just like, dude, that's so fucking funny. Or maybe it's her hands. It's it's one one. Yeah, I was has gonna say in I'm, their I'm, hands. Like I think that she's receiving like this or something. But there it is, blacked out, and you can you can tell what's going on. There's it's easy. wait. Is it is it an adult woman? Yeah, it's not a, <laughs> yes. it's not a, it was okay. a prostitute, a paid a prostitute. prostitute. That's the it prostitute. was a congressional yeah, hearing okay. about Hunter Biden evading taxes. So she brought up, I guess, his most embarrassing moment. 
Well, uh, I all could six of them, she had multiple photographs. You know, each mm. photograph had three or four instances of him getting it on. Because what he liked to do was take money from his uh, the wrong account, again, whoopsie daisy, and pay a prostitute mm. uh, to make porn with him. That was his bag. I'm sure it still is. You don't just get past that. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. But do you think he actually wanted to make porn or it was something where it's like, if we're making porn, it's roundabout legal. Ooh, we're not doing this. Right, we're, right. Little we're, we're little filming little this. There. We're going to do a little, uh, uh, a, 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 I'm a porn producer, actually. <laughs> I started an LLC at LegalZoom three minutes you ago. Know, and now no I'm one has friend. made that. That's such an astute observation, Taylor. I truly believe that that is what was going on to some extent. There. That would be my guess. That I think that the Hunter Biden laptop is to what was just evidence that he was not paying prostitutes, but was instead a porn star. And was meant to be so the whole time to avoid more serious legal charges. Or, or sneakily, like being like, no, it was for di- we just hadn't distributed them yet. Yes, there's 10 years. Well, you, don't doing re- this. you don't need to. You don't need to. We're going to we're releasing a huge thing, a big reveal yeah. into the. If industry. you don't think Hunter Biden is the coolest presidential child in the history of presidents, then you're the kind of guy who only fucks missionary. You have to tell mm. us. Wait, wait. You have to points of comparison. I don't know no, any others are... other than Chelsea Clinton and and Chelsea and Clinton wasn't Sasha. Funny. O- the Obamas, I don't know what the hell they're up to. I don't care. They smoke uh, pot in public. That's the coolest thing the Obama kids did. It's I lit. bet George W. was wild as a young one. Uh, he is a presidential child in, uh, in technically. Yeah, and so I bet he was good. Drunk driving, cocaine, car accidents. Base Owned baseball teams or owned a minor league baseball in, team. Into a I coffin, think. I believe, or something mm, like that. Maybe he, he was in a coffin. coke though. off a of hooker's ass, though? Who has That's it? That's such a baseline cocaine and hooker thing to do like i i, yeah. I if they were if you, doing cocaine in the realm of hookers and they didn't do that i'd be like why you were in rome do it it's a huge waste of cocaine <laughs> really i don't know <laughs> <laughs> i don't know i don't know well i mean if she's uh, some like jittery lady who's gonna shake all the coke off her ass yeah i don't think cocaine's that expensive right like, like art if you have a cocaine hat. as far as drugs go they're pretty pricey i think right but if we wanted to get like how much is a gram I feel like I, or I, I don't know much about cocaine, you. but I feel like if we got two grams, we'd have a heck of a night. They're like three, four guys with like two grams of coke. Right? I bet it's hundreds of dollars for like two grams of coke, right? I God, I don't, I don't. Hey Siri, can, how much is a gram of cocaine? You can tell none of us do. Thanks, Siri. Here's what I found: hard drugs, cool kid drugs. Oh shit! I, <laughs> well, hey, let's, let, well, Taylor, let's take a guess before Woody informs. Okay, uh, one gram of a, cocaine. What do you say? I'm going to say a gram of. How much would a gram of cocaine be? I'm going to say a gram of cocaine is $125. I'm going to say 180. 184. Really? These, these are 2021 prices, but yeah. Damn. I didn't even go over, dude. I'm gonna get yeah, you're gonna win prices right on the. You get the yeah. fucking showcase and mine for that. <laughs> I'll get the showcase, and I'm gonna be like, I'm, I'm gonna take the risk. I'm gonna take the risk. I'm gonna go for the door three. Like, <laughs> yeah, really, Taylor. Uh, I already know door one is what you wanted. Yeah, but door three could be anything. It could be, be door one. That's like, <laughs> that's so expensive. That's so expensive for for one hundred eight. But how far does yeah. a gram go? Not far at all. A we, gram all right, so is for, for like, like a gram of powder is a, not that much. I don't even know how many be, lines become a gram. I we need we a, cut, a drug guy. Um, I think we have like three or four or five nice fatties on on a, on a gram of cocaine that that everybody would be satisfied with. Yeah, but it's cocaine, and if you've ever been around people who are doing cocaine, yeah, they constantly they, back for more. They like constant, constantly they do the cocaine, so and annoying. then like. Within genuinely like 15 minutes, they're like, I need more cocaine. And it's like, dude, you realize like all the people smoking weed and like drinking beer, they're going to be fucked up on that all night like that. And it's way cheaper. Like you can just get high. Are you saying it doesn't last or they just want to get higher? It lasts so short compared to like uh, weed or or alcohol or something. And so they'll get gacked out of their mind for 45 minutes and then it starts coming down and you start feeling shitty and they're like, I need more. I need more coke. Like it is fucking hilarious being around friends and hearing them like we were like mid 20s or whatever. And they'd be like, all right, I'm not getting any cocaine tonight. And I'm like, you say that often. I bet you do. And then, like, <laughs> and then, like, late in the night, it's like everyone else is having a fun time, like, drunk or smoking weed or whatever. And then these guys are like, guys, 
where is the hookup? Where's the coat guy? And it's like, you're harsh in everybody else's shit right now with your like obsession about needing coke. And then they get it. And there's like a fight between them about like, you did even more than I did. No, I did. I didn't do as much as you. Well, we're already through this fucking like three grams or whatever we got. People it's like doing coke. Are they skinny? Fun. Yeah, uh, gen- generally speaking, if they're yeah. really into it. But most of the people I've seen were just normal people just mm. doing it. Uh, coke addicts are skinny. Yeah, a coke addict would be skinny. Anyone yeah. who's addicted to an upper is going to be skinny unless they are playing through the pain in the kitchen. Yeah, you would think. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's just not, this doesn't interest me at all. No. I would much rather. It's the DMT. most boring drug I've ever done in my life. You're amped up for fucking 20 minutes. You feel pretty good. And then it Adderall's goes away. so much better. Like, like if you've got good at, like a good instant release. 10 20 milligrams of Adderall it's such a better ride there's so much more happiness it tastes euphoria. like shit if and I'm going to try a new drug, drug it's going to be Ozempic <laughs> that's the way to go no you're not I got to look up exactly so don't what that take shit, that shit. <laughs> <laughs> you're just going to be sloughing off muscle but you're like the weight bitter. on the scale goes down <laughs> <laughs> no you you don't want that shit you that it seems like that's Ozempic for like is morbidly a obese people. injection that helps lower blood sugar by helping the pancreas make more insulin it is not approved for weight loss, but some physicians prescribe it to be used for weight loss. I'm going to keep reading because I, I need to. I don't know what it does. Mm-hmm. On average, with the recommended starting Ozempic dosage of 0.25 milligrams, a 500 to 1,000 calorie reduced diet. I don't know if that's reducing it by. I suppose it's reducing it, but which yeah. on what size person? Um, and exercise three times a week. This is stupid. That never. Mind. Yeah, it's almost like this is brand new. Like they don't, <laughs> they don't know shit. Seemingly. Oh, there's some cool videos here who explain it. But uh, there've been so many celebrities on Ozempic. It's like their most effective advertising. I think Ozempic is the next like, um, to Dalafil. Like just it becomes really? widely consumed, and that it has a huge impact on our population. Once the manufacturing kicks up, right now it's it's rare. Scarce is a better word, mm-hmm. but um. It's going to be the next mega drug. It makes people thin. I think you're right. Okay, so there's another drug called Wagovi, W-E-G-O-V-Y, and it's a higher dose version of Ozempic, and it is approved to help people manage their weight. This includes adults and adolescents age 12 and older who meet certain basically fatty fatties. Yeah, being fat. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah like super fat. People who only have um, four packs. Disgusting. They, there's a picture of a woman here, yes. and she looks like, I don't know, Gimli's mom or something, like big fat. <laughs> um how it works i'm really interested I, so I, yeah. here's what i would be interested in something that i inject and it just kind of does its job at making me get not as fat on as many calories right like like however that works i don't care i want to be able to eat more i want i always want to be able to eat no more. it's an appetite suppressant like it, it's an appetite but it doesn't sound like that because it's making the pancreas make more insulin to lower blood sugar that's how it treats diabetes i would think that there's a similar mechanism Helping weight loss, like something to do with insulin and glucose levels. I'm out of my depth, but I think Taylor's right. And insulin and appetite are somehow related. I don't care about appetites present because I've got something I have like, I don't know, willpower plus like whatever else. Like I don't need that. Like, but apparently that's what it is because that make it easier to stay lean. Well, that's the thing, Kyle, is you are absolutely not the target market for this drug because you have the wherewithal and the discipline that when you want to make a change you're going to do it so if the principal benefit is to help someone who has no willpower staying away from chocolates and candy by fixing their that's, insulin so they don't aren't that's like, genuinely not like that wouldn't that wouldn't just, be good just for you because like you don't need that Did like Kyle you just say it elevates your either. insulin or lowers it i believe it um in- increases insulin to lower blood sugar for but but uh, I read it a minute ago, and those mm. are very similar sentences. I'm with you. <laughs> yeah, Zach wrote this. Elevated insulin not only increases hunger, it impacts the types of food you crave and how foods taste and how much you eat. In short, elevated insulin makes you hungry and leads to overeating. Ozempic mm. is a weekly injection that helps lower blood sugar by helping the pancreas make more insulin. So I don't, it, it's not clear to me why more insulin would... So does that make you insulin resistant over time? If something spikes, how much? It's meant to treat diabetes in low dose. 
and I just know it's, it's more wildly effective, effective for, for at weight loss. People lose weight. It's just okay. People are having, you know, the transformations you can hardly believe. Like that's the same chick, or oh my god, now you need that like skin removal surgery. The Zempec is dishing that out all over the place. And the celebrities <laughs> that like these chicks that were hot, but now they're like thirty eight and they're just like a little thick. Mm-hmm. They hop on Ozempic. Kim Kardashian got back in like prime shape and she's in her 40s. Um, from from Ozempic? Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, yeah, it'll I, probably be. Hopefully I, I'd there's like, no I, I want to hear what Derek says about effects Ozempic. We don't know about you know, that, that's He's done my... a lot of videos on it, but it, it, it's difficult to like you. You know, they're like 27 minutes long and it takes a really focused attention span to extract mm-hmm. the thing that I'm trying to gather from it. But gotcha. uh, I think the takeaway is it works. Um, but you know, as soon as you hop yeah. off it, you get fat again. So if you want, even if the side effects are like bad, like is like, even if it had bad side effects would those sad of, side effects add up to worse than like diabetes or like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like I, I know it's new and they don't know you, but like are more like uh, punishment pain related. Like you get really nauseous. You don't enjoy food anymore. Like it, yeah. you look better, but you are less happy. You just come off yeah, I would not want to be able to all the time. take that it sustainably. Um, uh, Derek was telling me about something. But sexy. No, it's a Derek good and I talked yeah. once about Derek and I talked once about um, something that I could potentially use if if um, like hunger pangs were like a real issue. Like because um, because I was like the nicotine helps, um, and he's he's like yeah, nicotine will help. You can bang that. He's like, and if it gets real bad, and you just can't fucking stand it. Then there was something else. I can't. Maybe it was a SARM or something like that. Um, maybe it was some numbers and letters, but I remember him, <laughs> I think I remember him mentioning, you know, that there's a thing you can take, if, you know, you just can't fucking stand it and, and you could take that. But I did, I never escalated to, to that. Cause I was never, I was always hungry, but I was never just like sitting there fucking hitting my thigh. Like I just made a chip. I feel like your success was so good that it just kept that reward effort cycle going. Like, That's man, I'm part of it. Yeah, like I, I'm getting results from doing this. I like doing this. And and do you like every single aspect of doing it? Was there no pain? Eh, not no pain, but the gains are worth the pain. And and yeah, that's my the, take on what everyone does when they when they get motivated to get into shape is they they hit it hard for six weeks and they still haven't seen any results. Like not at all a lot of times. Mm. And they look in the mirror and they can't even fucking tell the difference after six weeks. And they're like, God, it's been almost two months. That's why your brain works. <laughs> You're like, I see people doing three month transformations and here mm. I am halfway there and, and I don't even see a change. This isn't worth the pain. I want some food. I'm hungry. You know mm. what? Pizza has a lot of protein and you'll start talking about like use macros to trick you into junk food. Oh, I've they'll been do there. that and, the, and they'll do that and then they'll quit. Uh, but when you're going full force, tweaking all the knobs on your RPG character and min maxing everything including steroids, you know, t- testosterone, which is what it is. You see results fast. Six weeks, and I was like, oh, shit. That, oh, shit. That was six weeks? God, what is 12 going to look like? And in <laughs> 12, it was like, I didn't think it was going to look like this. What is six months? And it was every time you, like, take note of yourself and compare befores and afters, mm-hmm. And especially the way I was keeping up with um, the the DEXA scans, DEXA scans, and I had I had the hard numbers. It's it's just like playing your RPG character. Like people often say that if people ran their lives like they do their RPG characters, they'd all be fit millionaires. Because if you look at how people run their RPG mm-hmm. characters, it's like oh my god, you got everything where it's supposed to be. It, your house is even well made. You know what I mean? Like yeah. you, you went and put the little gym. You you hung pictures on the wall in your fake house. You got a you perfectly clean Skyrim it. house in your filthy hovel <laughs> of a gaming room. Yeah. So, it, but if you have those, because in an RPG, for one thing, it's a fun game. But also, you get instant results. You grind a skill long enough, all of a sudden you punch guys and something happens. And just just seeing those visual results that you get from TRT and everything else really kept me motivated every step away. That and having people to disappoint, namely Derek. Um, didn't want to disappoint Derek because I made a promise. I, I, he didn't ask me to make a promise, but I was just like, dude, you, 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 cause he's putting so much time into it for, for nothing. Seemingly. I was like, you've helped me so much. You've clearly spent so much time. I will not let you down. You know, I, I, I promise I will not let you down. This is going to be cool. And, uh, you know, I, 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 I was so 
I was so scared of those weight check-ins with Derek and failing them. <laughs> like, and I'll, I've said it a bunch of times, but I'll keep saying it. UFC fighters that miss weights are weight are fucking pussies, and not, they're not professional. And it's embarrassing. Yeah, that because it's all willpower. You're a pussy. It's embarrassing. Like, Dude, like I remember texting you. If and you have an injury like, where you can't walk, walk, you 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 do arm pedals. Like you get the work done one way or another. If you're a professional, I was doing it for funsies and I did it. You're getting millions of dollars. It's your livelihood. It's your family's livelihood. You're a pussy. You're not professional. It's embarrassing. I don't remember what game it was, but when you were in the middle of that transformation, I remember like texting you one night in our chat, like, "Hey, hop on, let's play this." And you're like, "I really want to, but I just weighed in." And I'm 179 instead of 177.6. And so I'm <laughs> headed to the gym. <laughs> I'm like, are you sure? And you're like, yeah, Derek will be mad. Like, <laughs> just, like just go there. And I did get, I can't remember what my final weight was. I think it was like 167 or something. Yeah, it was. I think you were in the 160s. Like you were. Low. Yeah. Yeah. I, dude, I, that was so when I broke 170, it was like, oh, shit. We didn't just crack it. We broke it wide open and went to like 168.8 or something, you know. So it was like, I don't feel sick. I don't feel nauseous. Every now and then I get lightheaded and I'm I'm having like these waves of like heat and stuff. But I see UFC fighters crying in tubs, you know what I mean? Like, like and, yeah. and I'm having, I'm, I was love. I clearly am. That's what I'm getting at. Yes. Look, I don't like talking shit if I haven't done a thing. But when I see these people 60 days in, it's like, I did that, you pussy. Stop crying. <laughs> Fucking get back, get back in there, you pussy. I did that. <laughs> and when I see those people who can't cut, you know, another pound or two or miss weight by like Wonder Boy Thompson, nicest guy in MMA, very professional, wonderful man from South Carolina. His opponent missed weight. He said, I'm not gonna fight you. They didn't pay him. They haven't paid Wonder Boy. And I, and he followed all the rules. Now, what I think they're gonna do is they're gonna let him fight Kamaru Usman in Australia on that massive card. And that's a real that that's that makes up for it. But when your opponent misses weight after he's agreed to it in a bout agreement and you've spent six weeks paid coaches, nutritionists, traveled, flown, worked day in, day out. They usually do six week camps of just hustling every day with all those people being paid. And then the guy misses weight by four pounds and you don't get to fight and there's no paycheck. It's awful. So yeah. what? Yeah, it's it, the rules are interesting on this. So if you make weight and I don't, you have a choice. You can either skip out of the fight. Or you can choose to fight me and take 20% of my purse. Now, I don't know who he's who he was fighting, but if I'm fucking Conor McGregor and you get offered 20% of my purse, you take it. <laughs> yeah. But if I'm Woody and no one knows me, then maybe you're like, shit, everyone who fights a guy who misses weight loses to that guy who missed weight. So it's smart not to take the fight. You might remember uh, Wonder Boy famously lost after he took on Darren Till when he moved up, uh, even though Darren missed weight, even though he was moving up to a new weight class. So it should have been easy for him to make weight. He right. fought a guy three and a half, four pounds over, lost. And it his career went down. Like he was on his way to the championship and that set him back. Like, ah, go win three more and we'll talk again. It set him back a year and a half, two years. And here he is, I don't know, four, let's call it 38 to 40, something like that. He's there again. He's a win or two away from getting the fight for the belt, maybe. And he doesn't want to go fight a guy who's over. And you know what it is in the UFC, though? You go out there and do something spectacular and you cut a good promo. They, they, they'll send the number seven guy up to fight for the belt. It's mm -hmm. all about that. You've just got to fight. You've got to be spectacular and you got to cut good promos. Because the guys who go up there and bow and fucking win <laughs> and leave, eventually yeah. they'll let you fight, maybe. You got to have like a gonna... nine fight win streak if you're going to be a uh, boring. Tony um, was 12, I think. Didn't Tony went 12 motherfucking fights in a row before they finally got around to it? I don't know if that one's fair because I feel like he got a bunch of title shots and they fell apart. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Poor Tony. Poor Tony. I felt so I, bad. I, I, I Tony got a little lucky. Beating. Like, so here's what happened Tony had a bunch of fights canceled. And then he would fight like a fill-in guy or he'd avoid a fight against a really tough guy like Khabib. And I think that the perception of Tony being like a top five guy lasted longer than the reality because he wasn't mm. tested. I don't, I know, I know one thing for sure. After Gaethje, he was never the same again. Gaethje, it, I tried to watch that fight again the other day and it, Dude. I can't watch that. It's, it's, it's like watching hits. a hate crime. 
really, really hard. He hits so hard. Tony has a good chin. And and I remember between rounds, they're like, hey, 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 Gaethje, dial it back a little. It's like you're trying to take his head off. His yeah. coaches told him he was punching him too hard. But yeah. I don't think he dialed it back. At the end, his coaches are saying, just stop the fight. You can hear him <laughs> yell it because it's really? it, it was one of was those apex COVID? fights with no crowds. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it was Tony's face was flat when it was over and bloody and broken. Uh, it was awful. And there was no need for him to take all that. Yeah, it's a real mm. shame to see a guy who who I think won a dozen in a row and then just kind of got a got an interim belt and danced around fighting for that championship for years and was just never the same guy after Gaethje, though. I think I think he, I don't know. It's it's a sad story. I, I hope that he finds a new gear in life um, after this. Like, but I don't know what it would be because he's so weird on the mic. Yeah, we can wrap up. I'm sorry. I'm yeah. Just meandering on Tony Ferguson, my mentally ill UFC fighter friend. <laughs> <laughs> PKA 659.